NFL Primetime is presented by Miller Lite. Primetime is Miller time. And now, here's your host, Chris Berman. Hello once again, everybody. I am Chris Berman, along with Tom Jackson, week six of NFL Primetime. And just when you thought, yeah, things figured out the first few weeks, <laughs> everything time. But it is a little old-time football. Some of the names and some of the teams and some of the uniforms that... We, ex we watch when we were kids, kind of moving to the forefront. We've been doing this for a lot of years, and all I can say is this. This year is a free-for-all in the NFL. Anybody could win this thing. Not the so end. much last of first. You have the Rams, and then it's yeah, like We have the Rams and everybody teams. else. Every <laughs> it's a scrum. It, it's a scrum. Now, speaking of scrums, they were in Cleveland, certainly waiting for this day. 1995, the Cleveland Browns fans, some of the best in any sport in any city, well, they had their hearts broken when the, the then Cleveland Browns became the Baltimore Ravens moved out of town by Art Modell. The Cleveland Browns, of course, a couple of years ago came back into the NFL with an expansion team in the same division as Baltimore. Four times they played Modell's Ravens, four times they lost. The last time, 44-7 was a game last year in Baltimore, which many feel Baltimore may have, may have run up. Cleveland didn't have the talent to get with the Ravens, but for many, they waited for this day in Cleveland for 2,000 days. And so that's the backdrop as the Cleveland Browns bring an attitude this year and a defense to what they hope would be go along with the Ravens on the dog pound ready to bone the Ravens, I guess. <laughs> All day long. Halloween early in the dog pound. First drive for the Browns. Tim Couch. It's a Sellers market and a Mike Sellers 13 yards. Then you got Thomas from the Cleveland area, one of his many young cousins, James Jackson, on the draw to the Ravens 22. Two plays later, Couch, Kevin Johnson, they hooked up for a big win late. Remember against San Diego a couple weeks ago then. Jackson, wait a minute, you're running on the Ravens? 51 yards in six plays, seven nothing. Cleveland. Yeah, watch the three blocks here. Wallabaugh going to be on Ray Lewis. Look at the kickout block on Sharper, and then Corey Harris gets pinned to the inside. What a great job of blocking the blocking triangle to get Jackson into the end zone. So late first, Elvis Gerback play action. Wally Rainier hits him the ball in the air. Dwayne Rudd, who's had a big season for the Browns, makes the interception their 12th of the year already. What happens here, Tom? Take a look at Jonathan Ogden there at the tackle spot. He's going to look inside. The blitzer, Rainier, comes outside, goes right by, and you can see Ogden still looking for somebody to block. Bit of NFL history. Congratulations, Matt Stover. 32 straight games with a field goal, breaking the mark of 31 that he co-held with the longtime Vikings kicker Fred Cox. Scores 7-3. Caught in a trap. Gerback picked off by Anthony Henry. Dialed the wrong number. Henry, who picked off three Detmer passes, remember, in one game, returns it inside the 20 top. Yeah, great job here reading the route. Didn't look into the backfield until he knew the ball was in the air and then made a great drive on the football. Sets up a field goal, 10 300. 20 seconds to go in the half. Third and three for the Ravens. And by the A, Ayan Badeo runs close to the 20. It's a, they, they close to the first down. Gerback calls timeout. They figure it's fourth down. Nine seconds to go, fourth down. Coach Brian Billings says, well, Fourth down, let's get a field goal. Let's go off the field at 10-6. Field goal! And Stover hits a 38-yarder. But then, wait a minute. You're telling me it wasn't fourth down? It was first down? Look at the guys on the set. Well, you know what? You moved out of here six years ago. <laughs> You got more coming to you, pal. That's the way Red Auerbach did it at the Boston Garden. What do you expect? So it's 10-6 at the half. Oh, James Trapp just levels. Dennis Northcutt, don't believe me. Listen for yourself. Oh. Northcutt able to stand, and he did come back in the game, which is such a clean hit. And Northcutt tough. Now, speaking of tough, Jim Brown, they keep running better than anybody. Now, James Jackson, nobody's comparing him to Jim Brown, but the Browns running the ball. This is on the Baltimore Ravens, Tommy. It's 22 yards. And again, if you're going to run the ball, you got to figure out a way to try to block Ray Lewis. And here, Brad Bedell is going to be the guy who does it from his center spot. He comes out, does a great job of kicking out, and a job of getting the runner in it, back into the, into the secondary. So, big play, fourth and one gamble. They figured a long field goal. Count scrambling to Aaron Jay first down. So instead of now just moving the chain to get the first out, I love this attitude. Couch, we're going for the downs. Kevin Johnson, beautiful pass, 28 yards. 
17-6, Cleveland. Next Ravens possession. Caught in a trap. He can walk out. <laughs> Jameer Miller, the hit. Greg Spires recovers it. Cleveland ball, and Elvis has left the building. Next play. Next play. Like a championship team would. Couch. Zing. <laughs> Quincy Morgan. Touchdown. 24 to 6. Cleveland. Last chance now for Baltimore. They're now 24 14. Randall Cunningham in trying to work a miracle. Keith McKenzie sacked. One of seven sacks for the Browns. They've bitten off the Ravens. Finally, the Wicked Witch is dead. The Browns have beaten the Ravens 24 to 14. The Cleveland Browns defense, attitude, and a celebration that's going to go long into the night in Cleveland. The defending champs have lost two in a row. They're three and three. Cleveland, four and two. Tim Couch, one of the heroes, with our Ed Werder. Thanks, Boomer. Tim Couch authors the most shocking upset of the new era Browns. Tim, one of the key things it seemed like you were able to protect the football, and that's right. something they failed to do. Did you think you could do that against this kind of defense? Well, we had to do that. You know, we felt that our defense could go out and play well against their offense, and, and the main thing we had to do was just stay on the field offensively, keep drives alive, eat up some of the clock, and score when we got our opportunities, and, uh, and we were able to do it. You were able to manage the game effectively. Was that because you were able to start the drive, the game off with that long touchdown drive? Well, I think so. You know, the first drive, you know, we marched right down and scored, and uh, you know, had a great drive, and then we kind of went into a rut a little bit, but this is the best defense in the league, and they're going to shut you out sometimes, but I thought we did a good job of bouncing back and scoring when our opportunities came up. And then in the third quarter, you had back-to-back -back long ball touchdown plays right. over Dwayne Starks. Were you trying to target him in single coverage? Well, we, we, it was just the way the play uh, set up. It wasn't anything against Dwayne, or, or you know, they, they got two good corners. McAllister's a great player also, but, you know, it was just the way the play was designed, and that's just who we're, what side of the field we were going to. All right, Tim, thanks very right, much. Thank Boomer, you. back to you. Now, first things first, Tim, that throw Tim Couch made that Beautiful. we showed to Morgan. Beautiful. And, and they went right <laughs> forward. It's like a team expecting to win. Yes. I mean, the, 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 yes. the attitude they had after fourth and one and after after a turnover like that. Tom, you grew up in Cleveland. What a meaningful you, win you for the city. You know what this means to them. Well, it, it, it's a great win for this football team. And I think we saw that Tim Couch has matured as a football player. You give complete credit to him in that offense. He made all of his 11 completions count. The defense did an outstanding job of getting to the quarterback, punishing the quarterback, taking what the Ravens offense wanted to do away. But this is a game about turnovers. And in the three losses thus far, this year for the Ravens, 13 turnovers. And again, that was at least part of the story. You know, if you're the Ravens, Trent Dilfer, who's now going to be looking for his 14th straight win, he's got to be looking pretty good, that, that job of managing the game that he was able to do. Cleveland with a different attitude with Butch Davis. Now, who knows how far they're going to go at 4-2, but I tell you yes. what, it's going far into the night yes. tonight. Yes. And deservedly so. There are a lot of happy people in Cleveland when we understand. Two teams not in the playoff on time. I feel secure in saying this. <laughs> Washington at Carolina. Here we go. Marty Schottenheimer. Can we please get a win? George Seifert. Why are these two guys doing this? They said, such great careers, George, with two Super Bowls. Marty for 20 years. Tony Banks. Next play, Roger. You're looking like Chauncey Gardner. Then Banks. Michael Westbrook. Eastbrook. And you know what? Here's what the skins need. They need Sonny Jurgensen <laughs> with the cigar. Come on down, Sonny, with Gar. Meanwhile, Tim Bianca Batuka had 121 yards, and Carolina led 14-0 in the fourth quarter. Next possession, Chris Winky Dinky Don't Don't incomplete to Chris Hetherington and picked off by LeVar Arrington. He goes all the way. 67 yards, and watch this. Whee! 14-7, the skin's in it. Yeah, the ball was thrown actually behind Hetherington. You see him have to spin to get it. LeVar Arrington, a good job of driving on through the football, and those are the kind of big plays expected of him from the Redskins. So Tony Banks, who got uh, bounced in this game, but stood back up. This time, Rod Gardner, touchdown. 85 yards, and just like that in the fourth, the skins have tied it. Under four minutes now. Banks to Michael Westbrook. All of a sudden, look at the... It's like Jurgensen, Redskins. <laughs> Later in the drive, two minutes to go. Banks. Play action. Look at Tony. 
to Gardner. Where's the defense? Down to the 17-yard line. 32-yard field goal. The Skins are going to win it. Brett Conway on to kick a 32-yard field goal. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Look like Tim Conway. No good. What, 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 Mikhail, says Marty. What? For overtime, we might need you again. Good job, Marty. John. The job of the kicker is to kick the ball. Third play of overtime, Banks. Gardner. There he is. Would you touch him? It's a touchdown. The skins have won. But when you're 0-5, wait a minute. They said the foot hit down at the 5. He was accidentally kicked by Carolina, but doesn't matter. Conway, 23-yard field goal. And the skins are off the schneid. They beat the Panthers in overtime, 17-14. Banks do for 346. Well, and that's the key. The 17 to 30, so you're throwing for over 50%, and you're throwing for almost 350 yards. Good job by Tony Banks today. When we return on NFL Prime Time, Ricky Williams, hero last week. Could he run the Saints to a win over the Falcons? The Chicago Bears, speaking of old-time football. Time. Falcons, Saints. Falcons have won 10 in a row against the Saints, except the Saints swept them last year. Keith Brooking, Atlanta. Big underdog this time in New Orleans. Maurice Smith follows a block by Bob's sister, Christian. He night rangers his way for a 23-yard gain. Next play, Chandler. Play action. Chris Chandler throws it. Algie Crumpler bounces off one. Drags another. That's a superior play for a touchdown. Great play of staying with the ball and getting to the end zone. So if Atlanta's tight end can do it, so can New Orleans. Cam Cleland, the throw by Aaron Brooks and the catch. Wow. Well, Brooks puts it low and away. Cam Cleland with a great catch. And then to look at the presence of mind to put the ball inside the pylon for the score. Really two good plays as we are 10-10 early for it. Chandler, play action. Defense bites. Chandler to Sean Jefferson moving on up. Falcons lead it 17-10. Over seven minutes to go, down 10. Haslett going for it on fourth and two. Brooks forces to Willie Jackson. Brooking knocks it down. Haslett unhappy. Dan Reeves said, no, that was incomplete. That's correct. Under a minute to go, it's still 20 to 10. Brooks out of the shotgun. Atlanta backing up. And tipped away. Brooking again. They settle for a field goal to make it 20 to 13. Now here comes the onside kick. Number three, John Carney. Number four, Toby Goen. They're both on the field. Goen's going to do it. Are they going places? Sammy Knight, is he around the ball every game? I guess so. What a, all oh, those tricky shapes, Dan Reeves. You know that. <laughs> so down 20 to 13 with the ball. Brooks to Robert Wilson. Nice grab. Brooks. Will he heave it with just seconds to go? Knock it down! Good job there by the, by the foul. Yeah, they did knock that down. They knock it down. Dan Reeves has won it. Atlanta goes into New Orleans. Saints may be looking to the Rams next week, but Atlanta surprised them. So Atlanta wins it by the count of 20 to 13. I think a game the Saints have to be quite surprised that they lost. Well, and I think the fact that we showed Keith Brookings at the beginning of the highlight package, the great job of playing run defense, holding Ricky Williams to 51 yards. Now we go the Bears and the Bengals. This game would have four wins. Anthony Thomas, second round draft pick for Michigan. Look at the Bears in their black shoes, Tommy. You talk about all-time football. <laughs> Anthony Thomas motors outside at Cincinnati for 46 yards. First and goal, the Bears. Next play, Jim Miller to Fred Baxter. He rustles into the end zone. One yard, 10-0 Chicago for Dick Gerard. Now, last week, Corey Dillon had 140 yards. But against Brian Erlocker. The Bears' defense, different story. Yeah, you watch Erlacher work the middle along with the two big guys inside, Keith Trailer and Ted Washington, and they have virtually eliminated the inside run game for football teams. Here you see Corey Dillon getting stacked up time after time, trying to either run the ball inside just off the tackle or cut the ball back inside. Here he tries to bounce out, and again, the defense is able to catch up, up, up with him. So strong defense inside and speed enough to get outside like Dick. Black like Dick. Butkus, the monsters of the midway. 
Bears up 10-0. Marcus Robinson knee buckles. Tackled by Brian Simmons and Darrell Williams. Robinson out of the game with a left knee sprain. So that's better than it looked. Bears up 10-0 late second. Thomas up the middle. Bears trying to get more score before it's halftime. First and 10, Thomas. I mean, it's pretty basic formula, actually. It's what the Bengals would have preferred to do with Corey Dillon. There's a little pitch from the outside. Bears executing and doing it with confidence, Tom. Eight-yard pickup, 110 in the first half for Thomas. But they didn't score in that series. So, Bears up 10-0 third. Miller, David Terrell, number one draft pick, wide receiver, 41 yards, setting up a TD catch from Miller to Marty Booker, 17-0 Bears. So, you're pitching a shutout, and you're running the ball. I'd say running it, Anthony Thomas, 22 carries, 188 yards, touchdown Chicago, the longest winning streak since 95. Their first shutout since 93. The Chicago Bears have a defense and maybe have a first place team, Tom, if Green Bay would lose. Well, if you run the ball, you make your offense comfortable, give your quarterback a chance to play action pass, and they held the Bengals to 21 carries, 35 yards today. The Chicago Bears have defense. As we go inside the numbers, what an improvement for Chicago. You know, you wonder whether this be the last year for Jerron and his staff with Angelo taking over. But I don't know wondering anymore. Just wondering what seed they might be in the playoffs, Tom. I mean, it's, it's where is this right. coming from? Points allowed after five games this year. An improvement of almost 100. Touchdown, down nine. Look at the numbers. Chicago, and they're only getting better. They're so young. The Bears, four and one. Inside the Numbers is brought to you by Visa, the preferred card of the NFL. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. When we return, the New England Patriots... A few weeks ago, the New England Patriots at 0-2 and behind Tom Brady playing for the injured group Bledsoe shocked the Indianapolis Colts. Terry Glenn came back last week, but, you know, within two weeks he was hurt again. David Patton, how would he fare in his place? So Tom Brady, David Patton playing. But when you get plays like this, a blocked field goal by Brandon Mitchell, Leonard Myers. Yeah, baby. Returns at 35 <laughs> yards to the Colts, 29. <laughs> so they blocked the Vanderjack field goal and the Patriots special teams setting up Tom Brady. Antoine Smith, hand up to David Patton. Oh, my goodness, look at the speed. Wearing the number of Stanley, the steamer Morgan, number 86. Wow, only fast guys can wear that 7-0 the Patriots. Yeah, take a look there at the spot shadow. You see Damon Woody getting out in front. You see Tom Brady getting out in front. Great job of the quarterback and guard getting out in front. Center making some blocks. Peyton Manning to Marvin Harrison. 68-yard gain down to the two. He catches buck 57. Harrison, three plays later, though the Colts are still third and goal. And a roll-up by Peyton. Look at Mike Brabel. Fight off the block and make the play, Tom. But forcing the Colts to settle for a field goal. We're going to take a look here at Tabucky Jones, and Jones is going to do a great job here hurdling through. Look at him get over the blocker right there. You have to block inside out. They don't get that. Tabucky Jones able to get through, get his hand on the football. Lucky Tabucky Jones from New Britain, Connecticut. <laughs> Jim Morris is waiting. We were 2-0 oh until we saw this team. About a man named Brady. Tom Brady to David Patton. What? Look at how fast he could go all the way. 91 yards. That's a Patriot team record. Longest pass play in Patriots history. Was it Grogan to Craig James? We know Craig James caught it. We assume it's Steve Grogan. We'll have to figure it out. Brady to Patton with a screen. Oh, wait a minute. He throws it to Troy Brown, and it's bad every now. So Patton has thrown, run, caught. A TD the first since Walter Payton did it. 22 years to the day. How amazing is that? October 21st, 1979. Oh, why don't you catch another one? You are a receiver. <laughs> Brady to Pat. Four TDs he's accounted for. Brady, 16 of 20. Meanwhile, Peyton Manning against the Patriots is just, he's in a funk. Bobby Hamilton recovers. Colts fans can't recover. They're gone. How about Tom Brady? 
draft pick a year ago, Michigan. 20 and 5 at Michigan, including 2 and 0 in bowls. He's 3 and 1 as a starter for the New England Patriots. 38 to 17, the Pats roll. Our Hank Goldberg with David Patton looking very general-like. I lobbied for that all week because you know I, you know I, I like to think of myself have, having a pretty good arm, you know. But they, Charlie, you know, he really didn't, you know, pay me any mind early on in the week. And finally, he said, "Okay, I'm gonna give you an opportunity." And I showed him in the end of, at the end of the week, you know, that I was able to throw, and he gave me the chance, and you know, Never came up with a touchdown. Had you ever thrown a ball in a game before? Never before. You know, I've been lobbying for my eight out. years, <laughs> my eight years, you know, um, you know, since college and all, you know. And, you know, just finally got somebody to believe in you, you know, give you the opportunity. All right. Just talk about taking advantage of an opportunity. <laughs> Let's go back to the studio. Well, the thing that you think about when you think about this game, Boom, is not so much the numbers. You think about Tom Brady and the enthusiasm that he brings to the New England Patriots. The Patriots and the Colts have gone in opposite directions since they met the first time. I mean, the Patriots have already beaten them twice by 21 points. By the way, it was Tony Easton that threw it, not Steve Grogan. Tony Dungy, Jerome Bettis, Dungy saying at Tampa, bus, take it easy on us, please. <laughs> Meanwhile, the defense of the Steelers did not take it easy on Brad Johnson. Joey Porter came up on all huffing. Get used to this. To Shea Thompson, hello. Corner blitz, boy, they blitz from everywhere, Tom. Bucks field goal, 3 nothing, but they wanted more. Cordell Stewart to pitch to Jerome Bettis. Wait a minute. The bus is throwing. The bus is in the passing lane to Jeremy Tooman. 33 yards, 7 3 steal. From Michigan. <laughs> Look at the play here, Tom. You just don't expect the bus to well, throw it. We, we've got the corner spout shadow there. His job is to force, so he's doing his job. The safety comes up across the field. That's the guy that missed the play. Doesn't have a chance to get back and prevent the touchdown. Pittsburgh Steelers came in in first place. Bill Carr having the defense and the running and some trickery. So, down 3 0. Well, Bettis, they're not down 3 0. They get 7 3. We just showed it to you. It's a 46 yard run when we know that this can happen. The box listed at 255, but I got to tell you, that's the fastest 255 I've ever seen. Outran the entire Bucks defense. 14 3, and here we go. Mike Logan on the blitz. And then next, Joey Porter. Next. And then in Washington, on the corner blitz. Boy, they, they blitz everybody, Tom, on different plays. And then Johnson says, wait a minute, let me throw it quickly to Keyshawn Johnson. In between three guys, off his hands, picked off by Mike Logan. Triple cover. And then, later in the board, 17-3, famous Amos Zaraway fumble. And this is the second most famous chin in football, trailing only Don Shula. Fox and Zoey Drive. Can they get it? Johnson. Sacked by Von Ohoff. Nick Johnson. Sacked by Joey Porter. Nick Johnson. <laughs> Sacked by Joey Porter. Ten sacks. Ties the team record. Not even Joe Green and Dwight White. The dirty hole. And Kelsey Greenwood had 10 sacks as a team. Johnson trying to get the Bucks going to Frank Murphy. But it's under a minute to go. They're down 17-10. Brian Kelly. Wait a minute. The Bucks may be in business for a heave. But after a long delay, a lot of quarters in the peep show, they decide that he never had possession. And it... We kind of see that at that angle. Ed Hockley, good call. Steeler ball. Tony says, I asked the bus to take it easy. Bill, I should have asked you not to blitz. Joey Porter with four of the ten sacks. Unreal performance by the Steeler defense. Jerome Bettis, a new page out of his book. Steeler, first place, fired up. No one expected us to come in here and control the football game like we controlled it from start to finish. And uh, uh, there were some comments made uh, from the other side that they were looking forward to the running game and that they were going to stop it. They said, bring it on. And we came down here and we were able to run the football. I'm tired of Tampa. I'm tired of all these guys who, you know, they, 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 they talk so much and they go to the Pro Bowl because they talk. They ain't nothing but they, they paper champions. That's all they are and that's all they ever going to be. Oh, whoa. Uh, I mean, Steelers understandably talk. Well, mm -hmm. let's start with Pittsburgh because they've done 
They actually are playing Buccaneer football. The Bucks are not anymore. Well, it, it's initially Steeler football yes, from a yes, long I time ago. Yes, yes where, where you Buck run. football back yes, then was where, totally exactly. where you run the football, you run it up the middle, you run it off tackle, you run it outside, but you run the football and you run it consistently. They're doing that and they're making their quarterback comfortable. And even though Cordell Stewart only threw for just over 100 yards, the key is to play fairly mistake-proof football along with that running game and then have a stout defense. But when you think about the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I think this is key. Tony Dungy told both of us this was going to be a mindset game and I think you really have to worry about the mindset of this team now and their ability to defend the run. You know, if Coach said that they were average, they certainly looked that today. Well, they can't defend the run. At least they didn't look like against a really good running team and 10 sacks. That means when your two lines break down, yes, you're in trouble. Tampa Bay, two and three. Surprise. When we return, Titans, Lions, all sorts of fun. Who would be the candidate today to keep the Rams undefeated at the Meadowlands against the Jets? Titans finally got up to Schneid last week. Can they keep it going at Detroit? They haven't won yet. Jeff Fisher, can he get the Titans back winning and, and maybe make something of this season? Derek Mason pass tipped, intercepted by Ron Rice. Whoop! Did it? Whoop! 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 You get the picture, but it's Detroit ball. After the play, Brian Hopkins, Tracy Scroggins, you know what? Neither of us are having a good year. We're leaving. They're both grown up. <laughs> Second quarter, Titans have two field goals, and the turf popped up. Not old-time football. Get rid of it! Under two and a half to go. Then I wonder why Ty Detmer was ever in there if Charlie Batch is going to throw like that. Johnny's mutt. Touchdown, 7-6 Lions. Minute 37 left in the half. Batch. Jermaine Crowell. How about this throw? Touchdown. 14-6, Lions. The score, 14-9, Jason Hansen. Field goal blocked by Henry Ford. Now you knew Henry Ford coming to Detroit. Something was going to happen. Donald Mitchell, touchdown. Titans special teams spelled away last week. Two-point conversion, good. Titans lead 17-14. Then... Frank Wycheck involved in, don't tell me, a lateral? Well, boom, let me do oh, this one. It's Wycheck, a lateral, throws the ball down to Derek Mason, 21. It always works for the time. It does. <laughs> and now this time, here's another one. Play on a lateral, but Wycheck, once you go downfield for a change. Well, that's a great adjustment on the catch because the ball was thrown slightly inside. He's looking over his outside shoulder. Now under five minutes to go, McNair to Wycheck. Touchdown, it's first of the year. Part of the struggles the Titans have had, they lead 24-17. Batch to Crowell, tangled up with Mitchell, and they're tangled up in blue, as Bob Dylan would sing. Crowell down, carded out. Batch, look at the protection from the line. He rolls right there, but otherwise, where's Javon Kurtz? Where's Kevin Carter when he's going back to pass? Batch to Desmond Howard on fourth and ten. You can set your watch by it. Every six years, Desmond is going to catch a touchdown. He's a great return man. It's his first reception touchdown since 95. So now tied at 24, McNair to Derek Mason. McNair, this is where he's most dangerous, Tom, out of the pocket. Yeah, gets out of the pocket, starts to rum down, rumble downfield, and smart enough to slide without getting hit. Ten seconds to go, Jordan Edney, like last week. Good game. So Jordan Edney has two game-winning field goals last two weeks. Titans. We're 0-3 now, 2-3. Detroit, game under Charlie Batch. But Marty Morningwake still looking for his first win of the year. Well, and, and you, you know, give a lot of credit to Charlie Batch for coming along and winning the uh, I mean, and playing well. But the Titans winning the way they won a lot of those 13 games the last two years. Winning hard. And they play Pittsburgh who's in first place next week on a Monday night so they can get in it perhaps. Meanwhile, Rams it up, Marshall, Marshall, Marshall had Trung, 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 Trung candidate. Hardly saw him last year. He was barely on the ballot. But what speed he has, you knew that? Maybe the Jets didn't realize he had these moves too, Tom. You know, people say he's a straight line runner, but he's just got just enough movement to his game to give himself a chance to elude some people. Kurt Warner to... <laughs> As a game, it's a touchdown, 7 nothing to Rams. So St. Louis goes into the Meadowlands, trying to beat the New York Giants, and now the New York Jets in consecutive weeks. Warner. Isaac Bruce, 22 yards. Next play, Warner into Hakeem. Breaks loose. Now watch this. What? The pitch to candidate. Oh, those tricky Rams. They don't care who's in there. What a play. 
44-yard touchdown. And it's a beautiful play because Hakeem and Candidate stick with the option all the way down the field. Hakeem doesn't actually give it to him until they're 15 yards down the field. Under three minutes to go in the half. Any test to birdie. First time he's been picked off all year. Aeneas Williams. Now watch Randy Thomas give it a try, but Vinny, uh, 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 it's a touchdown, 21-7 by Aeneas, and the Rams are way ahead. The Jets have come in at plus 15, but Vinny picked off. Now strong candidate with no Marshall Falk, we're going to take the delayed handoff. Candidate on a draw for eight yards, and then again up the middle in between the tackles, being able to find the holes and find the seam. There another run for 18 yards. Did a lot of what Marshall does for this football team. Now going to catch the screen out here to the upper part of your screen. Look at him hit the hole. Get what he can out of it. Get down. Almost gets the first down. He counted the line for 232 yards, and now he's a candidate for a game ball. Marshall Fogg likes what he sees, and why not? Now watch Warner at the top of the screen. I guess this is some form of single wing. Candidate gets the snap. Touchdown. 12 yards. Boy, the Rams don't let up. Yeah, you see the end of the play right there. Good job of sprinting to the hole. If anything, he's actually faster than Marshall Falk. Maybe not as good a move, but very fast. Now the Rams see onside kick 31-7. Five minutes left in the third. Hey, Herman Edwards really doesn't like it. You know what? The Rams have the greatest playbook on earth. They win 34-14, and now the Rams are 6-0 for the third straight year. The only other team to do that in NFL history the 1929-1931 Green Bay Packers. And, I, hey, look, we figured Marshall Falk out. The Jets could defense this a little bit. Mm. Rams saying, hey, just put somebody else in and we got yeah, all the Yeah, I think a couple of speed. things come to mind. Number one, we saw Trunk Candidate come in and do what we've heard he could do, and that is replace, at least to some extent, Marshall Falk, the 19 carries for 195 yards, three receptions for 37. But I think more importantly, we saw the Rams run the football. And even though Mike Mart said on this morning's show, I'm really not worried about protecting my quarterback, we saw a different story in the X's and O's on the football field. He gave this team some balance, and I think think it'll make Kurt Warner a lot more comfortable as a quarterback. And I tell you one thing about the Jets this year, win or lose, they, they, they've stayed in all the games. Yes. They tried to come back. Yes. The Rams were good enough to just get rid of them. Yes. And the whole second half was just a question of the final score. When we return, please come to Boston, says Jake Plummer. And big game out west. Could Doug Flutie and the Chargers up and the Broncos at the big Q. Welcome to... Time is 2-7 in the Metrodome. Been far from the first place Green Bay Packers beat Dante Culpepper, Kabir, Baja, Biamila, and they're trying to stymie the Vikes. Come on, Green, stopped as the, as the Packers go fourth and two at the eight very early. Turnover on downs. Scoreless game second, Culpepper. Chris Carter, all he does, catch touchdown. Three yards, a Metrodome leap. That's a pretty good leap. 7 nothing bites. No matter about it, Culpepper sight. Far back to pass. Kylie Wong picks it off. He can go all the way. 27 yards, 14 nothing Vikings. Here we go again in this building for the pack. And look at Wong's spot shadow. Just watch where he keeps his head. He's just watching Brett Favre's eyes, allows his eyes to follow him, moves toward the football. Great job of stepping in front, getting the ball, get to the nearest sideline, and get to the end zone. Then, meanwhile, oh, there's the nail. Darren Sharper nails Randy Moss, but he holds on. Helps set up a field goal, though, 17 to nothing. Under two minutes to go, shotgun. And here go the Packers in the Metrodome. I mean, it's just, it's unbelievable. What? I mean, look, does this sum up <laughs> 10 starts for Brett Favre in the Metrodome or what? I mean, this is just, and look at this play. They're bouncing around and just, oh, man. It's it, it just, it's a house of horrors for Favre and the Packers. 22 seconds left in the half. Culpepper into the secondary. Tommy, nobody wants to, what? Yeah, and you, nobody wants to get their head out in front and hit him, but look how fast he looks at 260-plus pounds. You can't catch him, or at least you don't want to catch him. Sets up a field goal, 20 to nothing at the half, and then here's Amon Green. Maybe the Packers get in the game here. First drive, third quarter, inside the 10 green. Third and goal at the two. They were down there for a long time. A couple of penalties. Five to Bubba Franks. 
They down 20 to nothing. You know what? Take it easy there. 20 to 7. <laughs> Culpepper to Byron Chamberlain. Fights, fights, fights for extra yards. First down, Minnesota. Later in the drive, Culpepper. Randy Moss. Sharper again. Nails him. Boy, they were laying it. Moss okay. Same drive now, fourth quarter. Culpepper right up the middle. Get out of my way. Oh, my goodness. And the Vikings go on to slice and dice the first place Green Bay Packers, the Vikings, after Denny Green is the new Wayne Fox. I'm telling you, he's the new Rasputin. The, you know, the, the tragedy in the summer, 4-0 in the preseason. 0-2 start, beat Tampa Bay. 2-3, here comes Green Bay, now salvage the season. And when Minnesota or anybody holds the ball for 38 minutes, as they did today, Tom, I like their chance. Yeah, and it means that they ran the ball pretty well. We talk about Dante Culpepper and Randy Moss and Chris Carter and what they're able to do. But I think the key is that the Vikings have gotten back to running that football. Today with Chapman for 90-plus, but 196 yards total running the football. That will make this team good. Minnesota-Tampa Bay kind of a, a, a game to stay alive next week. And with Green Bay losing the Chicago Bears. The Chicago Bears. It's a scrum. They're in first place <laughs> in the Norris Division at 4-1. and one. When we return, game ball. You got a lot of candidates, if you will. Is brought to you by 1-800-COLLECT. Save a buck or two. My game ball boom goes to David Patton. Ran for a touchdown, threw a touchdown, caught a touchdown. Only the sixth guy to do it since 1960. Wow. And he did it very quickly, too, Tom. Hey, my game ball goes to the Cleveland Browns defense. They bring attitude. They had seven sacks. They forced three turnovers against their arch rival, the Baltimore Ravens, the one-time Cleveland Browns, the party in Cleveland. Who was your primetime player? Now, this was a tough vote. And the candidate is Trump. Boy, what a great game he had, over 200 yards combined running and receiving for the Rams. We had lots of candidates, for the Steeler, defense, uh, et cetera. So Chicago and Pittsburgh, first <laughs> place in the Centrals at 4-1 and 4-1. and, four and one. The team playing the best football in the AFC East, New England. San Diego has moved past Denver. Defending world champions can't no, the beat Cleveland, game is can't Nick beat Cincinnati. San Francisco and Chicago. I know, it's going to be a yeah, good we one. we got a Thursday night game. There's a game on Thursday. We have it. Indianapolis and Kansas City. For Tom Jackson, I'm Chris Berman. Thanks for watching. Johnson trying to settle the score out west. Keep your eye on the ball. NFL Prime Time next. NFL Prime Time is presented by Miller Lite. Prime time, it's Miller time. And now, here's your host, Chris Berman. <laughs> oh, look at this. It's Halloween. It's our favorite time of year. We're our usual costume. Welcome to week seven of NFL Prime Time. Bella Lugosi, along with Tom Jackson. Hello, Thomas. How you doing, Trick bro? Or treat, Trick or Tom. treat, Trick or treat. I tell you what, there were some treats today in some of the games. Yeah. Week seven, is early games, late games, a lot of finishes right at the end, a lot of big comeback, huge comeback. Well, I think a huge weekend for a lot of teams planning to go somewhere at the end, planning to be for some of these teams going into week seven. Well, this wasn't a must-win situation, but these are two of the more, it put smiles on your face to see 4-1 and one San Francisco against 4-1 and one Chicago, like the old days at Soldier Field, seven to nothing. You know, we talk a lot about Coach Mariucci and, and what he's done bringing along this out. See, nothing San Francisco. Niners freaking God, we can come away with a win here. We'd be 5-1. and one. Meanwhile, the Bears just win with Jim Miller. But not on this. Have completed an amazing comeback. The Chicago Bears are 5-1 and one for the first time since 1990. The Bears, who were shut out late last year at San Francisco 17-0, show them how much they've earned. Winning 37-31. Hey, Shane Matthews comes off the bench 25 of 31. Now that's three times in four games. First of all, the Bears defense has scored. I mean, yes, they've actually yes. scored. So what a play by Mike Brennan. It was actually fun look. There are some imperfections in these teams. But, but these are two teams with a different attitude. The Bears come back would say the way the Niners played. They played up 
beat football with a couple of blemishes, and that was the sort of. And, thing. and I think that's the key. You give both head coaches a lot of credit yes. for these young teams playing with enthusiasm. They're big time players making plays. Shane Matthews stepping in for Miller and doing the job that he did at the end of the game. But there's not almost a player on that field that you can't say came up with the big game that his coach needed. And I think even the 49ers, Mooch cannot be as disappointed as you normally would be losing a football game like this. And boy, is Anthony Thomas becoming some kind of a runner in this league with that offensive well, look line. At, look at the picks the last two years for the Bears. Earl Acker, That's Brown, right. That's one right. two last That's year. Right. Thomas, second round pick. <laughs> yes. Terrell stepping up. The, they, these are going to be fun, fun teams. A yes. big comeback for the Bears and a tough loss for San Francisco. And how about Garrison Hurst? Ooh, finally back. He thinks he can be better He's than he all was the way before. Back. That was a pleasant sight. Although the Bears are the team that gets the win 5-1. and one. Meanwhile, the other end of the spectrum. Panthers won opening day. Nothing since then. They're at home against the Jets. White shirt Vinny coming in. And Richie Anderson. It's a family. And he's going to leave it there for Richard Anderson. Look at Mike after dinner Minter. Downfield to hit Vinny. 94 yards. Panthers, of course, missed the extra point, but it's 6-0 Carolina. <laughs> Later in the first. Todd Sauerbrunn. Now, do you think Jamie Henderson got a piece of that I think ball? You can't do it any better than that. Chris Hayes takes it in for the easy score, 7 6 Jets. You remember when Bubby Brister tried to shovel pass for the Jets? It was picked off by Sam Mills way back. Well, this time the Jets, okay, six years later, maybe they forgot. Shovel pass to Curtis Mott. Curtis Martin, 13 yards. Dan Vinny, over the middle to Curtis Mott, eight yards. And it's a good defense by Carolina. Doug Evans. Now, you have to realize that Vinny had gone out to the flat on three of the last four plays that they had run. Doug Evans finally, finally jumps on the out pattern, gets an interception, and runs it back 49 yards. Six straight game with an INT for Evans. And meanwhile, when nursing a 12-10 lead from his own end zone, Chris Winky, Dinky, don't. Although it's like a punt, except that Aaron Glenn, as you point out, Tom, he's a good punt returner. Then he brings it back. It's gonna be, you're going to see all 11 yards of it right there. <laughs> Eventually, with five minutes to go, John Hall, 34-yard field goal. It's good. Good. No offensive touchdown Jets, but 159 yards rushing for Curtis Martin. And the New York football Jets wasn't pretty, but the Jets are now 4-3. and three. And they win at Carolina 13-12, who haven't won since opening day, Tom. Well, and, and this game is not so much about the numbers and the one-point win for the Jets as much as it is Herman Edwards' team learning about winning football games. And now they find themselves right in the thick of things in well, the AFC East. The AFC East, which is a wide-open division. When we return, would this be the day for the Lions to get off the schneid? Very early, they found out, maybe not. And uh, we've seen this before. Minnesota goes into Tampa Bay. The Bengals and the Lions, Lions only team, haven't won yet. Marty Morningwake has gone goatee, he's gone clean shape. Something's got to give. But the problem was it was his defense who had to Corey Dillon pinned at his own four and, and tell. Corey tell Dillon is a contact runner. You saw him get the contact at the beginning of the run. And it could go all the way. Longest play from scrimmage in Bengals history. Longest running play ever given up by the Detroit Lions, and they've been around a long time. 7-0 Cincinnati. First play from scrimmage. Out. 14-6 Bengals, second quarter. John Kitta slant to Darnay Scott. And one Lion defender took out the other one. And nice job by Scott staying on his feet. Touchdown to the chagrin of defensive coordinator Vince Tobin. Lions down 21-6, but here's a weapon. But when you talk about return game, there are, there are few as exciting as Desmond Howard. Desmond Howard just has a knack for it for finding the crease. We've seen him doing it in many games, including the Super Bowl, which he was the MVP of for the Green Bay Packers. The Bengals lose outside, contain. Once he gets outside, boom, he's gone. He could go all the way. Not quite. It sets up a, a, a Charlie Banch and David Sloan touchdown, 21-13. The Bengals at the half. Third quarter with a score, 24-19. Banch play action. Sloan, touchdown, two-point conversion. Good Detroit with a lead, 27-24. But on third and six, John Kittner, under 10 minutes to go, takes the licking, keeps on ticking. Two plays later, Dillon. And in case you weren't sure, I'm really in there. Touchdown, 31-27 Cincy. Late four, Charlie Batch. Ball off the hands of Johnny Morton. Picked off by Darrell Williams. This is the way it goes when you haven't won yet. They'll get their win eventually. But a tough pill to swallow for Marty Morningweg, Matt Mellon, all the Lions. Again, they score a lot of points. 
but they got themselves behind the eight ball early, 31-27 Cincy. And contributions by a lot of Bengals, and offensively you see the, the good day by John Kidna, but most of it's about Corey Dillon, the offensive line, Willie Anderson and company doing the job and opening up the running lanes. And how about Dick LeBeau? The Bengals yes. with four wins have yes. won as many games as they did all last year. It's their first non-losing first half since 1990. Meanwhile, Tampa Bay, two and three, trying to avoid a two and four start at home against Minnesota, who beat him in week three. About a bonnet down at Culpepper, hit in the face by Jamie Duncan. I, I really like the way this young man plays. Doesn't matter, his nose was broken, stays in there. Work done, not in. Mike Allstott was in. Boy, was he ever. Four years ago, the greatest one-yard run in the history of football. Touchdown. Touchdown, Allstott. 7 nothing, And look at the way he runs, Tom. Well, and it's not only just the power of Mike Allstott. We're going to watch a couple of two, three runs here where Mike Allstott does a very nifty job of moving his feet, changing direction on the defense, and then powering his way upfield. There for a 12-yard gain. And again, watch him here, moves to the left, back to the right, comes to the left, and then powers his way into the end zone. So six-yard run, Allstott, 14 nothing, Tampa Bay. Defense for the Bucs. Look at John Lynch come, boom! To help finish <laughs> off this play as Doug Chapman carried it. Chris Carter, all he does, trying to find extra yards. But James Canada has another donut and has another tackle. Three yard loss. Carter frustrated. Personal foul. Vikings no first downs in the first half. Moments later, Carter lands Johnstone sidelines. Things don't go well for the Vikes. And we've seen that sometimes from them. Brad Johnson, Fox, nothing, Tampa Bay. Dead. Up 34 8. And he runs right over the Jolly Roger. <laughs> Touchdown, All Stock. 129 yards. Three TDs for him as Tampa Bay. Boy, they, they do this all the time with Minnesota. We're going to show you in a minute. 41 14 over the Vikings as they outgain him 446 to 192. Defense and offense play it hard. The Bucks haven't had a complete game in a long time. Warren Sapp with our Hank Goldberg. Hammer. Thanks, Boomer. Well, Warren, the first half about as perfect as you could get. They had the ball five times, no first downs. How about that? Oh, we just wanted to come out and get ourselves back into a groove. Get ourselves back playing our ball game where we can go get on a run. Is this what you would call buck ball, what you guys showed out here this afternoon? That's a little better than buck ball. A buck ball will give you a nail bite at the end. We pretty much put this one away early. Well, with all start running the way he did and, you know, those long drives by the offense and you guys stopping the way you did. All 53 guys on the field doing an effective job. Special teams playing well for us, getting a couple kick returns, and the offense is putting up 41 points for big. All right, let's go back to prime time. All right, Hammer Day. Tommy, sometimes the Bucs this year have looked like the blind leading the blind. They were much better. Today. Well, I, I think this is exactly what Tony Dungy has talked about. He's talked about playing well in all three phases. And I think that uh, when you heard Warren Sapp there say special teams, defense, offense, all played with great effort today and great adjustments by their coaching staff they as well. They go into Green Bay next week, and let's see how they respond to that. Now, when Minnesota comes, and we talked about it this morning on Sunday NFL Countdown, so we go inside the numbers. Four games now the Vikings have played at the new Sombrero. The first three years, 98, 99, and last year, they come in 7-0, 7-4, 7-0, but they come away with a loss. Last year was a big style. This time, the Vikes come in 3-3. Three and three. It's always the spot for Tampa Bay to seemingly look like a team that can go places in the postseason. And it usually looks like a confidence builder for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as they make that stretch one run that we're finally getting used to. We'll see at Green Bay. Wonder what the temperature will be. Inside Cleveland Browns at the... Here was home against the Chiefs. Don't tell me the Chiefs are going to come and take upset. Well, Doug Flutie... 4-0 with the Chargers at home this this year. And their third straight home game, though, this one looked a little different at the beginning. Jerome Woods picks it off, returns it to the 32-yard line, sets up a Peterson field goal, 3-0 Chiefs. Then Flutie rolls out and can't avoid the big man. Wayne Clemens sacks and throws him hard to the ground, lands on his head. Concussion had to leave second quarter. And this is when you realize how really small Doug Flutie is. When you see Dwayne Clemens flip him over like that, he's a tough guy, but he took a shot to the head. Looks like a little slight concussion. 9 nothing Chiefs, a lateral. Trent Green to Tony Gonzalez to Michael Ricks. All oh, those tricky Chiefs down to the seven. Three plays later, big game for Priest Holmes. 181 yards. Three of them here. 19 nothing Kansas City at the half. 
But wait a minute, Drew Brees is blowing in for Flutie. And Drew Brees. Under throw, but Jeff Graham is there, 41 yards down to the 25. Ladanian Tomlinson left for a while injured. Sweeps right for a touchdown, 19-10. With the score, 19-13 in the fourth. Drew Brees. Curtis Conway. That looked very smooth. 27 yards to the 20-yard line. Next play, Drew Brees. Pumps. Freddie Jones. Touchdown. 20 yards. The lightning bolt. San Diego. Super Charger. 20 to 19. They lead it. But Priest Holmes, running well on a Sunday, as a priest should. Down to the 20. Holmes. To the 12. Tough carry. Tony Richardson. Touchdown. They go for two. No good. It's 25 to 20. San Diego down five. 51 seconds left. Breeze. To Tim Dwight. Oh, man. Jerome Woods knocks his helmet off. Personal foul. Chargers in business. Kansas City territory. Breeze. Running. Tries to lateral. It's forward. The game ends. And Dick Vermeil and the Chiefs. They're not going to keep him down all year. The Chiefs win for only the second time. And a tough loss for San Diego. A game, a donut game. With at Denver and at Oakland coming up. We should have this one. Those are the ones the young team. Yeah, we, we know that that happens. But Dick Vermeil and his team, boy, what a job of running the football with Priest Holmes today for 181 yards. And now, can they do it again at Soldier Field? Two teams with great fans and great history. The Papa Bear and Paul Brown. The Bears and the Browns, each in the hunt. Shane Matthews hit by Wally Rainier, fumbled, picked up by Courtney Brown. His first game this year. Look at the big fella move. His touchdown in his first game in year number two for him. 7-0 Cleveland. Paul Enger, fake field goal. They're going to pooch kick. Great play, Bears special teams. Down at the one. You know who would like that? You know who would? The Papa Bear. Next Bears drive. The A train gets the little flick from Shane Matthews. He picks up 20 yards later in the drive. Anthony Thomas runs it in for the score. He had a buck nine in the first half, 7-7. Now we go to the third, fourth and one. Cleveland at the Bears 31. Tim Couch emerging to Quincy Morgan down to the four, 27 yards. Couch. Nick, go ahead, Tom. That was a fourth and one call. Just a gutsy call by the coach. And then backpedaling to Mike Sellers. It's a Sellers market. 14-7, Cleveland. Next drive for the Browns. Couch. And you're going to find a tip by last week's hero, Mike Brown. But this time into the hands of Kevin Johnson. 55 yards, 21-7. Cleveland! And Mike Brown does a great job of playing the football, does everything except bring it down. It tips into Johnson's hands. Sometimes better to be lucky than good. So it's 21-7. Minute to go in the fourth. Matthews to Des White. Crash into me. Down to the 15-yard line. The Shane Matthews band. It's marching to Marty Booker. Touchdown. 30 seconds left. 21-14. You know what's coming. The onside kick. Look at the bounce. The Bears have it. It changes hands, what, 14 times? Maybe more. <laughs> Bears, can you believe? Down 15 4 with four minutes to go last week. They won an OT. It can't happen again. When have we seen that happen this week? Wait a minute. Tip and caught by James Allen on the final play. We're tied at 21. Yeah, you see the ball get tipped right there James by James Allen. An impossible play for the Chicago Bears, but they end up again with a miracle play at the end of a game. So we go to overtime, and the Bears win the toss, but they punt. Cleveland. Tim Couch tipped by Brian Robinson. It's Mike Brown. Touchdown. Wait a minute. New York Yankees, games four and five. <laughs> Chicago Bears, week seven and eight. The Papa Bear thrills the Bears in overtime for the second straight week. They're six and one as they win it by the count of 27 to 21. I'm not sure. I believe I saw that. Two touchdowns last seconds of the game.
Tommy, maybe there's some magic at Soldier Field, too. I don't I, well, I, give them the I, I think Both teams, both teams and that's the point. I think that both teams show that they're really competitive, really good, solid football teams. But the Chicago Bears are finding a way to win, and I think they have stability, not only with that defense, but, boy, does the A-train, Anthony Thomas, give them something that they can depend on week in and week out. Very, very hard runner. 357 throwing for Matthews. A-train, 96 yards running, and despite... Brown, more on that in a moment. The Bears up their mark, their amazing mark this year. The Chicago Bears remain in first place at six and one. Game balls coming up. Ridden line. Been in the NFL and rushing. Can he rush the Jets to a win at the bottom of the hour? At the Saints. That's our Sunday night game. Primetime Players is brought to you by 1010 to 20. Dial it and all calls up to 20 minutes are only 99 cents. Boom, my game ball goes to the Titans, Steve McNair, a game that they had to win, and boy, did he perform. The, you see the numbers there, the two touchdowns passing and the two running. Tommy, with the Bears winning obscured, is Courtney Brown's first game of the year. Three sacks, a fumble return for a touchdown, seven tackles. He's just warming up. He was unbelievable. And who gets the game ball? Well, you know what? A lot of good candidates that Tom Brady's play. He's the leader in the clubhouse. Mon Green, Steve McNair. I'm telling you, you and I couldn't believe Courtney Brown looking very Bruce Smith-like. And so the Chicago Bears, magic, and the Baltimore Ravens, resilience, and the Green Bay Packers, resilience, they headline a day. Well, yeah, and I, and I started this show with this. You're only safe in this league if you have a bye, if you're not playing. Enjoyed it, Thomas. Thank you. For Tom Jackson, I'm Chris Berman. Thanks for watching NFL Prime. In the pack, have their eye on first. Will the monsters of the midway run out of miracles? Can the Steelers jumpstart their kicking game against the Browns? Would the Finns endure a nail-biting finish in Indy? Did Curtis, my favorite, Martin, score a trifecta? How many yards did a well-rested fog rack up? Will Donovan and the Eagles devour the Vikes? Can the Bronx knock the surge out of the lightning bolts? Will the 49ers stop the Saints from marching in? NFL Prime Time. Next. NFL Prime Time is presented by Miller Lite. Prime Time is Miller Time. And now, here's your host, Chris Berman. Hello once again, everybody. Welcome to week nine of NFL Primetime. Chris Berman along with longtime Derek Kidd, sidekick Tom Jackson. And Tommy, uh, and finally, you know, we, we talk about teams kind of stepping up and establishing themselves within their division. Well, almost every game on this day was divisional game. Well, and that's why they become so important now. We're getting to the halfway point, and certainly every game now in your division against one of those opponents almost counts double. Well, and two teams that know each other very well because they both made the playoffs a year ago, and then they played each other right away. AFC's combatants, Miami and Indianapolis. Here we go from the big horseshoe. Miami won two of three last year, including the all-important postseason game. Marvin Harrison in, Edron James is not. Dolphins getting pumped. Harrison, for him, at times had a quiet year, but not today. Although, look at this. Travis Miner majors in, in tightrope skipping down the sideline. That's a superior run. 7-3, Miami, 56 yards in the first quarter. Uh-oh. Still 7-3, second quarter. Peyton Manning. Marvin Harrison, double team, doesn't matter. Nine yards, that's pretty. 10-7 the Colts. Later in the second. Tradition, J.P. lap to Chris Chambers, one of the Chambers brothers. 74 yards, 14-10, Dolphins. The later second, Manning. is going to be picked off by Sam Madison from Louisville. But he leaves the game, and, and I, I don't know, Thomas, is he going to Louisville? No, the Dolphins <laughs> hope not. A slight concussion, bruised shoulder, but made a good play. 17-10 Miami, third quarter, Manning, pump fake, Harrison in the corner, touchdown, 17 all. Yeah, we'll take another look at it here. Watch Brock Marion at the safety spot, Jameer Fletcher on the second spot. You're looking for the corner to fade on this play. He starts to do it late, doesn't get back in time. Touchdown, Manny. Colts punt from their own territory. Jeff Ogden makes the hit on Travis Miner. It's a fumble. And the Colts have it. And they're in business in Miami territory. So from the 40, right away. 
Play action. Manning. Harrison. Wide open. 40 yards. Colts have the lead. 24-17. They with the score 24-20 now in the fourth. Manning. Harrison. First down. But. Uh-oh. Baton bloodied on a helmet-to-helmet -helmet shot. Swollen jaw. We'll have x-rays later to see if it's broken. Let's hope not. Lorenzo Bromel with the hit. And that brought in Mark Griffin for a series. With James out, Dominique Rhodes has been a human highlight reel. But on this play, oh, no, it's a fumble, and Jason Taylor's on it. Dave wants that set. Finally, the defense has made the big play. So here comes Miami. Fiedler. Time has come today for Chris Chambers. 29 yards, and the Dolphins have come from behind. Jim Morrison, no time to wallow in the fire. Later, it's 27-24. Manning, Harrison, ooh, just out of his reach. Tom, with Sertain all over him. Yeah, and you see the move inside. Sertain bit on it, does a bit of holding to catch up with the play. As long as they don't get called, it's not illegal. Fourth and 21, 32 seconds left. Manning hoping just out of the dive of Terrence Wilkins and Miami, which won two of three from the Colts last year. Miami, which has now won, oddly enough, four straight at Indianapolis. Miami maintains their lead in first place in the AFC East at six and two. They win it by the count of 27 to 24. Uh, almost 400 yards for Miami against the Colts. And I, it, it's odd because a lot of what we think these teams... Look, first of all, it's a fun <laughs> that's game. That's right, okay? that's right. Fun, fun game. game. And again, Miami, they come from and behind Miami against the Colts. And Miami wins. And they seem, to, they seem to play with confidence against the Colts. But isn't it interesting that these two teams, what we think and what they think are some of their strengths, haven't really played out this yeah, year. Yeah, and so I think far, more Tom. importantly, what Dave wants that thinks in, in case of the Mi Miami Dolphins, he wants to run the bell, ball well with Lamar Smith. Today he only had 53 yards. So the strength of that team is not Jay Fiedler throwing the football, it's their ability to run and then set up the deep pass with play action pass and play solid defense. And then when you look at the Indianapolis Colts, I think they miss Edron James. They didn't get the yard. He's 42 yards rushing uh, today by their lead back. And then Peyton Manning again. Two more picks, three more sacks, so not playing up to par with what we think is Peyton Manning's status. And hopefully not hurt very badly. By the way, the leading tackler for the Colts, Mike Peterson, a torn PCL, not ACL or MCL, but a PCL. And Kevin might be able to play with that. They don't know yet a PCL, not the Pacific Coast, but not what the Colts needed in a loss to drop them to four and four. Meanwhile, in the AFC East, Buffalo is at New England, and no one circles I-495 around Foxborough like the Buffalo Bills had to try it. One and six, could they beat Tom Brady and the Patriots? Patriots try to go over 500. And let me tell you about a man named Brady. Brady, Kevin Fogg, into the shadows, seven nothing New England. First, the score is 7-3, going into the third now. Brady, remember he and David Patton a couple of weeks ago against Indy? And this is going to be incomplete, but Antoine Winfield doesn't like the call. They call it, though, Tom, interference. Yeah, they call it interference at the back of the end zone. When they showed the replay, you actually got a pretty good look at Winfield actually getting him, pushing him out of the end zone. A hey, Buffalo Bill last year, now a Patriot, and you know he loved this touchdown. Antoine Smith, 14-3, New England. In the fourth, after Terrell Buckley sacks uh, Rob Johnson, he would leave the game with an injured right on Monday, but this was just after he made a great play that was nullified by a penalty. So while he's gone, this is Tom Brady back to pass, but meanwhile, the game is not over. Kendrick Office causes a fumble, Dave Foreman, 55, gets it, and here he is, Alex Van Pelt. And Van Pelt, who's been around for a while, hits Peerless Price for a touchdown, 17 yards, throws a two-point completion, it's 14-11. Onside kick, it's a good one. Buffalo almost gets it, but New England gets the ball. And then, look at this run. Boom, 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 boom. Antoine Smith, 40 for sweet yards as the Patriots go over 500 as they beat the Buffalo Bills 21 to 11. So New England with some running game, and they're winning again with Brady. 
They just seem to have that snap again. Yeah, and a little bit of balance to this New England offense now. Searching for a running back ever since Robert Edwards disappeared from this offense years ago. Maybe Antoine Smith now giving them what they need in terms of balance. And Greg Williams, first year at the Bills at the halfway mark, 1-7. 1978, when Herman Edwards played defensive back for Dick Vermeil, and the two helped combine to pull off the miracle of the Meadowlands. Edwards against Vermeil today, and Edwards said, Curtis, my favorite. Martin, the leading rusher in Priest Holmes, is the second leading rusher in the NFL. So, was it going to be a ground war? I like the way Herman's done everything here in his first year. Every time his team doesn't play classy football, he speaks out. And he's not afraid to gamble on fourth and two. Tom Tupa, low honey, with the completion to James Dirt. And so the drive keeps going, although the Jets don't score on the drive to fight the fourth down gamble. Trent Green picked off by Victor Green. It was Gang Green against Trent Green today, who was picked off three times, and he's had a few games this year, Tom. When he's looked, frankly, somewhat lost. Well, he certainly, he certainly struggled for this football team at the quarterback position. Fourth and one at the 25. Herman decides to go for it. And why not when you have Curtis, my favorite, Mark? 25. <laughs> and watch the move that he puts on Greg Wesley right there. Wesley thought he was going to go out of bounds. Martin cuts back inside, high steps into the end zone. So the score is 17 0 Jets now in the third. Here is Martin off right tackle, then to the middle, then back outside, 15 yards. And he caps it off from the spot just in there. Four carries, 43 yards on that drive. All double-digit carries except the TD. And the Jets go on to win impressively 27-7. Hey, don't look now, Tom. The New York football Jets are 6-3. And, and isn't it just like clockwork? You look at the numbers there, the 20 carries for uh, over 100 yards. That is Curtin Ma Curtis Martin every single weekend. And he passed the great Jim Taylor for 16th on the all-time rushing list. Great job. Certainly an impressive name to pass. Martin moves up the list. Cowboys, Falcons. And now here's some guys who first NFL start. Ryan Leaf, well, I haven't started for a while. How do you get that? Oh, yeah, there's it. Ryan Leaf, <laughs> first start for a while, first for Dallas. Meanwhile, some people call him Maurice. Others call him the gangster of love. Maurice Smith, 44 yards down to the 30. He had 148 yards rushing for Atlanta. Vic, play action to Algie Crumpler, and Algie looks like Plankton. He's in the end zone. It's 7 to 3. Atlanta's a heck of a play around the pylon. Then lead play action to Jackie Harris. You didn't hear from him once every five years. It's a touchdown, 13-7 Dallas. And then yeah, Terry Gordon got in the action here, and he, he can do this on punt returns, Tom. Well, he's, he's a former Bronco. He's done a great job of this with whoever he's been with, including the Raiders as well. Chargers. You see him the, with the Chargers as well. Cut up the middle of the field, go north-south, make a couple of cuts, get what you can out of the punt return. And right there, he's going to be brought down right about the 15-yard line. Watch this play. This is not Vic in at quarterback. It is Doug Johnson. This is a pretty impressive throw. Rolling and firing nice to Brian Kozlowski. 17-13 Atlanta. With five and a half to go in the third. Now, 16 seconds to go down by seven. Leaf trying to make something happen. Keith Brooking makes the pick. And the Falcons hold on to beat Dallas. 20 to 13 for Atlanta. They're even at four and four. 12 for 32 for Vic. 14 of 22 for 114 for Ryan Leaf. Neither exactly lighting it up. Yeah, but I think Dan Reeves making a lot of the right moves. He, he saved this young quarterback, Mike Vick, until now. He gets his first start. Maybe he'll improve as the season goes on. When we return, Jacksonville was 2-0, but Tom Coughlin's team trying to snap a five-game losing streak. Dick LeBeau and the Bengals looking uh, perhaps to go 5-3 if they can win it. John Kitten had a 300-yard day. Here's the world-famous Kitten and a T.J. Hosh Manzada connection. Hosh Manzada. <laughs> Hosh Manzada. Peter Warren. Watch the young receiver. He's going to push T.J. Slaughter inside, then go outside, block Fernando Bryant. That's a great job by a wide receiver helping Corey Dillon to get into the end zone. Bengals lead 13-7 at the half, and the third mark for another Jimmy Smith. They're just so good at this. They're just so good at it. 14-13 Jaguars. Next drive, Brunel looking for Smith again. Who wouldn't? Artrell Hawkins called for pass interference, and then to add to it, 
Takeo spikes on sportsman like conduct. So he had up the penalties. It's 52 yards on one play of penalty. So then it's Stacy Mack. Touchdown, 21-13, Jaggy Wires. Brunel, later third, rolling. That's just a pretty pass to a wide open Keenan McCardell who fires it in the wall. And the Jags lead 28-13. John can get out of there. Get out of there. Not out of there. Go forward. It doesn't matter. <laughs> just at this point, the game is over. Safety. Jacksonville. Well, that, that feeling hasn't been around since almost summer, right? Since the two weeks in, uh, in September. But they look good there. Dylan to 58 yards. That's the key. You come out, you hold Dylan to 58, you put the onus on John Kittner to have to win the football game. This team has a problem throwing the ball. On we go to Pittsburgh and Cleveland, a great rivalry renewed. Both are contenders. Pittsburgh in first place. Both teams lost heartbreakers. Last week, Chris Brown was, of course, went only one for five last week in field goals. And the dog pound let him hear it early. But then there's Jerome. But hey, wait a minute. Look at forward stealer Orpheus Roy. The equivalent of a two-run homer for Jim Tomey, 2-0 Cleveland. Tim Couch, Tom, I just feel O.J. did it. He did. O.J. Santiago, the touchdown, nine minutes from Tim Couch. I just, I just feel that way. Yeah, and early on in this game, Cordell Stewart not getting a whole lot of help from his wide receivers here going to Flexico Burns in the end zone. Flex right at the front part of the end zone. And again, the second quarter, 9-6 Browns. Stewart's going to scramble, going to throw the ball deep. Look, he's making something happen out of nothing. Right there, a ball that's tipped, but Troy Edwards still had the opportunity to make the catch for him. Cleveland leads 12-9 in the third, on 36, Pittsburgh, Cordell Stewart. This is set up beautifully. Look at even the block already in the backfield. Famous Amos Saraway to the midfield stripe, and he comes back to the middle, to the 40, to the 30. He could go all the way. Whoa, 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 whoa. He doesn't quite go all the way. He's tackled down to the two-yard line. What a big play, though, for Pittsburgh. Next play, Cordell Stewart looking. Trying to make something happen. Nothing there. Nothing here. But Tyrone Rogers knocks it out of bounds. Now, wait a minute. Red flag challenge for Butch Davis because let's see, Tommy. Yeah, watch Tyrone Edwards hustle over to make this play. And watch the pylon. You can see the ball pass behind it. Made it a pretty easy call for the official. And a big break for Cleveland. Pittsburgh was on the one, but instead it's a touchback, and now it's Cleveland's ball. Meanwhile... Pittsburgh when they get it back. Chris Brown, 37-yard field goal, good. He had four field goals. He went out to practice, practiced 35-yard field goals. The distance that he had missed the week before was 16 for 16 in Wednesday's practice. Jason Gilden, one of seven sacks for the team, three and a half for him, 34 for the Steelers on the season. Under two minutes to go, third and eight, Pittsburgh. Cordell, stopped short of the first down. Bill Cowher says, well, Chris Brown, you're hot. Go. 45-yard attempt. He missed right last week. He misses left here. They made four or five, but this one, and look at Cowher supporting his kicker. It goes so far in overtime. Toss Pittsburgh. Jerome Bennett, 12-12 game. The Bucks rumbling for 27. And with Brown instilled with the coach's confidence, he's out for a 32-yard and a winner. Right down the pipe. Good. It's good. All 15 points on field goals by Chris Brown. Redemption. Pittsburgh hands Cleveland. Second straight heartbreaking overtime loss. Brown, the hero with five field goals, talked about the kick. I told Jerome, you know, right before overtime, I said, you guys just get the ball down there and give me another chance. And he told me, he said, we're going to give you another chance. Would you like to get to the point where you're not having press conferences after games? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like it if I never talked to one of you guys ever again, personally. Well, he's, I mean, you understand it. I mean, if he yes, the team yes, would be scoring today. Yes. Look, the Pittsburghs, is there any team, I know the Raiders have done this, and we know exactly who the Rams are, but if anyone else, is there, do we know exactly? And, and I think that's exactly what makes them as consistent as they are. They come out every single weekend with the idea of running the football, no matter who they're playing. This is the fourth 
time this year that they have been over 200 yards. You had Jerome Bettis moving into 12 all-time on the rushing list ahead of Ricky Waters, now chasing after O.J. Simpson. So, you know, this team absolutely knows who they are, and they've been successful, as successful as anybody, doing what they do, which is running the ball. 163 for Bettis. And let me, again, second straight week, including the loss to Baltimore. I mean, they double the figures or more of the opponent, 428 to 187. Yeah. Only problem. If they got a touchdown here or there, they would be mauling teams. You know, mauling with, them. with the exception of Jacksonville, it's the whole division. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is. It's going to be a nail biter every week. All the more important to have your field goal kicker on the same page with the ball club. And Chris Brown was on this day. When we return, Tampa going up to winless Detroit with the Lions show some teeth. And Amon Green and the oldest Glenn Reyes on Sunday Night Football in Seattle, bottom of the hour. The Detroit Lions trying to get off the schneid that's seen them go to 0-7 in the Mill and Morning Wake era. They're hosting Tampa. Warren Sapp zeroing in on Charlie Batch. Brad Johnson, this is a true screen. It's about a two-foot <laughs> pass to Warwick Dunn. Swimming for 12 yards, 10-0. Tampa Bay, two minutes left, second quarter. Yeah, pretty complex setup, though. You watch Ward Dunn. Robert Porsche is going to come. He's going to chip him just a little bit inside, then immediately gets outside. Good delivery of the ball, and then look at the downfield blocking. One, two, three, four blocks, and Ward Dunn into the end zone. So 10 0 at the half. Now the Lions just looking for something. Batch to Corey Schlesinger, and see, down at, even there, it doesn't look like a fumble, but Tampa Bay smartly. Rondé Barber picks it up. He doesn't sprint, but he, he's in the end zone. Then we'll talk about it. So first, they rule on the field touchdown, but it's challenged by Morning Wagon. As you freeze it, you can see why they won the challenge. Well, boom, not only is his knee going to be down, but as you watch it, his whole body's going to be down on the ground before the ball pops up. But the ref didn't have a good view of it. He was standing actually behind the play. Next play. 17 reps real slow on a lot. 17 reps real slow on a lot of these reviews of this game, by the way. This is puzzling. Tampa wins it. They're 4-4, four four, hosting the Bears next week in some sort of position. And, and the thing I love is you keep watching Ward Dunn and watching him work for his quarterback, the chip of Porsche and then the touchdown. That last pass that we showed that he caught, he was flat on his belly. He got up and gave Johnson somewhere to throw the football. 60 receiving 50 being a workout. And now atop the NFC Norris, the great Gale Sayers at Soldier Field to watch the great Brett Favre and the Packers to see if the Bears could stay in first by one game. The 162nd meeting, the longest robbery in the NFL. Favre, now Mike Brown did it in overtime. Let's get started early, shall we? Interception. But this was about the only foolish pass that Brett would throw. But this did set up Paul Edinger, 47-yard attempt. You tell me what happens. <laughs> Doink. Doink! It's good. 6-0. Dub Bears with a score of 6-3 far. Watch this. Zing! Oh, man, are you kidding me? To Billy Schrader, touchdown. They have what a laser. And we know that Brett Favre can make all the throws, and one of the great things about Brett Favre is that he has such a short memory. You saw the interception of Mike Brown earlier on, but watch him here. He rolls, he throws back against to the middle of the field of William Henderson, something you're not supposed to do, but Brett again has that short memory. Then again, rolling to his left, and look at the zip on that football to Antonio Freeman. Nine-yard touchdown, 17-9, pack, 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 pack. Now early moments, fourth far force out. Oh, touch. oh. Touch to Freeman. Setting up a long well field goal, 20 to 12. The With over four minutes to go, another bear miracle. It had to happen. The fans said it had to happen. Jim Miller playing the whole way. No Shane Matthews band. First play of the drive, Miller to Marty Booker was a workhorse all day. Makes a 25-yard play up to his own 45. A third and five, Miller to Des White, first down. Under two minutes to go, third and seven. Miller from the Pack 41 to Fred Baxter. And Bo Jew is called for pass interference. I didn't think that was pass interference, Tom. Jew? <laughs> With 117 left, fourth and three. Miller, Booker, and oh, it's a first down. Here comes another miracle! You can smell it!
Dan Miller on fourth and four. Wait a minute. You mean James Allen, who caught a Hail Mary, couldn't catch the swing pass to keep the drive alive? Yeah, and certainly this ball is thrown a little bit behind him, but boy, if your team is going to win, you got to figure out a way to make plays. Get your hips around, get your arms in front, make that play. Hey, look, three straight miracles at Soldier Field, impossible, as Ted Washington and Brett Favre talk. And the Green Bay Packers have now nodded the Bears first place in the NFC North Division. Each team is at 6-2 and two at the halfway mark. Brett Favre, he had that laser working, and you know what? Even he was pleasantly surprised. I maybe, maybe underestimated my arm. I, I just happened to look up, you know, and saw him, and I said, I hope the old arm's got a little bit left in it. And, uh, that one... That was a rocket, but that wasn't my best one. The one I threw to Billy on the crossing route, in front of our bench. I hope, I think the crowd thought it was going to be picked by Walter Harrison. Because it was similar to the one last week against Tampa. And I learned my lesson. This one I wasn't going to lie. I don't even know if Billy saw it. It's nice to know I still got a little bit left in it. I think he's got more than a little bit left. You know, I talked to, to, to him, Tommy, after the Baltimore game, and he said, I made three or four throws. I wasn't sure I could still make it. Can we, can we make this clear, Brett? You can still you can make throw. Those throws. Yeah, uh, Brett was talking about his arm there, and what we sense is is that he still has great strength in his arm. He's able to be accurate. He's able to make some throws that no one else in this league can make, and I thought that that was the key, along with the balance that Amon Green brings to this offense, and what an effort by the Packer defense. I think they're becoming a better unit. We this week. This is what they wanted. They now got this game out of the way. They know that Chicago now has another six division right. games to play while they have only three left. So all of a sudden, they really feel like they're in the driver's seat. So to week nine before any NFC Central team won a game on yes. the road. Tampa yes. won it, but certainly Green Bay did. And they held the Chicago running attack, Thomas, et cetera, to 43 Yes, it's a great job. They bring defense. It's just in. They have a quarterback. This also just in. The Rams have a good offense. How'd they do after their bye? Two teams were fun to watch. Steve Mariucci, San Francisco. And Terrell Owens had a war of words in the midst of one of the nicest stories all year. The 5-2 and two Niners against Jim Haslett's New Orleans Saints. Jeff Garcia to Owens at the touchdown. First quarter, 7-3 the Niners. Owens just makes so many things happen on the field. Garcia rolls out. Look at Jeff by time to Owens. Beats double coverage. Touchdown, 14-3. And see, Terrell can do this. Gives the ball to a young man in the end zone. Still 14-3 second, Aaron Brooks. Ran for 100 at Candlestick last year against the Niners. Oh, the Joe Little Bighorn. Touchdown, two-point conversion. Good. 14-11. Horn quieting the crowd. Garcia dumped to Kevin Barlow. Barlow with a head of steam. And some moves. Oh, my goodness. Still rolling. 61 yards. 21-11. The Niners. In the third with the score, 21-17, the Saints. Aaron Brooks swing to Ricky Williams. You know he has power, steam, and move. Man, there's some fun plays in this game. 34 yards. Brooks inside the 10. To Horn. Pretty good coverage, but a good zip. 24-21, Saints. Next possession, Garcia to J.J. Stokes. Oh, drilled by Jay Bellamy. But helmet to helmet, Tom. Well, it is helmet to helmet. You can see him launch himself, Jay Bellamy, into Stokes right there, and he'll be getting a letter from the league. Yes, office. he will. Ricky Williams with the score 24 21 still. It's it, Van Bill and the Niners. Ahmed Plummer comes up with it on the ensuing series. Garcia to Eric Johnson from Yale. Touchdown. The Ivy Leaguer puts. The Niners ahead, 28-24. Third and 12, St. Brooks to Tommy's cousin, Willie's Jackson. Makes a move, rolling inside the 30, inside the 20. And down to the 10-yard line. Two false starts, though. Now it's third and goal from the 18. Brooks, buying time. Ricky, oh, Ricky Williams dropped it. Ricky lost that number. They settle for a field goal here, Tommy. Yeah, well, you see the drop right there, and you talk to Jim Hazlitt, he talks about being efficient in that red zone. You see an example of it right there. They have to settle for a field goal in a critical situation. 28-27 on third and 13, Garcia to Owens, a huge first down. 
Later in the drive, Garrison hurt. Two years he fought to come injury. He and Bryant Young. Back where many others would have called it a career. Two of the Giants on this team has hurt. Ran for 145. The 49ers are 6-2 and two as they win a scintillating game, 28-27. And another team with outstanding balance. You talk about Garrison Hurst. You see Garcia, Terrell Owens, Stokes. The balance you need maybe to get me to say to the playoffs. And meanwhile, Niners are the worst defense last year. They're in the middle or maybe a little bit better now. Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. Marshall Falk was off a couple weeks with injury, but boy, is he back. Rams off a bye, 71 yards, goodbye. St. Louis at home against Carolina. Georgia, they, they, they go into the game having won only opening week. The Rams have lost only once. What could happen? James Hodgins right there on the spot shadow going to kick out Michael Rucker and look at Marshall Falk take off down the side. And then watch this, Tommy goes around the right side, the nifty juke, right there, then right there, then right there, then a spin. Oh, man, 57 yards. It's like a Ferrari coming out of the garage. He runs under control, but he has great instincts for where to go with his feet. There, the reverse spin back inside, a move he made on four Carolina Panthers. 143 yards in the first quarter. Kurt Warner, Isaac Bruce. 26 yards, touchdown, 21 nothing. he was off. And watch Doug Evans, he's on him in the slot. Bruce goes inside, jukes him. You need a quick turn right there, get your body around. Right there, Doug looks a little bit stiff and a little bit slow. And then Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. He can power it too, that's eight yards. Falk to the goal line, Buffoon. Torrey Holt helps him in the end zone, and then here's the greatest leap on earth. Holt over Falky in 183, two touchdowns as the Rams lead 28-0. Aeneas Williams, there's like two years ago the defense was scoring. 48-14, to and there's 7-1 and, and rolling Carolina. Man, their last win was in the summer. Yeah, and what doesn't show up in those numbers is Trump Candidate also put up 145 yards in the second half, so they were getting offense from anybody that was in the game for the Rams. As we go inside the numbers, Marsha Falk, people say he's a one-man wrecking crew. Of course, he was right out of the gates today. In the first half alone, he's involved with 19 plays, gaining almost 200 yards for the entire game. The Panthers, who started Matt Lytle, his first NFL start at QB, had 146 yards, 45 plays. St. Louis has a chance to go somewhere. Carolina, probably not. <laughs> Inside the Numbers is brought to you by Visa, the preferred card of the NFL. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. When we return, the Giants in the desert. In Arizona smell an upset. And the Eagles do for a big game at home. One week later for game seven, it's New York and Arizona again. And wouldn't you know, famous Arizona Cardinal Bob Brenly. And congratulations from all of us to the D-backs. Of course, that game was over after primetime last week. Here's the World Series trophy, but no trophy for the Cardinals. Michael Strahan, he's a one-man wrecking crew. Kenny Holmes rubbing it, bumping it laterally to Michael Farrell. And the Giants defense again stepping up tall. Yeah, this all starts because of the excellence of Michael Strahan here getting around Anthony Clements, forcing the ball out. That ties a career high for him, 15 sacks on the season, and he has seven in seven straight games with a sack. Suing possession, Kerry Collins to well-dressed Amani Tuner, 12 yards, Tumor, 12 yards, first down. Collins, play fake. I kill your in the shadows, in the end zone. Touchdown, 14-nothing, New York. Five minutes left, second. You've heard of a pooch kick. This is Owen Pockman, who is only punting. You know, he is a regular punter, hurt. And so he's the kickoff guy. His first punch since high school. Giants trying to get five for the week. So Arizona gets a break. Can Plummer do something with it? Jake to David Boston. It's a big target. 14-7. Ron Dane. 
No thunder here. Stumped on third and goal in a 14-10 game. Fourth and goal, Collins. Arizona holds. Dave McGinnis says, hey, maybe we have time for our miracle. Arizona down. Plummer, 18 seconds. But, I mean, you're trying to make something happen the length of the field. Will out, the rookie, intercepts in front of Boston. His first career pick. Congratulations. Giants win at the desert. They're only 9-7 and seven there in 16 years. But the Giants win it. They win it. Well, no, no thunder today, but some lightning. 170, 17 yards from Tiki Barber, and I thought that was the key. They have to figure out a way to make Kerry Collins comfortable for play action. Not scintillating by the Giants, but they get it done in a place where they have stumbled. Meanwhile, the Philadelphia and Adam Talaferro, the Penn State player, paralyzed everybody, saw an honorary captain. What a great scene at the vet. Son of a McNabb against Dante Culpepper, but it was the Deuce Staley show. Philadelphia, one and three at home going in. You had a feeling they're ready to step up big time at home. Donovan McNabb, does he have time? Does he look smooth to James Thrash? 7 0 Philly. Yeah, uh, great job by the offensive line, which we have seen that most of the year for the Philadelphia Eagles. But we haven't seen this. Deuce Staley running like this, Tom. 17 yards. Same drive, but now second quarter. McNabb, boy, when you have a running attack, you can play action, and then you can run it yourself. Tucks it in, makes the play, and gets down. 14-0 Philly. Yeah, we're going to take a look here at... For the Minnesota Vikings right there. Watch him bite on the play fake right there. He comes back out, tries to get to his coverage. And here comes Donovan McNabb. And he's already in the end zone. Then it's Hugh Douglas in the defense. It's a sack of Culpepper at Bumbo. Bobby Taylor recovers the Eagles in great field position. Two plays later, 17-yard line. McNabb to James Thrash. They wanted more speed on the wideout. Thrash, one of the guys they get this year. And it's touchdown 24-3. Then, ace, deuce, tell you what, he's a wild card for this team. Looking to make the move on the fake flubber and into the end zone. Tony Orlando, 44-yard touchdown by Staley. The Eagles win 48-17. Deuce Staley running for 146 yards. Meanwhile, the Philly defense chipping in with six sacks. Philly making it. We haven't seen an offensive output like this yet from them. We haven't seen an effort like this at home from them. I think right now you see a different Philadelphia team for the second half of the season, much more suited to contend big time. Well, a defense that comes to play, we know that every single week. I think the problem has been the receivers getting open. Certainly the offensive line has given Donovan McNabb time, and I think the cure is Deuce Staley, his ability to run the ball, force the safeties up, give the quarterback an, an extra sense of balance, and give those receivers time to open up. Staley, 146, and Corral General Barkhalter. Can he? You're an idiot. <laughs> With 66 yards rushing, so they run for tons. We come back seven their last 32 years but let's try a new stadium but here's td would td look like mvp terrell davis handoff six yards denver leading six nothing swing pass brian greasy terrell davis nice move 119 total yards on 33 carries and five catches greasy to desmond clark that's very pretty 13 nothing denver Third and 15, Doug Flutie trying to make something happen last minute of the half, but it's picked off by John Gads Mobley. Returns it all the way to the three, and the Broncos make him pay. Greasy. Wayne Carswell at 20 nothing at the half, Tom. Yeah, and the Broncos, this is the way the Broncos looked early on in the season. Brian Greasy throwing well, and the combination of some running from Terrell Davis. Curtis Conway somehow got wide open. 72-yard pass from Flutie. Would San Diego make it a game? 26-10. Play act. Whoa! Brian Greasy loses it. Rayleigh Johnson. Bremden. Bumbling. Stumbling. It is a game. 11 minutes left. Chargers down 26-16. They go for two, don't get it. Flutie, though, picked off by George Coghill. Then the Chargers get the ball back. Picked off by Delta O'Neal. Flutie, the Chargers get the ball back. Picked off by Jimmy Spencer. They did this to Tom Brady. Late in the, in the fourth quarter a couple weeks ago at home, 
They did it to Flutie, who was picked off four times and really struggled, Tom. Yeah. Big win, Denver. But you look at the greasy numbers, the 21 of 31, the no INTs for over 200 yards, a guy who had the kind of game, efficient, that he needs to have for this team to be successful. Prime Time Players is brought to you by 1010-220. Dial it and all calls up to 20 minutes are only 99 cents. Boomer, my game ball goes to all the running backs for the Rams. Marshall Fox, run candidate. They're all candidates. You look at they're all candidates. 31 carries, 328 yards, and three touchdowns. Yeah, I was impressed with Philly's offense, but every week they bring the defense. Hugh Douglas gets my game ball, but really he had to, a lot of the sacks the team at six as a whole. Marshall Falk, when you run like that and you open up everyone's eyes, he wins our vote for Sunday's primetime player on ESPN.com. Monday Night Countdown. Step backwards. It, no, we don't want that. <laughs> what, do you, what, what do you like to say? Curiouser? And curiouser. Curiouser. <laughs> well, no more curiouser. The inside. Wow. He's Mike Brown and his dramatic are going after it there. That's a mismatch. Going at it. Back to, uh, to uh, Shannon, to Ozzy. I want to say to Ozzy. <laughs> I love Ozzy. To Shannon Sharp. Congratulations, Shannon. And Oz, a new tight end receiving mark held by the personable and outspoken Shannon Sharp. Fourth and goal from the one. And speaking of curious, sir. All right, so no one's open, but it's fourth and goal top. Fourth down, do what you have to do. Try to run it in. Try to do something. Get the pressure to come to you on the goal line. Try to make a play. Then Elvis, uh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Anthony Henry, who had three interceptions in an earlier game this year, makes the pick there. Then Cleveland's aptly named running back, Ben Gay, warming up, rubbing his legs into the end zone. Seven yards, 10-0. Cleveland. Then Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Devin Bush picks off Elvis. Good go all the way. 43 yards, 17 nothing. Cleveland. Gerback to Brandon Stokely. A circus. Can't see the Ravens to do this too. 21 yard touchdown, 17 7. Six minutes left before the half. 20 to 7. Gerback. Elvis, I mean, oh, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Henry picks it off. His third of the game. Which Davis is, and wait a minute, Elvis crying in the chapel? Jim Couch, picked off by Rod Woodson. There are great careers, and there are great careers like the one by Woodson, the eighth NFL player ever to get 60 interceptions in his career. Then Elvis, the number one draft pick, Todd Uriah Heat. 24 yards, his first career TD, 20 to 14. Under four minutes to go in the third. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Courtney Brown strips Elvis to the ball. Browns recover. But the next play, watch this. Tim Couch in business. Doink. Intercepted by Mike McCrary after Adelius Thomas knocks it away. Leads to a field goal, 20 to 17. Couch is passed. There goes Ray. Almost and without the catch, look at everything he does well. The great read on the screen, the great break on the football. No one more disappointed than Ray Lewis. Then, after the gift, fourth quarter, under eight minutes to go, Quincy Morgan completes the uh, uh, pass from Couch, 11 yards. Couch on a key fourth and one. The end around, it's Dennis Northcutt. Northward, 12 yards for first down. Then, Ben Gay really warming up. 21 yards down to the two. You gotta give it to Ben Gay. He works all four quarters, but all of a sudden upended by Jamie Sharper. Ben Gay needs absorbing Jr. So we give it to Jamel White. Touchdown. 27-17 Cleveland. Butch Davis thrilled. Brian Billick changing the phone number as the Cleveland Browns have beaten the Ravens twice this year. Cleveland, another party on the flats. 27-17, the Browns have done it. Sal Palantonio at the game with Tim Couch.
Okay, Boomer, thanks. Tim, what does it mean for this franchise, a young team like this, to come back and win this ball game here in Baltimore? It means a lot to this team. You know, uh, you know they were talking all week that, uh, you know, they didn't uh, expect us to be this good of a team when we beat them earlier in the season. And to come in here and do it again, it's just a huge step for our football team. There were many big plays in this game, but none bigger. Fourth and one, the reverse. Right. How did you pull that off? Well, we just uh, seen something in film all week that we could take advantage of that in, in uh, short yardage situations. Dennis Northcutt did a great job of getting around the end. The guys got their blocks, and uh, it worked out for us. Congratulations. Thanks, Sal. Appreciate it. Back to you, Chris. All right, Sal, Tim Couch, thank you very much. Very efficient, although, you know, three turnovers Couch. We'll get to Baltimore. I think I figured out this, this uh, AFC Blackjack division, which we'll also explain <laughs> later, okay? Over the last six years, Pittsburgh, then they couldn't be Jacksonville, but then they couldn't be Tennessee, but then they couldn't be Baltimore. Okay, now, Baltimore can't be Cleveland. Why? Well, I think certainly when you talk about the Cleveland Browns, let's talk about a great young team and the maturation process that their quarterback, Tim Couch, has gone through, along with the coaching staff. Butch Davis doing a great job of bringing these young kids along. Quincy Morgan, Kevin Johnson, a defense that was already good, that as soon as they got back Courtney Brown, they became yes. better. They became a big play defense. And I think the big thing you take away chemistry-wise for this game, for the Cleveland Browns, is we didn't play our best football on the road against the defending world champions, and we managed managed to come away with a win. After suffering two heartbreaking overtime losses. That's right. Now, That's as good. as for Baltimore, Trent Dilfer, 11 straight wins to end the season. Uh, Brian Billick, the Ravens, adamant that Elvis Gerback was an upgrade at the quarterback position. He still may be, but adamant may be an interesting word when you listen to Shannon Sharp afterwards. There's a reason why, because obviously he feels the guy that can pull the trick and can make it happen for us. And, you know, 10 games into the season, it hasn't happened the way we would like it to. But, you know, 6-4, and four, I, I think that's what we are. We get a chance to get on the road next week and get this taste out of our mouth. But I'm, I'm very disappointed. I can't really say what I really truly feel. Well, what a surprise. A sharp, outspoken, and, and, and very disappointed. Although in that division, all these games, I mean, are, are, are won and lost by the turnover. Touchdown. Five uh, turnovers today. Very quickly on Elvis, I think you can't help but make the comparison between he and Trent Dilfer, who took him to the Super Bowl and won the Super Bowl. Too many turnovers, especially in the red zone. The key to this team's success is protect the football and allow other elements of your football team to win. Yes, they lack a consistent running game every week, but you can't afford to get in a position to score and have Elvis do with the football what he's doing with it now. Well, in this AFC blackjack division, you keep you get 10, 13, hit me, hit me, 16, hit me, but it's 17, stick. That's what I mean by this right. stick. And so now we see two other teams in the AFC Central, the Titans and the Bengals. The Bengals, remember, began the year at 2-0, and and they were rolling. But what does Jeff Fisher's team need to do after the last play fiasco at home on Monday night? Well, the first play, it's a fiasco. But from the Bengals' point of view, Derek Mason, one yard deep in the end zone. Neil Racker's not going to get him. No one's going to get him. So one play, they have a 7-0 lead. Tennessee on the road at Cincinnati. Third quarter, 10-7 Tennessee. Steve McNair. Kevin Dyson with a nice catch. Mark Roman playing Greco-Roman. Defense doesn't work. 17-7 Tennessee. Now, Eddie George is normally, rarely fumbles with Artrell Hawkins with the... Outstanding power back that runs in between the tackles. Ball's always being touched, but more fumbling from Eddie George than we have seen from him in his career. But there we see another sack from Javon Kersey. He's got Kitten at third and 13, picked off by Keith Bullock. Bengals had us fooled for a while. They're still better than they usually are, but now they're starting to fall toward the bottom of that division. Cincinnati slipping below 500, falling to four and five. It's Tennessee with the same mark with the game against first place. Pittsburgh coming up next. We'll see 20 to 7 Titans. Yeah, and I think as far as the Titans concerned, a football team that has a lot of pride, the Bengals are still learning how to win. When we return on NFL Prime Time, Seattle on the road in Buffalo. But they win it. Go over 500. Jeff Garcia, what does he have in his bag of tricks this time for the Niners? It's everywhere NFL fans want to be. The Bills at home on a momentous day because the first of the great teams of the 90s, Jim Kelly, had his number retired. Their son, Hunter, wife, Jill, his two daughters, Jim and his dad, are the Retiring his number, putting him on the wall of fame. I love you all. This is the greatest thing that could ever happen in my life. Together in this city. 
This is one big family. Thank you very much. I love you all. Hey, from all of us here at Jimbo. Way to go, Jimbo. Is the crowd, big crowd, much better than expected. On to see one of their favorite sons. Now, ball game, 10-10, third quarter. Matt Hasselbeck finds John Alexander. Touchdown, Seahawks. They're up 17-10. He was ruled out at the one, but he scored in the next play. Alex Van Pelt playing now because Rob Johnson's hurt. Surprise. Bobbled. And Antonio Cochran recovers a fumble, setting up a field goal. The Bills are down 23-13. Under two minutes to go. Van Pelt has him at the 22, though. And a screen to Larry Self Setters, breaking the all time running back receiving yards record held by ex Buffalo Bill Ronnie Harmon of 6,093 yards. Congratulations to Centers. Oh, by the way, you're down 10. So Van Pelt to Jay Reemersma. Hey, hey, hey. Three point game, 23 20. Everyone in the building knows it's an onside kick. But the guy to recover it was in the broadcast booth, Steve Tisker of Tasker. Instead, it's Sean Springs. He recovers. Seahawks win by the count of 23 to 20. The Bills, who used to never lose at home, have now lost seven straight at home despite over 300 yards passing for Van Pelt. Alexander almost 100. Yeah, Mike Holmgren bringing this young football team along, half the back at the quarterback position, and I can't tell you how important I feel Sean Alexander is. Those 25 carries for 93 yards. The San Francisco 49ers, Bills and Niners in the same section, Tom. I gotta like it. George Seifert, well, He's 4-1 against his old team, even though Carolina's 1-8 going in against the 6-2 Niners. And we've seen this all year. Jeff Garcia, Terrell Owens, 45 yards. Third quarter, the Niners are down six, but in business. Same drive, first and goal for the nine. Garcia rolling, buying time. Finds J.J. Stokes, nine-yard touchdown, 14-13, San Francisco. Same score, fourth quarter. Wait, Doug Evans has made a pick in eight of his last nine games. He's got eight for the year. Unbelievable. Carolina driving. Chris Winky hurt last week. Back this week, Winky Dinky does it. To Wesley Walls, 24 yards. Two-point conversion good. 19-14 Carolina. Wesley Wall is going to be working on Jason Webster here. Watch the move outside. Gives him the head fake right there. Shakes him outside. Comes back in. Webster made the nice spin move to try to get back to the play a little bit late. Walls for the touchdown. Minute left in the game. Niners down 19-14. Garcia to tie streets. Keeps the drive alive. 12 seconds to go. Now 22-14. Eric Johnson down to the seven from Yale. And then Garcia with six seconds to Terrell Niners down eight with one second to go. Are now down two, 22 to 20. Got to go for two, obviously. Garcia stutters. Derek Johnson from Yale. 22 all. I just about the last play of the game. They win the toss. Time game for the Niners this year. Garcia, Owen, eight yards, first down. Next play, Garcia, Owen, 15 yards across midfield. Terrell, seven catches, 99 yards. Three plays later, Garrison Hurst. He ran for close to 100, looking like the Garrison Hurst of old. Why go out of bounds with yeah, the Yeah, that's the point. He didn't look to find the sideline. He cut back inside, got extra yardage. On second down, Jose Baby Cortez. Good. It's good. The San Francisco are 7-2. and two. They win at Carolina 25-22. Fourth, fourth quarter comeback this year for Garcia. Ties Montana's team record. Four overtime games by the Niners, record 83 Packers, five. Garcia outstanding, Owens outstanding. I think unexpected, J.J. Stokes coming along, giving them some possessions and some product productivity from the offside receiver position. And we return. Atlanta picking upset at Lambeau. Emmett Smith back to the Cowboys upset the Eagles. Stay with us. Atlanta Falcons going to Green Bay to play Brett Favre and the Packers Favre 62 and 9 at Lambeau Field. This one would be easy. Falcons though do lead in the second quarter. And Chris Chandler back as a starter hits Bob's sister Christian, who white stakes his way into the end zone, barreling over Sharper and Williams. Wait a minute, 13-3 Atlanta? Is there a mistake? Three and a half to go. 16-3 Falcons. Favre. How many times have we seen him do this? The last few minutes of the first half. Forget last two minutes of game. Last two minutes of the first half. 56 yards, Corey Bradford. Favre 
and talk about street ball to Billy Schrader, touchdown 16-10. Yeah, and just watch the, the expertise of Brett Favre. He's going to scramble. He knows he's going to get hit here. Puts great touch on the football. Puts it right where Schrader needs to have it. And look at the defensive lineman. Look at it right there. He's like, what is that happening? Now, here's a big series of events. Third and 12 for the Falcons. Ephraim Salam throws McBride off of Chandler. But number 31, Chris Akins comes in and immediately is going to get flagged 15 yards. They're hitting Salam. Akins called for a personal foul. So in third and 12, they get a gift first out of Mike Sherman, as he should, goes over to Akins and says, what are you doing? It would cost big time because nine minutes to go later in the drive at the 12. Chandler to Brian Finnegan, touchdown 23-13 Atlanta at Lambeau. Now under seven to go. Favre, what could possibly happen? <laughs> Brett Favre is behind at Lambeau. Antonio Freeman, touchdown 39 yards. He was 274 for his career, passing Joe Montana for six on the all-time list. Congratulations, Brett, but there's work to do. Minute and a half to go down 23-20. Far, you know what's coming. Far to Bill Schrader, 18 yards. Ryan Longwell warming up. We need a field goal, then we go to overtime, we'll figure it out then. But at the 45, Bart says, forget the field goal, let's go for the homer. But it's Ashley, Ashley, Ashley Ambrose with the pick. And a, and a bizarre throw by Fred Billy and Atlanta with a major upset. Green Bay's nine-game Lambeau winning streak gone, 23-20 Atlanta. A throw we don't understand from Brett Favre, but let's give Dan Reeves' team credit. They've gone into New Orleans and won a game. They've gone into Green Bay and won a game and fought a lot of adversity along the way. By the way, Atlanta, five and four. There you are. Eagles to the Cowboys. Andy Reid, that's when the last three against Dallas. Evan Smith back. Bobby Taylor stripped, and what a play by the defensive back Taylor to cause the fumble. Yeah, Bobby Taylor realizes that he can't make the tackle right here and just look at him, hands on the ball, use all his body strength to get it out, get the football for your team. So Deuce Staley, 145 last week. Here's a 10-yard run here. Executive goal of the two, Donovan McNabb. You can run, you can play action, and Chad Lewis, the Pro Bowl tight end, 7-0 Philly. With the score 10-0 Philly, a minute to go in the second, Staley. 13-yard run, help sets up one of five. David Greenacres field goals, 13-0 Philly. Now the last play of the half, at your own 40, Ryan Lee throws a square out. What are you kidding me? Jeremiah Trotter races. 50 yards, touchdown, the game's over, 20-0. Well, it, it is a touchdown for Lee, though, in a way. <laughs> but certainly, you look at the break, that Jeremiah Trotter makes on the ball right there, never open, and hard to imagine that even if you make the catch, you're not going to try for yardage. Ryan Leaf, then sacked by Derek Burgess, 13 sacks for the Eagles against the Cowboys last four games. With three minutes to go, you said he threw two touchdowns, right? Yes. Well, Emmett, not happy. And it would be less happy win. Oh, boy. William Hampton, he could. Go all the way to the Hamptons. 33 yards. Here comes Philly. Here they come. 36 to 3. The Eagles slice and dice the Cowboys. Deuce Staley with 102 yards. And Philly not with a lot of yards on offense, but they bring that defense every week, Tom. Well, bring the defense every week. Jim Johnson and the blitzing, but I think that Deuce Staley giving this team some balance with his 100 yards and Chad Lewis. The Pro Bowl tight end getting back into the active play for his quarterback, Donovan McNabb. Offensive numbers don't look great. For the first place standing at a 6-3 and three shirt. Four Colts at 4-4 four and four Saints. Two playoff teams from last year. Both need to make a move. Peyton Manning, jaw broken, new face mask. Odd team Manning, his dad's banner hanging next to Pete Maravich. <laughs> in the Superdome, I'll tell you what, both could wheel and deal. Could they not? Peyton Manning play action to Marcus Pollard. 86 yards on the first play of the game. 7-0 Colts, they would lead early, 14-0. Now it's a 14-10 game, second quarter. Idris Bashir's going to try and stop Ricky Williams. I don't think so. 16-yard run. Same drive. Aaron Brooks, play action. Boy, this is pretty. Evades one, evades two, gets a block, and lobes in. Wow. 
seven yards, 17, 14, Saints. 14 seconds left and a half, Watts closely. Manning to Marvin Harrison. First, he tries to call timeout. Problem, Colts don't have any. Tick, 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 tick. Four, three, tick, fake, fakes. Jamora wants he fakes the spike. Wait a minute, I didn't spike it. I'm going in for a touchdown. Wait a minute, hold everything. Joe Chitsu to Dick Tracy, hold everything. Has on the field. What happens here, Tom? Well, you look at the clock, you see it appears that Manning actually gets the snap before the clock is all over. It's done, does a great job of faking the spike. He's claiming that I had some time on the clock. The refs rule an inadvertent whistle, and that's always the safe call for the officials. Because they thought he spiked the ball, so inadvertent whistle put a second back on the clock. Vanderjack kicks a field goal. We're tied at 17 at the half. Meanwhile, third quarter. Look at Joe Little Bighorn with Ricky Williams in motion. He would come back into play. Boy, Horn can make things happen in the open field, and so can Ricky. Yeah, and then when Horn cuts back, as you say, Ricky comes back into play. A great block right there to get Horn down to almost the 15-yard line. 57-yard pickup, same drive. Aaron Brooks, very athletic. Boy, that's a sing to Eddie Boo Williams. They all cheer in New Orleans. Saints lead 24-17. Score 27-20, Ricky Williams. Four and a half to go, boom, 14 yards, and the Saints march to a 34-20 win over the Colts. The Saints at home had not done very well at all. As a matter of fact, going in, they had been just one, one of, they were one and two, but in this game, the Colts still a quandary. What's happened to them? Well, I think two things frighten me about this game. Uh, certainly, the Colts are struggling. I think they will without Edron James. When you look at the New Orleans Saints, though, a resilient team, just like Jim Hazlitt and Aaron Brooks, any quarterback they want. Meanwhile, we go to the AFCs for the New York Football Jets. That beats the Dolphins seventh straight. And look, Fireman Ed for the Thanksgiving holiday is in Miami. Why not get a tag? Jay Fiedler, Dolphins didn't want to talk about that seven-game losing streak. Well, anyway, we're going to beat him. So Lamar Smith, five yards. He's only averaging 2.9 a carry. But they're committed to run it anyway. Why not? Smith, drive. Smith. Seven yards, setting up second and three. So Jay Fiedler going to mix it up a little bit and going to swing it to James McKnight. But he hits it in the helmet and into the hands of Aaron Glenn. He makes a move on Fiedler and he could go all the way. 60 yards, Jim. Jets lead 7-0. Yeah, and watch James McKnight's helmet. This ball not only gets through his hands, you saw the helmet pop, then he had a hard time refocusing on the football, and a great play by Aaron Glenn to stay with the play, get the ball, and get to the end zone. Sometimes time of possession means nothing. Jets under three minutes, they get a 7-0 lead. Now try the second quarter, third and six. The NFL's leading rusher, Curtis, my favorite, my 14 yards. He had 66 on the day. Look at the double play action for Vinny Testaverde to Lavernius Coles. Beautiful play, Jets. 17 yards, 14 nothing. J E T A. We're going to take a look at both ends of this play. First, you're going to see Jason Taylor rushing from the right side. He's focused on the fake up the middle, the reverse action, so there's no pressure on Vinny Testaverde. Gives Lavernius Coles an opportunity to make three moves to get to the back of the end zone for the catch. So 14 nothing this time. The Jets have the lead. Miami has to play comeback. So is the Jets coming back? Fiedler to Chris Chambers. Time has come today. 12-yard pickup. Fiedler around against it. 10 yards, first down. Fourth and one, Jets 32. Fiedler rolling right. He only needs a yard. Unfortunately, he used just one foot. Victor Green tips it, and he's gone. Can it be again? Yes. Jets gang green defense scoring again. 63 yards, 21-0 New York. Spot shadow on Victor Green down at the bottom of the screen. See him keeping leverage on what he believes will be a run. Finally makes a commitment toward JV. That's a great play by Victor Green. So now the da -da 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 Ray Mickens flies in. Fiedler fumbles. Eric Obagu, number 99, falls on it. Teddy Cottrell, you saw him do the re uh, Jackie Gleason. Away we go. That's Teddy, the Jets defensive coordinator. Meanwhile, four turnovers, Fiedler. The Jets roll 24 to nothing. Our man Mortimer at a ball game with Victor Green. Mort? We're the team to be right now, man, and uh, 
we've been playing great the last couple, uh, last three weeks, and we just got to continue that way. We got to come back from the bye, continue to play this way, and I think we'll be the team to beat. First shutout here at Dolphin Stadium uh, in, since 1970. Yeah. You've won eight straight games against them. Are you inside their heads? I think so. didn't want to talk to us today, man. And Jason Taylor, good friend of mine, you know, pushing me around. But, uh, you know, I think we, we got the numbers right now. We got to play our first round in New York. We'll just beat them there, too. All right, Victor, thanks. Let's okay. go back to you, Boomer. All right, Moore, thank you. So the Jets have now won four in a row. The New York Jets of Herman Edwards are in first place, Tommy, at uh, at seven and three. The New York football Jets are in first place, growing despite today again shaky offensive numbers. Well, you talked about the lack of meaning in time of possession. I think this football game came down to just what we talked about on Countdown this morning, which is turnover ratio. When you talked about the Miami Dolphins, they were last in the AFC in turnover differential at minus nine. They are now at minus 14. When you talk about the Jets, they were at the top of the NFL at plus 17. That They're now at plus 22. It is the difference in the football game, and not only the turnovers, but two of them led directly to touchdowns. So it's the kind of thing that the Miami Dolphins knew they couldn't afford coming in. And a division that is wide open. Hello, say the New York Jets. We'll run in the door. Because as Tommy talked about inside the numbers, Miami's propensity to turn the ball over, as they did again today five times. The Jets with a plus five, Dolphins minus five for the season, plus 22 versus minus 14. Oh, by the way, eight straight wins. Jets over Dolphins, plus 15 New York. Inside the Numbers is brought to you by Visa, the preferred card of the NFL. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. Somebody had to win this, Lions and Cardinals. Actually, it was a pretty fun game. And Tony Banks injured, Skins certainly would have no shot at Denver. I mean, after all, Marty was coaching there, right? Presented by Miller Lite. 0-8 Detroit at 2-6 Arizona. When you know it was the, probably the most entertaining game of the day. Too bad about 50,000 people came disguised as empty seats to watch Marty Morningweg and the Detroit Lions try to get off the schneid. Tom 7-7, seven, seven, Ron Wright. Ron Rice helmet to helmet with tight end Steve Bush. Rice carted off. X-rays negative. That's fortunate. The hospital precautionary region. Meanwhile, Plummer to David Boston. Playing for Arizona so nobody knows it. But what a season he's had. A 13-yard touchdown. Arizona is tied at 14. Yeah, and nothing more in tackling, uh, important than in the red zone than tackling. And watch the three Lions down inside the 10-yard line, all with a chance to get bossed. But realize he is one of those big, huge, physical receivers that we're seeing so much of in the NFL. Down 21-14, Tom, Jake, the snake. Buying time, Plummer, Frank Sanders, good coverage, 68 yards. Sanders pulls up with a hamstring injury, but they tie the game anyway. At 21, even though you make a big play, you get hurt. That's what happens when you're two at six. Charlie Batch to Johnny Morton. What a catch between defenders. And he gets up, and he goes down to the one-yard line. No one touched him, Tom. Well, let's take a closer look at the play because it is a great one-handed catch by Johnny Morton. And then the presence of mind to realize, I haven't been touched. Let's get as much yardage as I can. Sloan with a touchdown, 28-21 Detroit. Here's Jake Plummer to Marte Jenkins. Down to the 10. What a what a bunch of big plays here. I mean, if you want entertainment, this was your game. Plummer. Jenkins. Ote Marte. Touchdown 35-31 Arizona. So here's Charlie Batch. Ball tipped by the Swami's cousin, Kwame Lassiter. Fred Wakefield. Touchdown. Cardinals. 42-31. Down 45-38. Batch. Larry Foster. Here come the Lions. 219 left. Batch. Picked off by Lassiter. So despite 36 of 62 for 436, three touchdowns. The Lions are going to play on national TV on Thanksgiving. 0 and 9, losing 45-38. Almost 800 yards of passing, but you just cannot win football games most times when you throw over 60 passes. So now we go to Marty Schottenheimer. It's Denver. Marty figures I'm in the NFC. I don't have to go to a place where I'm 2 and 10. Wrong. Washington's at Denver. Cold, rain, little snow. You love this, Tom. Bronco fans love this. Marty knows it's going to be trouble. But wait a minute. It is a new stadium, isn't it? So keep that in mind. Tom Ruin punts. Eric Metcalf drops it. Keith Burns recovers. Marty's seen this before. Denver in business. 
third and goal, late second, Brian Creasy, Rod Smith, touchdown, 10 0 Broncos. Oh no, not again. Next possession, Washington. Tony Banks, drilled by Leon Lett, has to be carted off the field. Head and neck were braced, concussion though, so that's a good report after very scary sight. Greasy. He loses it, LeVar Arrington recovers. Third quarter, here come the skins behind Kent Graham. To Michael Westbrook, five yard touchdown, 10 10. Same score. Graham to Zarin Flemister from Iowa. Flemister coughs it inside the five. And then uh, uh, Flemister in the back of the end zone. Three yards. Touchdown. Graham to Flemister. Just like all those great Redskins combinations. 17-10. Greasy hit by Marco Coleman. Marty! Congratulations. He's 1-0 in Invesco. The Broncos fall to 5-5, five and, five, and no one has gone longer without a loss than the Washington Redskins, who have four straight wins and a bye dating back to week five. Amazing. Yeah, change of venue, but I think also change of talent for the Denver Broncos. A lot of people not there. An amazing job that Marty Schottenheimer has done, yes. done in terms of getting this team back on track mentally. Mutiny? Why we have mutiny if we're smelling the playoffs? Can you believe that? Meanwhile, when we return, Andrell Bell and the Steelers smell the playoffs. Can the Bucks get it going against the first place Bears? Rams, the greatest Sunday night football game on earth as the Rams, Patriots, bottom of the hour. Jaguars and the Steelers, the first place Pittsburgh Steelers at six and two. Mark Brunel unexpectedly not starting. Sore right quadriceps, so the medicine man, Jonathan Quinn, gets the surprise start. Up 3-0, Cordell Stewart scrambling 18 yards in the dark at Pittsburgh, but it's a flag for taunting here, Tom. Well, you saw the words that uh, I think Cordell Stewart had for him right at the end of this play. Obviously, he gets grabbed, and, and, and there were some words exchanged, but wasn't one of those exchanges that usually will draw a flag. Well, it uh, helped to keep Pittsburgh only field goal six. Now, the Kendrell Pell, though, what an impression this rookie has made, forcing the fumble by Quinn. Steelers ball, screen, Cordell Stewart to Hines Ward. And you just can't catch up to Hines at Hines Field. You just can't do it. <laughs> it's a touchdown, 13 nothing. Pittsburgh all the way to the bottom of the bottom. Yeah, let's take a look at the spot shadow here. Troy Edwards with a great block in between the 20 and the 15-yard line on Marlon McCree, the rookie safety for the Jags. Well, we saw Elvis Skurback uh, cough it up, but Elvis, Elvis is in the building. This is Elvis Joseph. Another Elvis has hit the scene. A lot of Elvis impersonators after all. 95 yards, touchdown. So the kick, boy, did we see enough return game to, in the return game today? All over the league, 13-7. Joey Porter hits Quinn. Casey Hampton, the rookie, falls on it at the 21 in chagrin. But Tom Coughlin. Yes. <laughs> wow, look at the moves by Bettis. Oh, look at the moves by Bettis. 40-yard run. Fox in the passing lane. Stewart, you know he can do this. Touchdown quarterback draw. Pittsburgh. See you get over 17 stick in this division. Stick. <laughs> you don't need to go any higher. You win it. Don't need black jacket shirts. Steelers beat the Jaguars 20 to 7. They're 7 and 2 with the same formula. Yeah, and Cordell Stewart getting more and more confidence every single week. 266 yards today to 21 to 33. He is becoming the quarterback they need to go to the playoffs and then deep into the playoffs. Heinz Ward could become a big player as we move along. Nine catches for 112 for the Steelers. Tampa Bay and Ford. Ford needs to beat first place Chicago. Well, they beat the five in a row all the way back to the old Sombrero. Jim Miller to Marty Booker, nailed by John Lynch, but Booker holds on. Touchdown, despite the hit, 7-6 Bears. Yeah, gets drilled right there at the goal line by Lynch, but the rest of the Bucks come, and they're hitting him from the backside and knock him into the end zone. First touchdown for the Bears in 20 quarters by their offense against Tampa. They like it so much, they're going to keep doing it. Miller, quarter, 14-9, Chicago. 
And then Tommy, look at this, is Barber, Rondé Barber got caught up and stopped on the play. Looking back into the backfield to see what's going on behind you, receiver running by you on the sideline. Later in the third with the score, 14-9 Bears play action, Jim Miller to Marty Booker. Book him, Dano. 66 yards. You thought when Robinson went out, the Bears had no deep threat. False. 21-9 Bears, three TDs for Booker. Fake punt. Mark Royals to Aaron Stecker. That famed Royals to Stecker passing combination. Not what the Bucs needed. Leads to a Bears field goal, 27-16. Nine minutes to go. Brad Johnson, Warwick, dead, spinning near the goal line. Next play under three minutes. Johnson, touchdown good, 27-24, Bears. Two minutes left. Johnson, Paris the thought. Tony Parrish picks it off. Comeback over, but not so fast. Tampa's beating the Bears. Six of the last seven. The eight train, Anthony Thomas fumbles. Here we go again. So the Bucks have a chance. Own 46. Brad Johnson to Dunn. Gets out of bounds. Personal foul on R.W. McQuarters. So now that puts them in field goal range for Martin Gramatica. 48 yards. Is it long enough? It is, but it's off the upright. No good. And the Bears say to Gramatica, Joe Marciano, special teams coach, have that upright move, please. For Tampa Bay Bucks, and what a what a thrilling win for the Chicago Bears. They don't need a miracle. This is a team that's embarrassed them. And with the Packers losing, the Bears alone in first at 7-2. and two. Wow, the Chicago Bears deep game with Jim Miller today. Well, I, I think that's the big change in game plan. You watch this football team over the last couple of weeks, what you see is a ball club that threw most of their passes within five yards at the line of scrimmage because they didn't have Marcus Robinson. They didn't have the ability to get the, the football deep down the field. Today, they found Marty Booker, and now you're going to have to guard every area of the field. They're hitting you vertically now. And now when you get behind, here's Tampa, who needed to run the ball in those big defensive tackles in the hot weather they end up throwing knew it was going to be knew it was going to be tough to run the ball six passes so johnson threw for 399 but now all of a sudden tampa bay at four and five heading into a monday night game at st louis this could be armageddon for this team they either step up and play the ball that the bucks we, we've seen them and we're waiting for them to come up with this year or it could be very nasty very ugly on that monday night game with a team that's had super bowl aspirations now wondering if they can get it together at all be very interesting to watch that game when we return, Rich Gannon hasn't thrown an interception since opening week. And then we got game balls. We got Raiders Chargers highlights, too. Come on, how are you, Dave? Come on, Good old. Come on, how are you, Dave? Come on, Come on. Good old fashioned AFC West battle between the Raiders and then Doug Flutie and the San Diego to it. Fraternizing with Raider fans? Don't do it. Don't do it. I can tell you. I've been there. Don't do it. Rich Gannon has not been picked off since the first series of week one against Kansas City. And he says, hey, I can complete him to anyone. There's Tim Brown, the juggling catch. Gannon to Tim Brown. And very quickly, it's 7-0. Hey, but the Chargers first play from scrimmage. Razzle dazzle. Flutie, double reverse and block. Curtis Conway makes the move across the field. Wow, he could go all the way. 67 yards, seven all bolts and Raiders. Later first, Gannon to Jerry Rice. In the end zone, 39 years young, Jerry Rice, 14-7. Score 14-10 in the third. Oh my goodness. Ryan McNeil makes the pick. 278 straight passing attempts before this incomplete, this intercepted for Gannon. Congratulations, it had to end sometime. Ronnie Jenkins, back to get the kick down 17-10. Gone, had a big kick deep in the Raider territory earlier, and now he has this one, 93 yards, tied at 17. Mike Riley looking on, but he would like Rich Gannon. Early fourth, first play. Beautiful to Jerry Rice, 24-17, Oakland. Next Charger possession. 
Flutie, Conway, big play to the 40. LaDainian Tomlinson, 10-yard pickup, leads to a one-yard TD, Tomlinson, 24 all. Just over four minutes to go, Gannon slides to the 21, first down, Oakland. Later in the drive, second and nine, right, slant, avoids two tackles, touchdown, three to Jerry. Flutie Magic. Oh, no. The 33. Flutie fumbles. William Thomas falls on it. Raiders kick a field. Chargers 34 to 24. So San Diego once 5 and 2, now 5 and 5. Oakland back on the winning track at 7 and 2. Yeah, and again, we talk about how difficult it is to learn to win on a consistent basis. The Chargers going through that. And what a day for Jerry Rice. He looked awfully quick today. That's the old Rice we saw. Primetime Players is brought to you by 1010-220. Dial it and all calls up to 20 minutes are only 99 cents. Boomer, my game ball goes to Anthony Henry. He, he already had a day like this. He had another one today. Three interceptions, one tackle. They beat the defending world champions twice this year. And you know what? I'm going to go defense, too, as well, Tom. The Jets' defense. Two interception returns for a touchdown by Glennon Green, forcing five Miami turnovers. They paved the way for the Jets to move into first place in the AFC East. Who did you vote for? Well, this was close. Jeff Garcia late heroics, but the Jets' secondary gets the nod in a close vote with others like Chris Chandler. Not many quarterbacks going to Lambeau. In game, the Vikings had hope. NFL Primetime is presented by Miller Lite. Primetime is Miller time. And now, here's your host, Chris Berman. Hello once again, everybody. Welcome to week 11 of uh, NFL Primetime. Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, and I, I know we're not the first, maybe we're the last. Hope everyone had a good Thanksgiving, and it's still Thanksgiving time. And it time, although it's late this year, Tommy, six, seven games left for a lot of the teams, and maybe, just maybe, some definition happened. Yeah, I think we're starting to get a, a little bit of separation in at least a couple of divisions right now, but I still think that most of the races, most divisions going right down to the wire. We got a couple of quarterbacks that got their teams yes, back yes. in this day, as we will show you. I tell you what, if you saw San Francisco was going to play Indianapolis at the beginning of the year, you'd say, man, one team about 500 Niners, one team like seven and two, Colts. Switch it the other way around. Here we go for the big horseshoe. San Francisco, seven and two. And Jeff Garcia, that's about the only misstep he made all day. As, uh, you know, they're on the turf. Peyton Manning, what's going on with the Colts? Could they get it together to make a run? New face mask for his injured jaw. And in the first drive, the ease of the Colts we saw in September. Manning to Terrence Wilkins, 22 yards. Later in the drive, Manning play fakes, finds Marvin Harrison on the cross, down to the three. That sets up the human highlight reel, Dominique. Dominique Rhodes playing, of course, for the injured edger and James. Touchdown, hey, Colts, Tom, we expect this from him. One drive, 7-0 Indy. Scores 7-3 in the second, Jeff Garcia, J.J. Stokes. Touchdown, San Francisco, they're up 10-7. And Terrell, I mean... I don't know how much better things could get <laughs> for the Niners. We can only speculate that, you know, that's a play that Terrell Owens is used to catching for the Niners. Well, Marvin Harrison used to catching this 15 yards from Peyton. It's 14-10 Colts. Niners come back after a good kickoff return. Is Garrison Hurst healthy or what? Does this look like the Garrison Hurst before the injury in 98? I'd say so. 28 yards, 17-14 San Francisco. Just before the half, final minute, Peyton Manning's troubles began in this game. The out, and it's just picked by uh, Ahmed Plummer. Sets up a field goal 20 to 14 at the half. Then, with the score 20 to 20, Colts, Manning looking downfield, overthrows, and then came Bronson. Zach Bronson, at him go. He could go all the way. 48 yards, 27, 21, Niners. Zach Brunson, a great job of playing the football. You see him looking in the backfield at the throw from Manning. The thing I love about this play on the return is that he doesn't look to go out of bounds. He gets around the 15-yard line, cuts back inside, makes his way to the end zone. So the score is still 27-21. Manning trying to rally, and uh, off the hands of Trevor Inslee. It's picked off by Rashad Holman. Niners in business again. Setting up, same drive, first play, fourth quarter now. Garcia and Terrell Owens, they played 
25 get 24 games, they get 25 touchdowns. 33-21, San Francisco on the 35-yard play, Tommy. Owens on the motion, runs the flat route, goes up the sideline. Great throw by Garcia, and you see the size advantage that Owens had on Chad Cota. So now down 12, Dominic Rhodes trying to get extra yards. He loses the football, it's a fumble, and it's the Niners. 12. Yamed Plummer, just starting to make a name for him. He's going to be a really good player. Here's his second pick. Career high, four interceptions by Peyton Manning. And then the Niners made him pay for it. 23 points off turnovers, including this. Look at Garrison Hurst. What? What? Gone. Man, oh man, are the Niners flying. San Francisco has gone into Indianapolis as an underdog, and they've just corralled the Colts. 40 to 21. The Niners have now won four in a row. Hurst, 100 yard game, Garcia. Now with 22 touchdowns on the year. And, of course, a big, big game for the Niners defense as Peyton Manning has been a first of all. We've seen this for a few weeks now. I mean, the, Tom, look, 20 years of my lot of mulligan, I picked him, what, for 20? You have a mulligan. You have a mulligan. Hey, I NFL mulligan. I didn't pick the Niners for the Super Bowl this year. I picked them every year. It was the Bucs. It's now the it's, Niners. It's a mulligan, <laughs> all right? I'm back with the Niners. This looks like the team we remember. Such confidence on offense, especially with Hurst running. You already know about Garcia and Well, Owen. 12 carries for 106 yards, and it has become a big play offense, very much like the Rams. Not as many weapons, but well-used weapons. I think the best receiver in football in Terrell Owens in terms of not only big play potential, but the consistency that he brings to the game. Garcia, outstanding quarterback. We talked about the offensive line, experienced and consistent. You saw J.J. Stokes makes a contribution today. You know, it's Barlow, it's Beasley. It's a lot of people contributing to a great offense right now. And Peyton Manning just doesn't look like himself. It's almost like they want to go and hide and, and, and end the season. I don't mean they're going to lay it down. No. And there'll be a lot of decisions to be made yes. with the Colts, so with a very classy head coach, Jim Moore. But that, that's a There's at 8-2 Rams coming up in two weeks. Meanwhile, in the playoff picture, Atlanta. Here we go in Carolina. Now, they just come off their win at Green Bay. See, so you figure in Carolina, this is one of those spots. Oh, that Night Ranger, Bob's sister Christian. Sister Christian. I don't like, I don't like a lot of songs from about 10, 12 years ago, but that's one I like. And I like this song, 53 yards for Bob's sister Christian. Third and goal, same scenario. And watch this play, Tom, as Chandler gives him the pitch. Well, pretty innovative. You want to run him not from the uh, position right behind the quarterback. You bring him in motion, bring him around, make it a little harder for the defense to read. Good job of Christian getting to the corner of the end zone. Oh, those tricky Panthers. Chris Winky, flea flicker to Isaac Bird. 25-yard game, down 10-0. Third and six, Chris. It's Chris Winky Dinky Do for a touchdown, 13 yards. Here comes Carolina. They haven't won since the first game of the year, down 10 7. But with two minutes to go on fourth and inches, down 10 7, they do not pick it up. They're at the 45. I mean, they're out of field goal range. They had to do it. But when you're now 1 in 10, you do not make those plays. And very quietly, no Jamal Anderson. The Falcons are 6-4, and four, Tom, under Dan Reeves and playing St. Louis at home next week. Well, Dan Reeves' game plan is consistent, if nothing else. And the 33 carries for 145 yards today without Jamal Anderson, as you said, in that lineup, I think that's key for Dan Reeves. One of the big surprises this year, but shh, it's quiet. When we return, Seattle normally trouble in Kansas City, but they're 5-4, and four. certainly they'd win this time. And Buffalo usually owns Miami and Buffalo. They, would they regain their old wings? White shirt, Vinny Serrato. You can log on, talk to the only 99 cents. The Seahawks in Kansas City, and Tommy here's my man. He's the president slash general manager slash coach. <laughs> Mike Holmgren, he's won a Super Bowl. Dick Vermeil's won a Super Bowl. I don't want to go on a limb. Probably neither will win one this year, but you never know. Trent Green, Kansas City. He's had a tough year. Derek Alexander, nice play, 33 yards, out of bounds at the 12. That sets up second quarter. Priest Holmes running well as he does on a Sunday. Seven yard run down to the three. Now first and goal. Tony Richardson, a plunge touchdown. 10 0 Kansas City. Seattle always with trouble in here. Now the second quarter, Matt Hasselback rolling out. Chiefs all over him. And it's an interesting looking screen to Sean Alexander, but he does the rest. Downfield touchdown, 10-7, Tom. Interesting, Boom, because you, as you watch Hasselbeck roll out of the pocket and deliver the ball 
to Alexander. He's already ahead of his blockers when he makes the catch. You see, as he turns downfield, he's also ahead of the Chiefs, who are chasing him. But the blocks are thrown downfield by wide receivers and the other running back. Now the third quarter, 10-7 Chiefs. Greg Wesley on the delayed blitz at, at Sacks Hasselbeck. They had a few hit three sacks today. Scored 13-7 in the fourth. Great hazy look at Priest Holm. There's nothing hazy, crazy, lazy about this play. 55 yards. Let get him go down to the 34-yard line. Holmes 120 rushing, 70 yards receiving. It's a full day. Then, hey, hey, he, he, get off of Mike Cloud. Touchdown. He rolled like stones into the end zone. And the Chiefs beat the Seahawks 19-7. We'll see the Chiefs Thursday night at Arrowhead against Philadelphia. They finally win a home game. Finally win one. And for Seattle, they're back to five hundred. Well, outstanding defense. Sean Alexander, 13 carries, 43 yards. That's the key to defense in the Seattle Seahawks. I think you saw the Chiefs do that. And I think Vermeil expected some of that the entire year. Meanwhile, the Dolphins at the Bills. When the Buffalo was in their heyday not too long ago, they were 17-4 in a 21-game stretch against Miami. Alex Van Pelt, 300 yards last week, starting in place of the injured Rob Johnson again. Van Pelt to Eric Moles. Away from Patrick Sertain, away from Derek Rogers. Moles can do this. And the one and eight Bills have tied the game at seven. And Patrick is certainly disappointed. We jump to the third and Buffalo leads at Ralph Wilson Stadium 14-10. Travis Henry, 25 yards. Finally bumped out by Jamar Fletcher. Now first and 10, their own 46. Look at Van Pelt and watch the play by Moles at the bottom of your screen. Look, Ma, one hand. Are you kidding? 54 yards, 21-10, Buffalo! We take another look at this catch by Eric Moles. Never puts his right hand on the football. Great concentration, reaches wow. out, grabs that ball, pulls it right to him, maintains his balance. Then Bills in the fourth quarter, Jay Fiedler. Team shut out last week under a lot of pressure, but he finds a jet dream weaver. Eight-yard touchdown. Remember those two hooked up in that playoff game to tie it against the Colts? 21-17. Buffalo, third and three is on the move though. Travis Henry, no one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. It's 27-17. And with the extra point by Jake Arians, it's 27-17, uh, no problem, even though the kick was pathetic. They're up by 10, it's gonna be no problem. Five minutes to go, fourth and 14. Buffalo can seal it, but Fiedler to Diedrich Ward first down. Next play from scrimmage. Fiedler to Chris Chambers. Touchdown. 27-24. Remember the missed kick? Makes it a three-point game. Next, Dolphin possession. This is one of the fine plays you'll see. Aronde Gaston prevents a game-ending interception. Well, it's all about being a football player. Understanding the situation you're in, you can't allow the interception. You're not going to have a chance to catch the ball. Don't let the defense get the ball. Give your offense a chance to do something. And here's what Miami has. Arians is a rookie, but Miami has Olindo Mare. Whoa. 39-yard field goal. Good. We're tied at 27. Ensuing kickoff. All oh, those Bills special teams. Nate Clements. Oh, it's a fumble. No. Yes. Fiedler to one of the Chambers brothers. Time has come today for Chris Chambers. What a catch! What a catch! And Miami is leading 34-27 to Greg Williams' dismay. Chris Chambers running for the flag, gets to the pylon. Great job turning around, fighting for the football, holding on to it. You can see that his momentum took him right through the end zone. The Buffalo has a chance. Van Pelt leads him down to Eric Moulds. Tick, tick, tick on fourth down. It's first down. But Moulds kind of leaves the ball there, hand it to the official. Tick, tick, tick. Tick, 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 get back, get back and spike it. No! When you have one win, you can't quite spike it in time. So despite the 300 yard game for Alex Van Pelt, no one said. <laughs> what a big win for Miami. I know the Bills are one and nine, and you see the numbers, but after what they went through last week with the two interceptions for scores by Fiedler, that knocked him out of first place against the Jets. Fiedler has brought this team. He won yes. the game. Now, the yes. Bills helped him with the, with the kick miss and the fumble. But Jay Fiedler, not only did Miami win, 
he won the game to put them in a tie with the Idol Jets. Well, and I think that's so important because he had to get his football team back. There was some doubt starting to creep into that locker room. But there's a show called Fear Factor on another network, some and I think some, and some other network. But I think sometimes fear of losing your job can be a great motivational tool for a coach. Jay Fiedler knew he could not go out to today and make a lot of mistakes. So the 19-32, 263 yards, it's a good day, but the no INTs, the no mistakes, yep. gave this team a chance to work the game plan they want. We want to run the football, we want to play good defense, we won't, don't want to make mistakes. They did that today. And for Buffalo, uh, that was it was almost like shades of the old days. Van Pelt kind of remembers vaguely yeah, those yeah. old days. Yeah. It's Miami, hard. a team going someplace. Yeah. Wins are tough to come by when you're one and nine. Big win for Jay Fiedler and the Dolphins. When we return to the Battle of Ohio, the Browns defense at it again against Cincinnati. And the Steelers, would uh, Tennessee come back after that Monday night drubbing at the big ketchup bottle? Tennessee was at home. And now we go to the AFC Blackjack Division to get the 17 stick. Although this game actually was a little out of character for the AFC Central. Steve McNair. Tennessee at least trying to play well against the division leading Steelers who embarrassed them on Monday night and what a big start. First defensive play for the Titans be there to Kevin Dyson, 68 yards, Tennessee leads 7-3. And early, they were stacking up Jerome Bettis, who had not had an eight tries, 100-yard game against them. He had only had 26 yards in the first half. So late second, four minutes to go, Cordell Stewart to Plexigo Burris. No plexiglass here. 35-yard pickup for Pittsburgh. Yeah, come and take, go ahead, Tom. Well, take a look down around the end zone. Plexico Burris lined up against the corner. He's outside the numbers. You know it's either a fade or a quick post. The size advantage leads to the quick slant right there. Gets in between the corner and the football. Pretty easy throw and catch for quarterback receiver. So then McNair with the score 14-10. They're down to Derek Mason makes the catch. And Mace with tick tick time running out at the end of the half. Can he get out of he's well no he kind of tried one second no second they ruled no seconds left half over still 14 10 Pittsburgh 14 10 Cordell Stewart 14 10 Tennessee my mistake Cordell drops back and look at what he does Tom just takes off this is a quarterback running 48 yards 17-14 Steelers. Something we got used to looking at when he was flash. He does it less often now, but he does it when he has to. Now pick up the game, tied 17 all late third. Stewart, the quick pitch to famous Amos Zaroy. What? And then, what? And then, boy, is that a change of pace out of the backfield. 25 yards. Pittsburgh has come from behind to lead 24-17. Nine minutes to go, 27-17. McNair. To Frank Wycheck. Boy, this is a high scoring game for this division. Down to the three yard line. Two plays late. In. It's the big fella, McNair. In 27 24. But with three and a half minutes to go in Tennessee with the ball, this is what you call a holiday gift. And Chad Scott opened the present right here. It's a floater, and he's gone. 45 yard touchdown. Game over. Pittsburgh, 8-2, and the Steel squad beats them by the count of 34-24. Jerome Bettis did not get 73 yards. He's just shy of 1,000 yards for the season. And yet the Steelers ran for 130. I think the reason the score was run up a little bit, though, not a lot of pressure by that Steelers front seven today, only two sacks. So they did a lot of things well. The thing they moved well defensively, they didn't do today. And with no Bruner, they certainly pass blocked, or they only give up one sec to Tennessee. Oh, this is going to be funny, Tom. <laughs> it's Cincinnati being the Bengals. The Bengals are playing against Cleveland, and John Kidd's pass tipped by Ron Dugan, picked off by one of your cousins in Cleveland, Raymond Jackson. 52 yards, Willie Anderson's not going to get him. Kitten has been picked off twice today. So Cleveland off their big win against Baltimore. Tim Couch, can you throw it any higher to Kevin Johnson? Where's the defense? Well, the corner, the corner looked for the fade. He got spun around and never saw the ball come in. Now in the fourth quarter with the score 12-0, T.J. Hushmanzada. You say Hushmanzada, I say Hushmanzada, and he's going to Manzada himself 86 yards from... Oregon State. And look at this. The ponytail flying. I like that guy. So they're they're deep. But now Scott Mitchell's in the game. And you said I got I, I knew they'd have trouble getting the ball in. Tom, what is that? That's 
three dogs in one. A three dog night, I, I guess, uh, out in the country. Nice throw by Mitchell, field goal good. Then, second and goal, they run Corey Dillon, stacked up. Third and goal, Corey Dillon, stopped. So, just what you need, Scott Mitchell on play action. You think he's gonna outrun Courtney Brown and Wayne Rudd? No. <laughs> nice guess, my man. And all oh, those Bengals. Butch Davis's defense has kept him inside the five, and they're looking for shutout. And Scott Mitchell, picked off by Dalen McCutcheon. He had a pair. Remember, the Browns had seven earlier this year against Detroit. So now, Kitten and talking to Achilles Smith. We're going to put Achilles in. Now, this isn't his fault, but we've seen Kittner. We've seen Mitchell. We've seen Achilles, and we've seen a shutout. They fooled us for a couple of weeks. They were 2-0 getting free food. They are the Bengals. The Browns beat Cincinnati 18. Now, they look, Dick LeBeau's done a good job. They're 4-6. But, Tom, that looked like the team we remember. And what about Cleveland off their win from Baltimore, now pitching a shutout without Warren? Yeah, and, and I don't think they played their best football right. today, but they played well enough to win. And they were looking to solidify themselves as contenders in their division. I think they've done that. Out. You're going to go on a limb. You're going to win most of the games you play. Unless we go forever and it's just scoreless and that's the end of it. As we go inside the numbers, Cleveland's that great. Remember, they had seven against Detroit. They had five picks today. Tommy, in 10 games, 25 interceptions? Are you kidding me? When you compare to their first two years when they had a total of 20, that would be improvement. Big time. Inside the Numbers is brought to you. Vikings, it's a Rasputin game for Denny Green. They're playing the band. Bottom of the hour. The 0-5 Washington Redskins now 4-5. The team that has lost. But their last loss was October 15th. Every team's lost since then. Donovan McNabb, Marty Schottenheimer. Marty has won four straight. McNabb's Eagles have won three in a row. Stephen Davis had to leave. Back spasms. So how could Washington run the ball in Philly? A Kajana Carter sighting. 13. Play action. Tony Banks to Zarin Blemister. Out at the seven. 23 yards. Two plays later. Second and goal. Look at Kajana Carter. Tom, where's this been? Where's he been? 7 0 skins. Mom had the game ball. That's nice. LeVar Arrington after the play. You can see why Arrington came up swinging. However, you get flagged. Yeah, and I know Coach Schottenheimer is going to be upset, but some of the situations you have to take care of on the field. Okay, okay I'll listen to you, the head coach, Marty. But now, Kurt Schottenheimer, your brother. No, no, don't, don't do that. <laughs> late in the third, you understand it. 10-3 skins, late third. Here come the Eagle defense. Brian Dawkins stopping Carter. D fired up. They played so well this year. Start of the fourth quarter. Donovan McNabb on fourth and three. Complete to Freddie Mitchell. Skins, the Washington Redskins, take over on downs. Fourth and one later in the fourth. I think there are too many plays on that sheet for Andy. Corral General Bockhawker. He's stopped way short as the measurement. So here come the skins on downs. And now on third and nine with eight minutes to go. Now you're going to pass on me? Tony Banks to Rod Gardner. Thanks to Michael Westbrook. Third and one with three minutes to go. Kajana Carter, first down. And then they would tack on a field goal and that would end it. The Washington Redskins go into Philly and have this look on Bruce Daly and Donovan McNabb. This is as shocking a game as we've seen. The Redskins holding Philly to seven first downs. Winning in Philly, 13 to three. And they've changed the rules of the Skins game. Obviously, as Ron Jaworski found out, they've changed the rules of the Skins game. Well, we have faith in ourselves, and that's, that's all that matters. As long as it's 50, 53 man team, belongs in ourselves, our coaches believe in ourselves, and our staff and everything, that's all we need. It was us against the world, but now we got everybody riding on our shoulders now. All right, your mom was in the stands there. You gave her the game oh, yeah. ball. Must have felt good. Yeah, I got no choice with that. You know, once I get in the end zone, she takes it away from me, but it was just a good feeling to be back there. This team was 0 and 5. How do they come back to 5 and 5? Well, yeah. stadium, by the way. Oh, <laughs> yes, we are. Uh, you know, it's just a lot of determination, a lot of heart. I mean, we've worked so hard for so long. I mean, it's about time things have really materialized for us. I'm going to give you your mic. No, no, no. I, w I want everyone to uh, hear these fond words that you're saying. Hey, Boomer, 
we're going to give it back to you because um, it's a done deal in Philadelphia right now. <laughs> oh, my, he's a like sub-host. Like LeVar it. Arrington, Jaworski. <laughs> Washington played as if yes. they knew they could do this. I, I mean, we'll talk about Philly in a moment. Washington defensively, yes. look, they, they had Philly totally befuddled. I know Philly is a young offense, but they're running three, four, five-yard plays, and that's to the skin's credit. And what Marty has done in the big picture, Tom, yeah, is unbelievable. I, I also think defensively won't show up in the form of sacks, but we saw consistent pressure mm -hmm. put on Donovan McNabb throughout the day. And then you have the Marty Schottenheimer game plan, which begins with running the football. Kajana Carter, Stephen Davis today running for over 150 yards, and they ran the ball with commitment. Takes all the pressure off of Tony Banks. Didn't have a tremendous day. But again, I think the quarterbacks in this league right now who get it, are the guys who understand we're running the football. I need to complement it by not making mistakes. Well, it was a shocking loss for Philadelphia, yes. who really could have taken control, as you'll see, taking control of their yes. division. They got to play in Washington in three more weeks. Philly's offense, it, I, I thought we saw signs, but the plays are so short. It didn't seem like they had the any. Third down, even, fourth down, conversions. Even, got to convert. Yes, off on no intermediate plays to, to, to even loosen up the defense at all. Hail to the Redskins. On October 15th, we wrote them off, and now we write them a game out of first place. When we return to Chargers, do they get back to their winning ways against Arizona? And the Ravens going to Jacksonville. That would be a tussle. Here we go out west. Arizona scored a lot of points last week against San Diego. Jake the Snake Plummer. Could he keep the offense moving? Say what, was that a Pro Bowl year? Is David, please come to Boston. What a big target, muscular 19 yards. Pump fake, Plummer. Downfield, Boston. Please come to Boston. Some friends, and he's got lots of room. 7 3 Arizona. 10 3 Cardinals, third. Plummer, pass, tipped, picked off by Jason Perry. And here come the Chargers starting at their own one. Now they move down to the nine. Doug Flutie to Curtis Conway. Conway upfield, 22 yards. Now they're up to the 41. Remember the drive started at the nine. Flutie to Trevor Gaylor, 12 yards. First and 20 after a flag. Flutie to LaDainian Tomlinson, wide open, makes a move, nine yards. Second and 11 now from the 30. Flutie to Jeff Graham. Crackers for nine yards. Now third and two. Flutie to Steve Hyde, skating for 16 yards. Then third and goal. Flutie, same drive, now fourth quarter. To 99-yard drive, touchdown. San Diego to the Chargers. 11 for 11 is Flutie. But Thomas Jones, meanwhile, running it down to the one. Michael Pick, touchdown, Arizona. Back on top, 17-10. Here comes Doug Flutie. Four minutes left. Flutie magic here. 26 yards to Gaylor. Same drive. Flutie to the end zone. Jeff Graham. That's perfect. Touchdown 17 off. Well, and I think what we've seen there is how accurate Flutie can be. He's throwing from the pocket, so it's not a matter of him not being able to see the football field. So here's Jake Plummer to touch. Then to Boston for a first down. Then Bill Gramatica for the 42-yard field goal for the win. And as all Grammaticas do, they're fired up, they run around. And the Cards have won two in a row, and San Diego, which was five and two, has now fallen to five and six as they lose to Arizona 20 to 17, a season with great promise has come to a numbing halt. Yeah, and I think the disappointment has to be in the defense when you see that Flutie threw for over 300 yards, when you see that Tomlinson combined for almost 150 yard day, you certainly think that the defense didn't hold up their end of the bargain this week. And now San Diego goes on the road at Seattle. So it was not to be for the Super Bowl Chargers, at least not at this point. When we return, let me tell you about a man named Tom Brady playing for the Pats against the Saints. Bottom of the hour, Bears in Minnesota to play the Vikings. Back we go to the AFC Blackjack Division. Elvis Gerback under a lot of heat in Baltimore. And the Baltimore Ravens are in Jacksonville. And very early on, Gerback to Shannon Sharp, who was so outspoken but so upfront about it, 
Gerback to Sharp, 12 yards. Then, same drive at second quarter, Jason Brookins, two yards. And it's a touchdown, 10-0 to the Ravens. It's a very nice drive as Baltimore leads 17-0 at the half. So you figure the game is over after all with that defense. Mark Brunel hurt last week, back this week to Jimmy Smith. 12 yards, touchdown, hey, hey, hey. Ravens lead down to 17-14. Here come the Jaguars. Four and a half to go. Brookins gets the toss. Fumble! Tony Brackens has it for Jacksonville. So the rookie fumbles. Randall Cunningham says, hang in there. Minute and a half to go. Down to three, Stacey. Not touchdown. The Jaguars have scored 21 unanswered points on the board. And... Ryan Billick knows Elvis Gerback needs to lead a charge. And in a hurry, he needs a jailhouse rock. Gerback to Kadri Ismail. Six minutes to go. Gerback to Brandon Stokely. Hangs in. Buys time. That's a nice play. 17 yards. 45 seconds left. Gerback to Shannon Sharp. Nice catch. Down to the 17-yard line. Timeout. 36 seconds left. Gerback. Down to Ismail to the one-yard line. 16 yards. Ravens spike the ball. Now second and goal. 19 seconds left. Brook gets on the toss. T.J. Slaughter. Nice tackle there. Last timeout. Baltimore. Elvin. Billick. Talking it over. Gerback. Yes, Shannon Sharp gets his feet in. What a drive. Nine plays. 74 yards in a minute. 23. The Ravens. Every game. Tom Coughlin tried to call timeout. He didn't like his defense on the field. Yeah, but you got to love the play on the field between Gerbach and Shannon Sharp. And Shannon Sharp at the line of scrimmage, a great little inside move to set the play up, get past the defender to safety, and get to the back of the end zone. And what a great catch and concentration to get the feet down. And so the Baltimore Ravens, after blowing a 17-point lead, get really like fever with Miami, Tommy, the best sort of win they could have. Elvis Gerback leading the charge, and Shannon Sharp, who was outspoken, but up front with it, and the two of them combined for the win, and the Ravens are now 7-4. and four. Yeah, I don't think we talk about the numbers here. We talk about Elvis getting his football team back, regaining some confidence in that locker room, and the way he did it with Shannon Sharp, I think that could carry them now, at least for the next two, three football games. So the Ravens win it in Jacksonville. It's the eighth time in 12 meetings that that game has gone to a three-point game. Tom Brady starting, Drew Bledsoe on the sideline. More on that in a moment. Big controversy in New England. But the Patriots at home against the Saints. And what about the way that Brady led them down the field in the first drive of the game? That was Troy Brown. And Van Der 18 yards. Sorry, I jumped you. <laughs> then Brady. It's a screen to Antoine Smith. Was good as a rookie, Bill. Then was not good as a Bill. Now good. 41 yards. Boy, were they so impressive out of the gates, Tom. And the late kickoff at Foxborough, 7 0 P men. Second quarter, Brady, play fake. Hey, this guy, you know, very quietly is having a tremendous <laughs> season. Troy Brown and. The band of renown. 13 0, they missed the extra point. And Brady, looking to pass. Wait a minute. Oh, they're nimble work. Run for 10 yards. And uh, good job, Drew. Well, he looked very Drew like on the run. <laughs> And then Brady looking for Charles's touchdown. 20 to nothing, New England at the half against a team who won the NFC West a year ago. And then, oh, it's a New England Nor'easter. We know it well. Saints trying to come back in the rain. Ricky Williams stuffed by Anthony Pleasant. And the rookie is going to be a good player, Richard Seymour. Aaron Brooks has played well last two weeks. Ball tipped, ball picked by Pleasant after Lawyer Malloy charging, tipped the ball to the chagrin of Jim Haslam. St. Trail 20-3. Brooks running in the soon-to-be quagmire in New England. 16 yards. Ricky Williams. Hey, did the Saints come back at 20 to 10? Well, and I was surprised to see how well people kept their footing, how well the quarterbacks were able to throw the ball in this weather. New England not only threw the ball, how about the snap to the up man, Kevin Falk? 19 yards. That sets up Brady to Mark Edwards. Touchdown. 27 to 10, New England. Antoine Smith looking for room right, then gets a block from Brady. Oh my goodness, is there anything he can't do? 16 yards. Yeah, Brady feed Antoine Smith coming back, and actually a pretty good block. 
can actually cut him down. And then here's a touchdown run by Smith. The Natalie clad Bill Belichick congratulating his players. What an impressive win. The Saints were moving offensively, but New England came in, and Brady and Bledsoe said, you know what? We look horrible at 0-2, but now we're 6-5. The Saints have fallen back to 5-5, five five, so despite a 300-yard day throwing for Brooks, but way under 50% completion, it's Tom Brady in the midst of, you know, you want a sports controversy, you just bring it to New England, and you stir it up, and you have chowder. But Tom Brady, I think, Tom, now, as Belichick made a decision, as popular or unpopular as it may be with some, was not looking over his shoulder. I think he played with the confidence of guys says, hey, I have the job at least for now. It's not forever, but it's for now. He's now 6-3 and three as a starter. Well, a unique situation, and I don't think nine games make for a, a career, and we've seen that in the past, but I think that what Coach Belichick has done is he's given his quarterback, who's playing now, Tom Brady, a sense of confidence by giving him a vote of confidence. I think the problem is, is you can't allow that to be uh, seen as lack of confidence by Drew Bledsoe, right. who may not even be ready to play as yet. He's got to sit in the wings and think, when I get my chance, somehow I may get the opportunity to get my my job back. Frankly, this season and this charge at maybe a playoff spot for the Patriots has come out of nowhere. I mean, yes. it's come out of nowhere. Yes. So maybe, despite all of the ruckus in New England, Brady, Bledsoe, two quarterbacks, both ready maybe in December? 19 to 26, 268, four touchdowns, no INTs. You can't argue with the numbers. You cannot argue with the Patriots, who look very impressive. Meanwhile, speaking of impressive, the Oakland Raiders. They are at the Meadowlands. And John Gruden, I think he's focused. Jim Fossil saying his team's got to win five or six to get in the playoffs. Charlie Garner, handoff, outside. And the giant defense, which had trouble Monday night at the Metrodome, gives up on the first play of scrimmage, 38 yards. Five plays later, Rich Gannon, Jerry Rice, all the way down to the three, setting up a Zach Crockett run, 7-0. And first quarter later, Tiki Barber, nice cut, in, then out. And watch this. Bob boom to Charles Woodson, 36-yard gain. Sets up Morton Anderson, 47-yard field goal. And to one of the great guys in the game. Our congratulations. Only the third player to score over 2,000 points. Gary Anderson, George Flander, who he passed, and now Morton. And here's the screen to Charlie Garner. Yeah, Adam True right there, going to get the first block for him. Great timing on the setup of the block, and that was Frank Middleton in front, leading him to the end zone. So the Raiders in control, 14 to 3, and then Gannon to Rice. And he does this so well. The little 10-yard play turned into 34 yards. We've seen it for 17 years. Gannon, pump fake to Timmy Brown. Beats the defense. Gone, 46 yards. Brown, speaking of milestones, passing 900 for his career in this game. And then it was a hard read. He's going to follow me. Carries deflects. Joe Jurevicius somehow catches it at the 50. And the rain. Collins to the well-dressed Amani Toomer. Down to the 21. Three plays later on third and two. Barber takes the handoff. But look at Tiki change directions, Tommy. 21-10, it's a touchdown. Giants fourth and eight in the fourth quarter. Collins to Jerevicius. Torrey James gets back to make the play. Ensuing possession, Raiders. Pump fake Gannon. 40 yards to Timmy Brown. And then on third and seven. Gannon. To Brown. Makes the catch. Touchdown. There it is in the rain. They win it. 28-10. Brown over 100. And the Oakland Raiders have up their mark to 8-2. They've gone into Philly and bamboozled the Eagles. They've gone into New York and bamboozled the Giants. They're a team hitting on all cylinders. Coach John Gruden, slick down look, you understand, with Sal Palantonio. Thanks, Chris. Hey, John. You were able to come east on three different occasions, beat Indianapolis, Philadelphia, and now the New York Giants. What does it say about your football team? Well, we got some good players. We have a long way to go yet. I'm just uh, so happy for William Thomas, 
Uh, he went through a lot of adversity and lost a brother, but flew in here and helped us win. We got a long way to go, but we got to win on the East time zone. We got to win in any time zone. I saw you were able to go down the middle of the field in the seam after pump faking to the to the right side and then hitting the left post. Well, we got a couple plays that are vertical routes that the Raiders like to use every once in a while. And, and we caught him in a three deep zone and Tim Brown is a master at work in the middle of the field and Rich Gannon made some great throws. Congratulations, Sean. Thanks, Sal. Back to you, Chris. All right, Sal, good job in the rain and a good job by the Raiders in the rain. How about Rich Gannon? We, we've now, we're, by the next time he plays, it's going to be December, and he has two interceptions. Well, one of those quarterbacks with star quality in this league that can carry his football team, a plethora of weapons, Charlie Garner, Jerry Rice, mm -hmm. Timmy Brown, they play in all phases and play well. The Giants, it's the lightning, no thunder following it. You've got Tiki Barber, and Ron Dane is, is lost somewhere out there right now. And 11 tackles William Thomas under very difficult circumstances. Personally, he came to play some football, as did the Raiders when we return. Here on NFL Primetime, game balls will go out. Stay with us. Your votes and our votes for Texas NFL Primetime is presented by Miller Lite. Primetime is Miller time. And now, here's your host, Chris Berman. Hello once again, everybody. Welcome to NFL Primetime. Chris Berman, Tom Jackson, Week 12. We've steamrolled into December, and we know only one thing. <laughs> well, we know two things. The Rams, when they're rolling, they roll. And Dallas beats Washington. I don't know anything else, Tom. Yeah, at week 12 of the football season, and we're still trying to figure this whole thing out, but a, a bunch of great finishes. Some very intriguing finishes, both early and late games. Here we go to one of the teams that you, you felt that you had figured out, the big ketchup bottle. The Steelers at home, 8-2, and two, against Minnesota, who's 0-4 on the road. Jerome Bettis needs just nine to go over 1,000 for the eighth time in his career. Only the seventh back to do that. It's an impressive list. We'll give you that later. Meanwhile, Cordell saying this running thing, I like it. He's not in. He was down to the one, but that sets up the bus. He thought he was in, but they looked. It set up the bus. You know, he's going to get in. Bettis at 81 yards today, 7-3 Pittsburgh over Minnesota. Now we move to the third quarter, and Troy Edwards, who is kind of forgotten this year, but look at this play. The wide receiver runs, and, and he's bowling over a guy twice his size. Yeah, actually a lineman at the goal line, and he forced his way into the end zone. 12 yards, it's 14-3 Steelers. Nate, no jacket required. Unfortunately, after Nate tried to make a good play with it, no football required. And it's a fumble, and my falls out of for Pittsburgh. <laughs> Yeah, take a look there. Edwards tracking him down at the end of that play, forcing the fumble. Big play for the Steelers on their side. So Edwards doing it on the offense and the special team. Then famous Amos Zaraway. Good cookies, good run. Four yards in, and it's going to be easy for Bill Cowher. They're up 21 to 3. And now that Culpepper who came in limping badly and hurting that coach's decision. But you know, he's playing hurt. They're down 21 3. So. We bring in Todd Bauman from the St. Cloud State. And from the Huskies of St. Cloud State, look at this. Bauman playing poise. Now, we heard about Michael Bennett's speed. You watch right here on the screen. Dennis Green has said he's the fastest player he's ever coached. Fifth, Man. week 12, we finally saw it. So it's a 21-10 play. That play took about four seconds. So Culpepper, please. And I think it's Roy Jarella who's been eating for 10 years. At any rate. Uh, Bauman back in action to Randy Moss. He plays when he wants to. He does today in the second half. 62 yards leads to a touch. But all of a sudden, this game that was over is now a 21-16 game. Stewart back to pass, and it is, runs into his own man. Talon Sawyer recovers for Minnesota. <clears throat> a third and goal from the 19. Two minutes to go. Bauman scrambling. To Chris Carter, it's a touchdown, but you know why he was open? I have a reason, Tom. So do you. Yeah, we're going to take a look. Well, he was way, way over the way, line. Way, way downfield. So fourth and goal. The lob to Moss. And they're looking for the flag. You throw it up, and it gets Moss off, and you get this call. The Steelers very fortunate to not get an interference call there on Dwayne Washington because he didn't get his head around until the ball had already made contact. So the Steelers and Bill Cowher, congratulations. He wins his 100th game. Dennis Green won his 100th a couple weeks ago. Mike Holmgren won his 100th this year. 
three coaches in the class of 1992 all winning their 100th this year. The Steelers, they win it. They're 9-2. They win 21-16. But even Pittsburgh know they made this one too interesting. You know, you can, you can sit there and say I almost gave it away, which I almost felt like I did. But when you have a defense come out the way they play, man, and sustain their poise and, and consider they were moving the ball up and down the field when, um, when the backup came in, I mean, hey, hats off to our defense, man. We don't have that killer instinct, and we've got to have that killer instinct because, uh, you know, we've been fortunate enough to uh, win these games. But, uh, you know, going into December, you, you can't, you know, you can't win games like this. you got to put teams away early or else uh, they're going to come back and, and they're going to beat you because uh, every team we play, uh, you know, going down the stretch is going to have the ability to beat us. I think Pittsburgh, hey, look, hey, look, they won and they're 9-2, and two, but I think what they're saying is, you know, we saw Culpepper go, we're up 21-3. We finally, it's sort of a breather. Congratulations yeah. to Bettis. Uh, Walter, Barry Sanders, Emmett Smith, Franco Harris, Tony Dorsett, Thermal, Thomas, Jerome Bettis. Only guys for eight 1,000-yard seasons. They got a lot of rep weapons, more well, than people Yeah, think. yeah. Well, I, I Steeler team not doing what they usually do, which is Jerome Bettis, over 100 yards. He had 81 today. Uh, offensively, they didn't get the great numbers from Cordell Stewart. The defense is going to play solid. They're going to play the run solid to the line of scrimmage. But Minnesota played well, made some throws in the second half, fourth quarter of that game. Randy Moss, a tremendous day. But I think when you look at their running game, which I think is the thing they depend on every single week, 81 for Jerome Bettis, but 207 overall yeah. on 46 carries again. Fifth time this season, this team has gone over 200 yards rushing. That will win you a lot of football games. Well, we know who they are. Yes, we know, yes, who, they we are. know who they are. And they are in first place at 9-2, and two, the Steelers. Now, speaking of first place, the Chicago Bears. Last year, Bears going nowhere knocked the Lions out of the playoffs by kicking a field goal in Detroit at the end of the game. This time, the Lions 0-10. Could they knock the Bears out of first place? Here we go from Soldier Field. 72nd straight year, these two teams playing. Brian Erlhocker doesn't remember when they met in 1930, but he's going to be around for a long time. Charlie Batts, play fake. And you know, it's a time of year that you see a wonderful, wonderful light starring Jimmy Stewart. And here's James Stewart after the cameraman was fake. It's a wonderful play of 56 yards. And then on the same drive, it's Stewart again, so he's been back two games. Wait a minute, 0-10 Detroit up? 7-0 at first place Chicago at Soldier Field. Third quarter at 10-3 Detroit and Mike Brown. She quick for Johnny on the spot with not a safety tackle at the one of back. And he has such tremendous timing down around the line of scrimmage in on his blitzes in the red zone. He just is a, one of those guys around the football. You saw Batchley with a separated right shoulder. David Terrell, not a good day for him. Jim Miller wide open. Terrell looking more like Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell. And then there ain't no mountain high enough, but the goalpost isn't even high enough for Terrell. No. And how about wide receivers coach Todd Haley? The job of the receiver is Waiting. to catch the ball. <laughs> Bears down 10-6, though, fourth quarter. So you know what's going to happen. You know what's going to happen. Leon Johnson, they dust him off for a first down. And then Miller to the big play guy, Marty. Tampa. They've won in Minnesota. All of a sudden, they're struggling against Detroit, but no more. Johnson to the goal line. Touchdown! Touchdown! They did 13 10. Jim McMahon wants all in this stadium. And Detroit, well, not Jim McMahon, it's rookie Mike McMahon from Rutgers. Good job, Tom. Two minutes left in the game, second and four. McMahon, it looked pretty good on Thanksgiving. And Jimmy Stewart hits your first down. Kicker Jason Hansen, normally very good. He'd only missed about three field goals going into the game, but he's missed two earlier. Would he have a chance? McMahon to Larry Foster. Down to the 22. It's a first down. Timeout. Hansen, 40 yard field goal. Oh, man, not even close. No mulligans allowed. His third miss of the day, Dick Geron. Matt Millen. Oh. Matt uh, did not. He's not around many teams like this. Not that he was involved with, I can tell you that. The Lions fall to 0-11, just the seventh team since the merger. To start 0-11, and the Bears, 13-10, another late win at Soldier Field. Yeah, and I think we certainly know who the Bears are now. The offensive game plan is to not make mistakes. The throws are made close to the line of scrimmage within five or ten yards on, on either side. Today, I think the deepest pass they threw, Marty Booker, about 20 yards down the football field. Lions last day losses by a total of 35 points, but guess what? They're 0-11, and it's not going to get any better. When we return, the Saints are going to get back in the playoff hunt. Time. 
And in part by Visa. It's everywhere NFL fans want to be. Won an opening day, but haven't won since. Ricky Williams, remember Ricky Williams touched him on last play of the game, beat them in Carolina earlier this year. He needs 88 yards for 1,000. All oh, those tricky Saints. Flea Flicker, Joe Little Bighorn, wide open. But, oh, no, it's, don't tell me it's Phil Lockett. Phil Lockett is down the field and inadvertently uh, gets it. Well, perfectly set up Flea Flicker. Phil Lockett gets in the way, just can't get out of the way of Joe Horn. And you just look at the look on his face, boy. Can't help it. No luck except bad luck. You know what? Aaron Brooks rolls right and caught by Terrell Smith here. I'm just commenting that George Seifert is such a defensive genius, even though they've lost, what, 10 in a row, that he had luck at back in <laughs> by George. <laughs> Meanwhile, it's 10-7 to Saints. Chris Winkie does it. Winky Dinky does it to Patrick Jefferson to the four. And down 20 to 13. Winky's going to dive in. And the Panthers, who haven't won since the summer, week one, have tied the Saints at 20 all. Then. It's a toss to Ricky Williams, and he goes over 1,000 yards. First Saint ever to have back-to-back 1,000-yard -back season. Congratulations, Ricky, 102 today. He also caught balls for 72. Saints are down 23-20 to 20 after Carolina gets the lead with a field goal by Casey. And here's the swing to Williams, and look at him go with the speed and the power for 42 yards down to the 32-yard line. Just over a minute and a half to go. Three plays later to 17. Aaron Brooks to Joe Little Bighorn. Touchdown! Ball of very Joe Capish, the wounded duck. But Brooks, who threw for 330, 13 for 150 for Joe Horn. The Saints just survived the Panthers 27-23. Saints hit eight sacks. They held Carolina to 49 yards rushing, but they barely win. Yeah, but Ricky Williams emerging as the ultimate weapon. We've waited now a few years to see what he could do if he stayed healthy for an entire season. I think we're seeing it now. Another out of boy, by the way, in defeat to return man Steve Smith of Carolina who had another big game. Here we go. Buccaneers at the Bengals. Well, we cured him Monday night, Tom. Surely Tony Dungy's club would come into Cincinnati and roll over the Bengals once they saw temperatures above 50 in December. So, you know, that uh, below 40 stuff doesn't apply here. Rondé Barber blocks the punt. Todd Yoder scores on the touchdown. It's 7-3 bucks. Yoder with the TD. Yeah, Rondé Barber outside was going to be on the gunner. He came inside. The adjustment has to be made by the Bengals. You take it, you throw it over the top, you get an easy first down. They didn't make the adjustment. Rondé blocks it. Touchdown, Bucks. But Tampa cannot get away with the Bengals. It's 13-6 with under a minute to go in the game, and that's a fourth and four completion by John Kitten to Darnay Scott. Now Kitten to Peter Ward. 13-yard gain down to the six. Second to goal, 15 seconds. Kitten to Corey Gill. <laughs> They call it a touchdown. They look later, but it's a touchdown. And the Bengals, the Cincinnati Bengals, have tied the Bucks in OT. We go to OT. Field goal range. Brad Johnson, though, sacked by Brian Simmons. And the Bucks now out of field goal range. Tampa Bay punt. Mark Royal, one of 12 Buccaneers with a radio show, punts it, and it's a nice job. He'll have a good show in his next one because it's down to the four. And how good a show will it be? You tell me. John Lynch went to the Ram game with an interception. Forces the fumble by Corey Dillon and falls on it. The daily double for Lynch. So they don't even run a play. It's Martin Grammatic and good. He jumps around, of course. And the Buccaneers. Buccaneers have won back-to-back -back games for the first time all year. It's 6-5. Not an impressive win today, but he had a win in overtime in Cincinnati. 16-13, four of their last five are at home. And I think that this is the way the Bucks find a way to win many times. Solid defense, you get the block punt, and John Lynch was Mike Brown long before Mike Brown was Mike Brown. Ball, forcing fumbles, recovering fumbles. He's Dennis Eckersley. He's the closer. He just ends the game. When we return, Jets Patriots in a big AFC East battle. Jay Fiedler to Lamar Smith. Could... Here we go in the AFC East, the leading New York football gents and Vinny Testaverde at home against the Patriots trying to sweep them. Third and nine, first possession game, New York. Testaverde to rookie Santana Moss, playing only a second game after being hurt before the season started. First career catch, 33 yards. Then Testaverde to Lavernius Coles, and zip between the defenders. He's gone, 34 yards. Jets, touchdown, field goal, first two possessions. J-E-T-S-S-S-S-S. 
10-0 Jets. Tom Brady throwing deep, and Aaron Glenn, wow. It's amazing he's only going to sprain his right knee on this play, breaking it up. He wouldn't return, but it looked worse. Well, Aaron Glenn flipped over. You saw him come down on his head, shoulders. So fortunate to just have that ice pack on his knee. We've had the piece this morning. How about the Abraham uh, and Ellis going to the principal's office? Well, the guys coming off the edges. Abraham again here around the right tackle with the speed rush. I mean, the left tackle with the speed rush. And then Sean Ellis finally from the bottom of the screen to tip a Brady pass. So it's the third quarter, and uh, the Jets, it's been all New York Jets. Third quarter, Brady going to work out of the shotgun, a slant to Fred Coleman, and he's going to be tackled by Marcus Coleman. Coleman. You haven't seen so many Coleman since L.L. Beans had a sail on the, on the little stones. Two plays later, Antoine Smith touchdown, so the Jets who led 13 up to the half, now only lead 13-7. Jets get a hall field goal at 16-7, third and nine, 31. Let me tell you about a man named Brady, and this is Antoine Smith. Look at the speed for the big fella. Breaking it down to the 29. It's a 40-yard reception with a big play. That would set up inside and up to Mark Edwards. Four-yard touchdown. Patriots down two, 16-14. With momentum rolling. Brady, this is when you know you're hot. Ball tipped into the hands of David Patton. He generals his way for a first down. Hit second eight from the 21. Brady to Troy Brown. At Band of renown. That leads to Adam Vinatieri. Lining up 28 yards. Good. Oh, my. They spotted the Jets at 13-0 lead. Now they lead 17-16. Just over two to go. Fourth and five. Vinny picked off by Terrell Buckman. The Natalie clad Bill Belichick. Tom Brady. He kind of knew something nobody else did. Brady, seven and three as a starter. The Patriots began a very shaky 0-2. They're now in the thick of it at 7-5 as the Jets fall to 7-4. 17-16 pants. Brian Cox, six weeks ago or so, broken leg. He played. He's with Ron Jaworski. Boomer, thank you very much. A big comeback for the Patriots. Brian Cox, the second half. What a turnaround. What went on at halftime? Well, we just tried to come out and play a little bit better because we didn't get anything done on either side of the ball early. And, uh, you know, when you don't play your best and you can still win, man, it just makes for that much more. And, and we, we got to win when we weren't at our best today. You know, the, the Jets' first two possessions, Vinny had 115 yards passing. After that, you pretty much shut him down. What adjustments were made? Well, they threw everything they could at us early, and uh, they got some points out of it, but yet we overcame it. And, you know, I'm telling you, we didn't play our best team, and, uh, you know, hopefully we can build on it. All right, Brian, best of luck down All the right. road. Back to you, Boomer. Thanks, Brian. All right, Jaws, Bryant, the Patriots really given no shot to be a factor in this race, really. And, and the coaching of both guys, Herman Edwards, Bill Belichick this year has been outstanding. What about the adjustments? And what about the way Tom Brady has played with no turnovers? A couple weeks ago, I think, I think we saw it in, in the, uh, against the Saints. He did not want Brady looking over his shoulder. No. Bledsoe, you're no. the starter. How has he played in the two games no. when, when he said he had the starter for the rest of the year? Right decision for Bill Belichick. And, and certainly, again, you saw the four touchdowns by Brady last mm -hmm. week. Today, we see him 20 of 28, 213 yards, no mistakes, no INTs. And I think more important than the numbers is the tempo that you see New England's mm -hmm. offense run at. They're snappy out of the huddle. During their motions, their shift, they just look like a team that is more emphasizing what we want to do that has to do with Tom Brady. And then you look at the Jets, you see that uh, 19 carries for Curtis Martin, not enough. I know that Coach Edwards wants to get him more than that. And uh, just over 160 yards passing the football, but 77 of it came on the first drive of the game. So they really struggled after that first drive. Congratulations to Curtis. Seven straight 1,000-yard yes. seasons to start yes. a career. Only Eric Dickerson, Barry Sanders, and now Curtis Martin have done about the paint. Boy, that, that AFC East race all of a sudden. Yeah, tight. Shaping up to a three-teamer. Meanwhile, as we roll. We look at the Miami Dolphins who began today in the black foot of tight. What a surprise. Brian Greasy, uh, Bob Greasy and Coach Shula at a Dolphins I'm Greasy. Game. Well, <laughs> what, I, what I meant to say was that Bob, watching his son Brian, play for Denver in Miami. Denver's never won a regular season game in Miami in the Orange Bowl at Joe Hoppy Stadium at Pro Player Stadium, whatever you want to call it. But meanwhile, the Denver starts off all right. Terrell Davis playing well. Saw him run, Brian Griezmann to Desmond Clark. It's 10 nothing. A lot of officials yeah. getting into the action today. Here you got Zach Thomas, makes the read left, tries to come back and get to Desmond Clark. The official makes the play again. 
fourth quarter. It's 10 nothing Denver until Jay Fiedler to Chris Chambers. Time has come today. Once again in the fourth quarter for Miami. 11 yards. It's 10-7. Greasy. Pass. Here's the big play of the game. Kenny Mixon. I am not a crook. Let me make it perfectly clear. Mixon's the one. Touchdown. 56 yards. So the turn, it's almost like the Jet game in reverse with well, Miami involved. Yeah, and you take a look at Kenny Mixon, a nice outside spin here. He's trying to get to the passer, finds out that he can't, spins outside, makes a not, nice catch of the football. Pretty good athleticism by the big guy. So now with Miami leading the ball game, here going to get hit by Jeff Ogden. It's it, Bambo. And Miami is in business inside the Denver 10, which sets up when they unpile Miami ball. A couple plays later, Lamar Smith. It's a one-yard run, but it's immensive. 21 points in the fourth quarter, Miami. As they now leapfrog into first place in the AFC East at 8-3. and three. Miami finishing uh, for the last five at home. Miami beats the Broncos 21-10. to 10. And uh, for the Miami Dolphins, Tommy, in the fourth quarter in their last six games, they've outscored teams 72 to 12. And I think Dave Wanstatt really emphasizing now we cannot turn the ball over. Going into the fourth quarter, interception return, fumble the ensuing kickoff. It's the beginning of disaster for the Broncos. And the Broncos through 12 games have fallen through six and six. When we return, Tennessee, I mean, do they keep losing or would they establish themselves in the AFC Blackjack Division against Cleveland? Elvis, was he caught in a trap? Well, last week he was the hero. The NFL? Niners at last week he was the hero of the NFL. Niners at home at the bottom of the hour. Tennessee Titans at the Cleveland Browns. Browns coming off a shutout. The Titans, I mean, how many tough games have they lost? Steve McNair and the Titans saying, you know what? I know Cleveland's record's better than ours, but let's go. And he got help right away. Opening kickoff, Quincy Morton get by miss. Keith Bullock for the Titans recovers. They're in business at the 20 of Cleveland. So right away, here's Tennessee in enemy territory. Eddie George, a few plays later, no room there. Oh, that's a power run. It's one yard. Boy, what a tough one yard that was. 7-0 Tennessee. Later in the first, Steve McNair. Play action. To Derek Mason. These are the Titans we expected to see, Tom. 43 yards. It's a touchdown. It's 14-0 Tennessee. We remember these Titans. Yeah, and certainly the Cleveland Browns have been struggling offensively. You're going to watch Tim Couch here. Watch the pass. Look at where it's thrown. I think if that's thrown on target, it's third actually going to be picked. And here you have a third and three. That's third and 12. And they get they five. routes run just short of being uh, uh, where they need to be. Third here and three, again, two yards. Third and three, a route run at two yards. Two and 12, two for 12 and third down conversions. Meanwhile, Tennessee is piling up 24 7 lead. Now, Steve McNair left for a while with elbow, then came back. And but when he was in, did he sparkle? Throws a pretty ball. And Mason avoids the tackle, and he could go all the way. 71 yards, 31 15. Tennessee goes on to win it. An impressive win by the Titans. You know, five and six, I don't know if they can mount any charge at this point of the wild AFC, but that's the team we remember. Now Cleveland has to, has to wonder. The, Courtney Brown got hurt in the game with an ankle two x-rays tomorrow. And I think as curious as the season has been throughout the National Football League, the AFC Central really is that, that one division, the new black and blue, beating each other up and, and really going to be a scramble, except for the Steelers right now. I can't believe Tennessee didn't stick at 17. It would have been enough. <laughs> Colts at Baltimore hosting the Colts. I mean, it, it's weird. Shannon Sharp, congratulations before the game. Uh, get the picture, all-time receiving leader at tight end. Jim Moore looking for Peyton Manning. All busy week in the public for those two. Uh, a week that the folks say is long gone, and I believe that that's true. Manning to Marvin Harrison, 14 yards. Manning to Ken Dilger, 23 yards. Later in the drive, Manning pass. Doink. Almost intercepted Ray Lewis. Brian Billick. All right, almost. Get a field goal, game tied three. Second quarter, 3-3 three, three score, Elvis Gerback. Downfield with a missile. Andre Ishmael, ball knocked away by Jeff Burst. He's called for pass interference, setting up first to goal, Baltimore. So Gerback looking for Ion Badeo with all those letters. He still got into the end zone, Tom. How'd he get that open? 10-3. Well, take a look at the middle linebacker, Rob Morris, right there. And he's going to come over. Kadri comes in. 
picks him just enough, and that's a good pick because he didn't make enough contact to draw the attention of the official. Just help his player get open. Then Gerback picked off by Jeff Burris, who was called for the pass interference, and he said, get in, Jeff. Touchdown. Ten tickets. Get in the end zone before celebration, please. We're tied at ten. Gerback looking to Brandon Stokely. Where, where did this game come from? All of a sudden, the Ravens are in a shootout. Down to the two-yard line, and the Ravens have got all the injuries of the running back. This is going to be Mo Williams. Mo! Whoop! He fumbles! And Chuki Nakori falls on it in the end zone. But then come the Colts. Peyton Manning trying to make something happen. It's a fumble. Janet Taylor falls on it. Leads to a Stover field goal, 13-10. Next play. Dominique Rhodes, the human highlight reel. Stripped by Corey Harris. Ray Lewis recovers. Two plays in a row. Baltimore, two fumbles, another field goal. 16-10. First play, second half. Holt. Rhodes. Fumbles again. Into another field goal, 19-10. Suing kickoff after a Vander Jack field goal. Jermaine Lewis, you know he can do this on special teams. And watch 31, Clinton Crosby. Beautiful play. Knocks the ball out of his head. Into the end zone. Colts recover with a fine play. Yeah, Clinton Crosby. And this has actually become the new in vogue play. When you are beat down the field, you see a guy going for a touchdown, you just pop that ball out. Maybe that's the best one we've seen so far because he popped it about 25 yards downfield. From Clinton, Daddy Ignatius. Watches all these games. He loves that the Baltimore is showing offense. Meanwhile, his old team, the Indianapolis Colts, well, the Colts, I should say. Manny DeMarcus Pollard touchdown 20 to 19. The Colts lead. Bo Williams. He looked like Curly on the last play with the fumble. But in this play, he's almost. Way to carry that Momo. 57 yards down to the eighth. Leads to Ian Badeo. Touchdown 26 20. Freeman. Manny, Marvin Harrison, across the middle. Here we go the other way. 57 yards. TDs for Harrison this year, 27-26, C-O-L-T-S, Colt, Colt, Colt. Mo Williams, into the clear, he yards, 111 yards and 24 carries. Gerback to Ishmael, touchdown, go for two, don't get it, 32-27, Ravens. Manning, over the middle, and history. Rod Woodson with the pick, and the convoy, he could go all the way into the record book. His 10th career touchdown on an interception, setting an all-time NFL mark. Manning and Moore have seen it before. They were games, but you can't fumble it every time you have it. Raven win it, 39-27. So Baltimore getting gifts, and if Baltimore is going to score 39 points, hello. As the Baltimore Ravens, Tom, are now up to 8-4. and four. We have a Sunday night game in a couple of weeks. Baltimore and Pittsburgh on Sunday Night Football, which is really going to be a key game. Well, I think it's going to be obviously a very physical game, and I think that when you look at the Baltimore Ravens, what you see is a resiliency from this football team, and I think probably a direct reflection of Brian Billick and the confidence that he has instilled in this ball club. Mo Williams, he has said it this week, is a Priest Holmes type back. Good speed, especially to the outside, very fast, good set of hands, 111 yards. If they get that kind of support, give Elvis some balance. We know what the defense is going to do. Outstanding ball club. Well, and we know what Rod Woodson has done over an illustrious career. Many years, of course, pro bowling for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now still at home in that same AFC Central. And when Rod Woodson returned his 46 yards for his 10th career interception return for a touchdown, it broke the tie that he had with Hall of Famer Kenny Houston, who had nine. Of course, Eric Allen there with the Raiders, still at eight, and Aeneas with the Rams at eight. Dion, Rod Woodson, congratulations. Inside the... Here we go to the AFC West, the Pacific Northwest. Mike Holmgren of the Seattle Seahawks. Looking to go above 500. They're going against the San Diego Chargers. Opening drive, Matt Hasselback scrambling. Finding Mac Strong. Strong legs his way for 21 yards. After pass interference in the end zone, set him up in business. Sean Alexander, third and goal. It's a sweep. He's in. 7-0 Seattle. Of course, 7-3 to Seattle in the third. Doug Flutie played so well on this field. That final Sunday night game last year as a bill. Hits Curtis Conway 15. And then on the flubber, Ladanian Tomlinson in. And the Chargers have a 10-7 lead. The Chargers who have lost four straight. 
Now we're tied at 10-10 in the fourth. Ryan Lindell, 43-yarder. No. He's had a tough year, Ryan Lindell, I got to tell you. Two minutes left, third and six for Seattle. Hasselback to Daryl Jackson coming into his own 45 yards. But after they lose about five or six yards on a run, which made Lindell try a 48-yarder for the win. It's no good. That Ryan Lindell has had a tough year, I'll tell you. We go to overtime. Mike Riley, pump. Still in possession. Overtime, Seattle gets the toss. Here we go again. Alexander running outside. Sean for 12 yards. He had 87 yards of 29 carries. Finally, 24-yard field goal. That Ryan Lindell's had a great year. He wins it. 13 to 10. Yeah, it wasn't Mike Holmgren's. <laughs> I know that look, okay? I know what he's feeling, but they won it. And, and surprise, Seattle is 6-5, and five, and the Chargers, who are 3-0 and oh, and 5-2, and two, have now dropped five in a row, and they're falling to 5-7. and seven. What a promising season. Still better than last year, but it's kind of going up in smoke. Huh? Well, yeah, going up in smoke. A, a team that obviously is struggling because Flutie, as well as Tomlinson, playing a little bit better the last couple of weeks, but finally learning how maybe i hesitate to say it to win some close games well it's going to be a mishmash for the final couple spots of the afc they win it a couple of chargers came back from injury but to no avail meanwhile you tell me <laughs> chucky Dow and john gruden have never seen them together at the same time the raiders will have a laugher today against arizona i mean that's obvious michael pittman all right so they weren't laughing early pittman 42 yard run very impressive inside the tent but the Raiders are vulnerable, as we saw Sean Alexander on our air. In other games, they're vulnerable to the run. Thomas Jones, five yards. We're tied at seven at the Oakland Alameda County Coliseum. Dave McGinnis cheering on as Rich Gannon pass. Only intercepted twice going into this game. Picked off by the cousin of the Swami, Kwame Lasseter. So he's picked off, what, once in three months. Or twice in three months, and now he's picked off here. That sets up Michael Pittman. Reels off, 22 yards. Setting up his own touchdown later. Arizona will be 20 to 7 at the half. Now the Raiders have cut it to 23-14. Tim Brown end around. And he powers down to the 40-yard line. Rich Gannon. Pump. Time. Oh, that's pretty to Timmy Brown. 23 yards. 23-21. Right down by two. Just over three minutes to go. Gannon. Trying to get the lead. Escapes the rush to Tyrone Wheatley. Nice hatch leading to Sebastian Janik. No question about that. He killed bosses one through. Raiders lead 24-23. Under two to go. Jake the Snake Plumber. Has David Boston had a bust out year or what? Beating Charles Woodson. 50 yards. Touchdown. Two points. Good. Arizona leads. Please come to Boston in the fall time. Rich Gannon. Now coming from behind it, Jerry Rice. First down to the 43. Gannon. Time. Steps up. Looks short. Throws long. Right. Can't play anymore. Down to the 10-yard line. Second and goal. Gannon. Pass tip. Almost intercepted by Tom Knight. So with second life, the Raiders. Third and goal. Gannon. Clock ticking down. To the 10, to the 5, knocked out at the 2. Fourth and goal, 15 seconds left. Can the Raiders tie it? Get it. To Rice, touchdown. We're tied at 31. We're going to overtime. Fair catch, signal by David Dunn. But he fumbles the punt, and the cards recover. John Bruce says you're going to be kidding. We saw Martin Gramatica win for the Bucks in overtime. Younger brother Bill Gramatica, good. And the Raiders are shocked by the Cardinals. What a win by Arizona. 34-31 as Arizona is tied for second in the NFC East. They're 5-6. The Raiders, the last team, were unbeaten at home. 
They've lost. Everyone's lost at least one game at home. Well, and, and I think the difference is tremendous day running the football by the Arizona Cardinals and not what we're used to seeing in terms of running the football. A lot of pressure put on Gannon to throw to make things happen. 145 yards rushing yes. as a team, yes. Tommy, Arizona. for Arizona. A shocking loss at the Raiders. When we return, could Emmett and the Cowboys do it to resurgent Washington again? And the Rams in trouble at Atlanta. Maybe. We'll be back. Marty Schottenheimer. The Redskins rowing five. Now they're five and five. But they've lost eight straight to the Cowboys. Tony Banks was a Cowboy. Now talking to Quincy Carter, he is a Cowboy. He's back starting. But you know what? The one thing that hasn't changed in Dallas, Emmett Smith. If I get the Redskins, it brings the best out. It's his first touchdown of the year. It's a five-yard run, but all of a sudden it's 7-0 Cowboys. Steven Alexander, leave the game injured right ankle, not happy, throws helmet. Just a 7-0 game in the third. Tony Banks, screen to Steven Davis. And now Washington's in business. Sheds a tackle. 15, 10, 5. Knocked that at the 1. Setting up first and goal at the 1 for Washington. Yeah, and, and a great job defensively by those Dallas Cowboys. Gang tackling Steven Davis right there on the goal line. Then he runs to the left side. He's stuffed again. Now you're down to third down. And you see right there, Cowboys still holding him out. Marty's going to have to call a timeout. Fourth and goal. It's play action. Banks. Banks. He dies, he's in there. So it took him four plays to go a yard, but they tied the game at seven at home, and they feel they're, they're on a roll. They're gonna go to the Banks. Team down 10-7. Kevin Lockett, 34 yards. He locks it, pockets the key. Into field goal range. Watch a 51-yard field goal. No, Brett Conway is gonna pooch it. Do that, that's very well done. And so field position instead of points, because there's no for the Washington Redskins. We haven't lost since the middle of October. Quincy Carter to Rocket Ishmael. On the fly, 64 yards. Touchdown, surprise. Carter loves it. Dallas leads it. Well, and you look at Champ Bailey in coverage, and he took that little peek back right there. It slowed him down. The Rocket got about five yards of an edge on him. That led to the score. Down 20 to 7, Tony Banks to Rod Gardner, 15 yards for the youngster, 20 to 14. Now the scramble for the ball and the onside kick. Now wait a minute. Now this is a new one, Tom. Well, it's not new. You don't see it often. Dave Campbell hasn't seen it often. It goes off the helmet of the Redskin. It's a penalty. Hey. I didn't play long enough. Yeah, Redskins <laughs> get to try the onside kick again. Ball bounces off a Cowboy player, but. Dallas recovers. And a very good man from Central Connecticut, Dave Campbell, gets the win. If there's one thing the Cowboys can do, they've now beaten Washington nine straight times. So Dallas comes into Washington and beats him 20 to 14, Tommy. Emmett, 102 yards. Yeah, second time he's gone over 100 this year. Guess who? Washington Redskins. <laughs> Some now comes the time of the show. We get to watch the St. Louis Rams. Now the Rams were beaten Monday night. You know they don't like that. Last four meetings against the Falcons, all wins. They've come out flying. And even though Atlanta has had a great first quarter this year, Chris Chandler pricked off by Trey Bly. Trey Bly, good charge. 7-0 St. Louis. This is like a couple of years ago when the defense was scoring. Yeah, Trey Bly zoning up to the outside. He saw the pattern coming on the outside. Made a great jump on the football. With the score is 7-3 in the first. Warner, Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. Trying to make the tough play through his hand. I, you know, I, I don't think he's any good, Tom. But maybe I'm wrong. Warner to Marshall Falk. Oh, man. Is that pretty? 19 yards, 14-3. Rams, and here they go with the, with the angles and going deep. Well, Chris Draft is in coverage, and this is a linebacker's nightmare. You're in coverage. You expect him to run the flat and then go up. He just suddenly takes it up and makes it a seam route you can't keep up Don't with. Don't mention the draft, Tom. <laughs> Chandler hit by Jeff Scudina. His left leg bent awkwardly. He had to leave an obvious pain. He sprained left ankle, did not return. So Chandler out gingerly. Michael Vick in. 14-6 game in the third. And now the Rams open it up. Torrey holds wide open. 45 yards. Touchdown, 21-6 Rams. 
Warner, 17 of 23, 342, four touchdowns. Here's another one. Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. He now has 99 touchdowns in his career. That's nine yards. 28-6. More Rams. Ball. Cuts. Block. Gone. 28 receiving, 72 rushing, 100 touchdowns in 116 career games. Are you kidding me? And the Rams just lay one in to 6-4 and four Atlanta, who are flying. They'd upset the pack, but the Rams win at 35-6. And these are the St. Louis Rams who pay attention to a little detail known as don't the, lose the first. Well, well, I think the turnovers are so important, and what makes this team so intriguing, twice this year they didn't turn the ball over. Against Miami, 42-10. Didn't turn it over today, 35-6. So I think it's very clear. <laughs> If you don't turn the ball over St. Louis, no one can beat you, and maybe no one can stay close to you. And now they head to their big meeting with San Francisco at St. Louis next week. The Rams are 9-2. and two. When we return, we look at game balls. A lot of candidates, a lot of... ...to you by 10-10-220. Dial it, and all calls up to 20 minutes are only 99 cents. Boom, my game ball goes to Marshall Falk. Three TDs, 100th career touchdown, scores them in bunches. 98, 99, and 100 came today. Early September, Tom, nobody knew who Tom Brady was. Now a 7-3 as a starter for the suddenly flying New England Patriots. Again, no turnovers, and Brady just moved the club with efficiency and leading a big second-half comeback at the Jets there. They can now win the division. Tom Brady of the Patriots. And boy, a, a lot of votes coming from the Beantown area. The growing Fairweather clan obviously can't. We had some big games, St. Louis, San Francisco, yes. and we have Chicago at Green Bay. So really, uh, Jets, Pittsburgh, three games to really sink your teeth into next week. We're in December, Tom. Yeah, and, and I think certainly the weather will now start to affect what we see on Sunday afternoon. Whether so. or not we like it. Yes. For Tom Jackson, <laughs> I'm Chris Berman. Thanks for watching NFL Primetime. Out there who thought at the age of 32. NFL Primetime out there who thought at the age of 32 Brett Favre may have lost a bit of his mojo well Monday night's second half performance in Jacksonville should set you straight what makes Favre even more dangerous this year is the consistent play of Amon Green Green is the NFC's second leading rusher and has become a legitimate threat in the passing game and with Favre free to let it fly Antonio Freeman and Bill Schrader have hauled in 12 scores combined it's not as impressive on our sideline. James Allen has filled in nicely for the ailing Anthony Thomas, but today our backs will face a tougher front seven, one that held them to just 47 yards rushing in week nine, their lowest output of the season. Jim Miller will see the same Ed Donatel scheme today, a heavy dose of eight-man fronts and man coverage on the outside. Big Edge Packers. As good as the Packers are on offense, statistically, they're even more impressive on defense. Up front, they have a nice mix of size and speed, and they bring the heat, leading the NFL with 42 quarterback sacks. The secondary is also very good. Mike McKenzie's having a Pro Bowl-type season, and Darren Sharper is the NFC's best strong safety. As for the Bears, they give offensive coordinators nightmares as well. Mike Brown is playing better than all of the league's free safeties, and the Bears' linebacking trio is as good as it gets. It starts up front, though. Ted Washington and Keith Trailer are an immovable force, and someone has to get to Favre today. This is a tough comparison, but how can you ignore the fact that this Bears' D has allowed just 13 touchdowns on the season? Slight edge, Bears. The special teams, once again, are easy to assess. Edinger is 17 of 21, and Maynard has dropped 23 punts inside the 20. The Bears are a few big returns away from being the best specialty group in the league. Big Edge Bears. Today's key matchup focuses on Marty Booker and David Terrell, who must win their individual battles with Tyrone Williams and Mike McKenzie. If the Bears can't throw the ball in the Packers' secondary, they won't win the game. With very few exceptions, each time this Bears team steps on the playing field, they have an edge on defense and special teams. The obvious Achilles heel is an offense that averages just 295 yards and 18 points per Sunday. It is the offense that keeps the experts skeptical and may eventually do them in. John Shoup's guys have to prove they can score when called upon, and today would be a fine time to make a statement. Recently, the Bears have had success in the land.
jumpsuits and dental problems. With a win today, they take a huge step towards a division title and a number one seed in the NFC playoff scenario. Everyone keeps fawning over these Packers, but hey, they've been anything but dominant over the last six weeks. In this, the season's defining moment, you think I'm picking against our guys? Not a chance. Bears 23, Packers 20. Woo! And by the way, just to get this on the record, Gary's picking the Packers. Well, you know, that's not a bad pick there. I think it's going to yeah. be a very close game. I think we both agree that it will be. Yeah. Who's a Bears fan and who is not? Well, it's not about being a fan. It's not about being a fan. Do you have to defend him? No, because I feel the Packers are going to win too, so All okay. Right, you know oh. what? I'm sorry. Welcome yeah. to Packers Sunday Live. Gary Fensing, one of the... <laughs> One of the things the Bears have to do to have a chance today is put some pressure on Brett Favre. You would think last time didn't do it, but doesn't bode well for the pass rush that Philip Daniels and Brian Robinson, both early in the week, were questionable for this game. Obviously, they're going to play. They might not be very healthy. Yeah, and take a look. Uh, Schrader is averaging just under uh, 20 yards per catch, and he really is their deep threat, even though he's a white guy, Tom. And uh, I, I think what, what happened in the last game is that the <laughs> Packers really had time to throw, and with Robinson and, and Daniels, being, you know, uh, injured today, right. maybe not being full uh, affected. Yeah. See, that's why I only you're see six, six, You're going to see different uh, formations on the defense, right. three, four defenses, a lot of zone blitzes, and I think, uh, you know, it's going to get down to who can execute. Both teams are, are good teams, but I think the Bears actually are a much more consistent team than the Packers have been this year. feel some anger here. Did you have something to add? No, or that's all right. I know right. we need to go to break. We do There's... have a post game. We do have a post <laughs> Plenty game. Plenty of time for all your opinions. Coming up. Just say cheese. We go north and find out what Packer mania is really all about. Jill Carlson has that story. And the Bears need a receiver besides Marty Booker to step up. Could David Terrell be that man? I'm Coming available. Up? I don't think you could do it. Backs, you are. I don't think you could do it. Backs, you are undoubtedly familiar with the. Rivalries are renewed on NFL Prime Time. Niners and Rams clash for first in the NFC West, while the Bears and Pack duel for the top spot in the NFC Norris. Who would get the start in Minnesota? Would the Lions get a win, or would Keyshawn get a touchdown? The Jets try to get a win with the bus sideline, and a surprise showing for the Pats in New England. Dallas tries to upend the G-Men, as the Chiefs try to find their way through the black hole. How high can the Eagles fly in the NFC East? Up next on NFL Prime. <laughs> NFL Prime Time is presented by Miller Lite. Prime Time is Miller Time. And now here's your host, Chris Berman. If they only knew. Hi, and welcome to week 13 of Sunday NFL Prime Time. Chris Berman along with Tom Jackson. And we start with big games today, big important games on this Sunday. Well, and, and I think the best of the best today started to show us a little bit of separation. Yeah, a lot of things that we kind of thought in some of the respective divisions today, at least for one day in the season, kind of bored out. Of course, the Swamden did all those <laughs> things. But at any rate, Tommy. How good is it when teams who have been playing longer than anybody else, like 163 times, finally have a game that means something? The Bears and Packers at the frozen tundra of Lambeau Field. And there's the site of the big game, Vince Lombardi and the Papa Bad George Hallis. They weren't there, but it felt like they was, as Brett Favre leading the charge. And the Packers came out. Well, what they wanted to do was get up on the offensively challenged Bears, and they did. Far to Antonio Freeman, that's 33 yards. Later in the drive here, opening drive of the game, far to Freeman, touchdown to the pack, showing us they lead it 7 to nothing. But speaking of authority, how about Brian Erlocker and Tommy? The closing speed of this man is incredible. Yeah, known as the delay blitz, you saw him wait to make sure the back was blocking, and then that last 10 yards from him to Brett Favre, he does it in what seems like Unreal. about two steps. And then, watch Erlocker here. But boom, and a turn on the Jets. With seconds left to go in the half, Erlocker is down the sidelines inside the 20. What a big play. And you saw the jawing between the two of them before. It's, they know Sapp is leaving the division. Erlocker is coming in, so they're going to jaw kind of friendly. But the Bears cannot capitalize. Jim Miller and David Terrell, incomplete. 
They try the same play on the next play just seconds And ago. understand that Miller's throwing this ball to the back corner of the end zone. That's where he expects the receiver to be. So the Bears are forced to try a field goal, 23 yards for Paul Edinger. And this isn't even a good corner kick in soccer. That and so the Bears get the big play, and they trail it 7 to The Papa Bears says, what's going on here? <laughs> but to Chicago's credit, they came out smoking in the opening drive of the third quarter. Anthony... 19-yard touchdown. We are tied at seven, and he had blocking to spring him. Yeah, number 71, James. Job of blocking and sealing off the outside, getting a lane for the A train. Who's on the sidelines for the Packers? Let's play some defense. The Minister of Defense, Reggie White. And Bernardo Harris must have got the vibes. Yeah, he almost takes the handoff right here, and amazing that Jim Miller was actually able to hold on to that ball. But we have a 7-7 game. And so midway through the third quarter, Brett Favre, shadow of his own goalpost after the Bears did an excellent job of punting it deep to Bubba Franks, the tight end, 20 yards, breathing room. Third and eight, Favre. Corey Bradford, a fine catch for 16 yards. Next play, watch the speed of Amon Green and watch the speed of number 30, Mike Brown. Two fine plays by those guys, but it's 29 yards. And then did I say speed? Amon Green to the left, whoop, makes the move, and in the shadows, standing in the shadows of love, it's a touchdown. 91-yard drive, a nine plays, capped off by Green, 12 at run, 14-7. Field goal Packers, 17-7. Fourth and five, Jim Miller, two and a half to go up there. It's incomplete. It's not an interception incomplete. And you know who loves it the most? Vince Lombardi. The Green Bay Packers have equaled the Chicago Bears at nine and three. They are now tied atop the NFC Norris division. But it's the Packers who have swept the Bears, so any tie really goes to Green Bay. So the record's the same. Tiebreaker goes back. Here's Sal Palantonio at Lambeau with Darren Sharper. Thanks, Boomer. Darren, you guys were able to shut this Bears team down. What was the key on defense? Just flying around to the ball. I know during the week, the Bears will come in here. They had some success in the past. They're going to try to dig and dunk the ball, try some deep. We just had to fly around and make plays, and that's what we did today. We were able to control them. In the third quarter, Miller had Booker deep behind you. Right. What happened on that play? You intercepted it. I tell you what, man, I was so upset that early in the game, I wasn't getting the ball thrown to me, so I had to let a guy get behind me for them to throw it to me. And luckily, he underthrew it a little bit, and I was able to make a play. And now you guys control the division. Yeah, we do. That's, that's why this game was so crucial. Oh, it's just a huge game. We control our destiny, and that's what we want to come in here and do. Stay healthy. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Back All to right, you, man. Chris. All right, Sal, there, thank you very much. It, it, look, first thing, so in this game, it's up the NFC Central. Not that surprising, even though Brett Favre's in the game. We're talking defense. Bears held the pack to 17 at Lambeau, but yet their offense, part Packer defense, Tommy, part Bear offense, it, it just doesn't seem well, to be anything it, that could score 20 points. You look at the Bear offense, they do not stretch the football field vertically. Most of the passes they throw are within five yards of the line of scrimmage, whether it's to a running back or a wide receiver. And then I think you give a lot of credit to the Packer defense in two games this year in terms of rushing yards. They held the Bears to 97 yards. And I think that when you start talking about balance, and we will as we get toward the playoffs, Green Bay is one of the better balanced football teams yes. in the league with Brett Favre, Amon Green, and company. Yeah, yeah they, they, re they have. And if they can continue, they've lost the one game to Atlanta at home. But yeah. remember, they have games. They can get a top seed or second seed and play at home. I know we're putting ourselves ahead of things, but big win by the Green Bay Packers. Meanwhile, elsewhere in the Norris, a team that hasn't won yet this year, the 0-11 Lions in the home of the team that invented losing. Would this be the place that the Lions' Marty Morningwake would get his first win? Well, you remember the 76 Tampa Bay Bucks, don't you? 0-14, oh, some of the humorous variety. John McKay said, what about the team's execution? I'm in favor of it, but these Bucks... <laughs> They're in good hands with all stock. They don't resemble those bucks. They're starting to roll. 24-yard touchdown. All stock sprung by the fullback. Watch the fullback, Jameel Cook, right there with a the kickout block. And then once uh, you get Mike Allstott in the open field, very hard to bring down. The Bucks lead at 7-3. Later in the second, Brad Johnson to Keyshawn Johnson. Jimmy Wyrick defends it perfectly. Five seconds left in the half. Figure why not? I mean, what? The old, uh, like a Bailey Howell or Connie Deerking hook shot. It's incomplete, but it's the end of the half, 7-3.
Remember Jason Hansen had kicking woes last week? He's usually very good, like here. Hansen had a big game. That's his third of the game. That's a 50-yarder. Detroit leads 9-7. Now Hansen, another field goal, 12-7, three minutes to go. Fourth and five. Brad Johnson to Mike Allstott, first down clutch. Fourth and eight. Minute 18 to go. Brad Johnson to Keyshawn Johnson. Down at the 13. Then, oh, the Lions almost have it to end the game. But with under a minute to go, new life, Bucks. And Keyshawn Johnson makes his 10th catch of the game. It's his first touchdown of the year. And what a good time. I mean, Weirich had a good defense on and the play. And a great job. A great job of standing in and throwing the ball by Brad Johnson. And then when you're 0-11, you fumble the kickoff with a chance. You got a hot field goal kicker. But Desmond Howard, no Heisman pose here. And so the 0-14 box of 1976, their legacy, well, it's still being challenged by Matt Mahe Millen. I feel sorry for Matt. Why is it everyone in the box with Matt does exactly the same thing? They used to all have goatees, then they all shave. Sometimes they put their head in there. They all do the same thing. And the Tampa Bay Bucks win at 15-12, and they, hey, look, they struggle with the Bengals, they struggle with the Lions, but they've won three in a row, Tom, and they're 7-5 going into Chicago. And it's something that they do this time of year. I think the thing that's going to be most troubling to Coach Dungy is the 54 passes, the 54 times that Brad Johnson has to throw the ball because we know that he wants to run the ball first and throw second. Yeah, averaging 10 yards of completion, but the Bucks are now in it firmly at 7-5. They have a shot when we return. In part by Burger King, home of the Whopper. And by Fujitsu, the possibilities are infinite. All right, so we've just had the Lions. Now we get the Bengals. Then we get the Panthers playing the Bills. Jacksonville is thrown into this mess with Mark Brunel playing hurt, strain right spot. How many tough games can they lose Brunel to Jimmy Smith? 17 yard, it's a touchdown. Good tackle. Nine carries for uh, nine catches for 119. And Jimmy Smith, six consecutive years over 1,000. Jerry Rice, Timmy Brown, Chris Carter, Lance Allward, Jimmy Smith. Pretty good job. 7 7 at the half, third quarter. Mark Roman. Greco Roman wrestling. It hits uh, Brunel's throwing hand. He gets treatment. Return after one series. They needed him because the Bengals led 10 7 in the fourth, but right at the beginning of the fourth quarter after Brunel comes back. You saw Jimmy Smith. You know he's going to go to Keaton McCardell here, Tom. And 11 yards to touchdown. And there it is. It, it, Good coverage. The Bengals were 2 0. They're not anymore. Cincinnati had fallen to 4 8. Same record as Jacksonville. The Jags win it. By the count of 14 to 10, as we told you, that Jimmy Smith uh, got into the record books, and that's a pretty darn impressive accomplishment. And now, for two teams combined at 2 and 21. Carolina at Buffalo, they honored Marv Levy at halftime uh, because he was inducted into the Hall of Fame this year. We honor Marv as well. Alex Van Pelt, could the Bills win at home this year? Ever since, you know, the wall came down and, and the two Germanys, you know, uh, got together, Reggie Germany has been playing much better here. Yeah, Mike Minner was in coverage. You saw Reggie Germany tipped the ball, he got tipped by Minner, and then he came back and made the catch. It was great concentration. Larry Sanders has caught more passes than any other running back. That does not add to his total. Third quarter, Carolina leads 24-13. Chris Winky, Jinky, does it. Musi Muhammad, does this play sum up these two teams? What? 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 All oh, those funny Panthers and Bills. The Bills down 24 to 13, but a reminder, no one circles the wagons like the Buffalo Bills. I can't shout it, but Brandon Spoon is going to ladle it out. 44 yards for the touchdown off the hands of Donald Hayes. Then the Bills score again, and Buffalo, their last home game is next week already when they play New England. George Seifert won an opening day, and it's just... Tough to watch. 25, 24. Alex Van Pelt, 20, uh, 20 of 29. Impressive numbers. What does that mean? Might have to get him out of town. <laughs> <laughs> the bill circling one wagon. <laughs> Canon Rebel 2000. George Young died at the age of 71 after a short illness on Saturday night. George 
joined Don Shula with the Baltimore Colts in 1969, uh, moved on with him to Miami uh, eventually, but of course is best known for his 19 years as general manager of the New York Giants, turning a franchise that hadn't been in the playoffs since 1963, took over in 79 into a two-time Super Bowl champ, drafting the likes of Phil Simms, his first pick, Lawrence Taylor in his third year there, and he hired a, a guy who turned out to be a pretty good coach by the name of Bill Parcell. Since 97, he's been an executive VP with the National Football League. His wife, one of our favorites, Lovey Young, our hearts go out to you. Uh, George Young will be missed by all of us dead at the age of 71. George loved all the games that he would have enjoyed watching. He certainly watched his old team last year, the Giants. And today the Giants were at Dallas to play the Cowboys. So here we go with Quincy Carter, who won last week for the Cowboys against the Redskins. And all of a sudden he's feeling his oats. Carter to Rocket Ishmael. Between Williams and Seahorn down to the one. Ishmael at 118 yards receiving today. And then with this one, Emmett Smith, the second touchdown of the year, tying linebacker Dexter Copley in on December 9th for the team lead in touchdowns with two. Oh, by the way, Emmett is 147. It's hard to punt, catch the ball when you have a broken hand as Rodney Williams has. Yeah, Rodney Williams playing with a broken hand. And you talk to Coach Fossil, he's an outstanding athlete. The ball got through. He tries to scramble for the first down, comes up a few yards short and re-injures the hand. Yes, he does. So 13 all early fourth quarter. Carter fakes, and he's going to keep it. This is what he can do. He can run it down on the three. And then how does Jackie Harris dust it off, get this I, wide the open? first time we saw it, we thought it was a tackle eligible, and they didn't think that he could catch passes. It was a tricky play. Tight end was eligible, Tom. And then Emmett Smith, his longest run of the year, 44 yards with the Cowboys trying to enter their 20 to 13 lead. That sets up John Hilbert. The kick from 48, it's doink, 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 no good. The double doink to the chagrin of Dave Campo. Can Kerry Collins lead a comeback? Collins, 13 yards to well-dressed Imani Toomer. But this time, Dallas gets the double doink. Watch. Pass thrown to Toomer. Off Dwayne Hawthorne. Doink to Darren Woodson. And the pick, and the victory is saved. And all of a sudden, the Dallas Cowboys... Well, they, they beat the Skins, now they beat the Giants, and at 5-7, and seven, the defending NFC champion New York Giants are in deep trouble. Dallas wins at 20-30. to 30. And it looks like the Dallas Cowboys may have found their quarterback for the future, his career best 194 yards for Quincy Carter, so uh, his best day yet this season. Despite 110 yards running for Tiki Barber, the Giants lose to the Cowboys. First place team in the NFC East, the Philadelphia Eagles, Mike Riley, Andy Reid. Riley's Chargers have lost five in a row. Reed was looking for the team to play well at home. Watch this play by Jeff Graham. How does he get it? Crackering his way. Touchdown. Circus play. Ties the game at seven. Excellent defense and position by Troy Benson. You really have to take a look at that play to see how great a catch it was by Graham. Vincent right now realizing where the ball is, and it's too late. And then LaDainian Tomlinson, he, he fumbles it before Brian Dawkins get there, but Dawkins does the rest. He could go all the way. Third defensive touchdown this year for Philly. Boy, did they do that a lot. 14-7 Eagles. Just under five minutes to go in the second quarter. Donovan McNabb to Deuce Staley. Watch the moves on the fake flubber. Whoop, and then whoop, and then, and then whoop. Another move there. Boy, Tommy, looks like the old Deuce. 37 yards. Same drive with three minutes to go, fourth and one. McNabb to James Thrash between defenders, 24 yards, first down. Three plays later, they're down at the eight. Three, okay, let's run that play. Andy not ordering from the menu. He's ordering this play. McNabb to Deuce, eight yard touchdown. Eagles lead it 21 to seven. Minute to go in the half. Doug Flutie says, you know what, Jeff Graham, he made that catch. How about this one? He zings it in there. It's a ball game at halftime. 21-14. And then Flutie going deep. Ah, ah, ah. Shoot, that, what was that? A wound that's that's up. <laughs> Troy Vincent with the pick. Next Chargers possession. Still down just seven. Doug scrambling. And he dives in the first time, and it's a fumble. Hollis Thomas, Philly, recovers, leads to it. That that, 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 that field goal by David Akers, 24-14. Seven and a half to go. Scary moment here. A sideline official, not one of the regular officials, but the players were out of bounds. Oh, he comes inbounds. This elderly gentleman, I hope he, yes, looks like he's going to be okay. And that's good. But Philly's a tough crowd. And the Eagles beat the Chargers 
24-14. So again, the, the Eagles defense doing some scoring, offense doing just enough, and the Philadelphia Eagles are 8-4 and four and in complete control of their division. I have to mention Brian Dawkins' play today for the Eagles. Ten tackles, two forced fumbles, and a TD return, 49 yards for a touchdown. Yep, they certainly bring the defense. When we return, Minnesota kept the starting QB in question until the game time against Tennessee. Good Eddie George and the Titans win no matter what. And Tom Brady, 7-3 as a starter. A must win against the Seattle Seahawks. That's our Sunday night game at the bottom of the hour. Seahawks, Broncos, AFC West. We're with BT. Welcome back to NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite. Minnesota at home against Tennessee. Randy Moss, you know, I'm going to stand here when I want to stand here. Can Randy come out and play? Well, you have to ask him, apparently. Cole Pepper, Todd Bauman, who's going to start? Danny Green not tipping his hand right until game time. Eddie George, meanwhile, hurdling a defender scores. He got hurt for a while, came back. 10-0 Tennessee after a quarter. But then, brain trust. It's Todd Bauman who starts. He's talking with Randy Moss, Chris Carter. Todd Bauman from St. Cloud State. Near... Fergus Falls, Minnesota. Completes his 20-yarder to Moss. And it, how does Moss you catch it? Actually, what a throw. When you really watch this, Randy isn't really looking at the football when it comes in. I would say great concentration. It's an outstanding throw by Todd Baum. That's that floater. We saw that late last week. He Green with the juggling catch. All of a sudden, the Vikings lead 14-10 at the half. But Bauman then adds another touchdown early third. And then... That famous Bauman to just Doug Chapman combination. We were talking about it all preseason. Hit that down, down. 28 to 10, Minnesota. Bottom bottom. Likes it. Dan with the score, 28-17. There's the speed of Michael Bennett, Tom, that we heard about from Denny this summer. 35-17. Then Bauman to Randy Moss and talk about breakaway. And there's some speed right there. The angles by the defense, all bad. Randy Moss faster than everybody thought. And he's gone for 73 yards. So here is Moss and Bauman who making his first NFL start. And all he does is throw for 348 yards and all those touchdowns. And in about a 12-minute span in the game, he had four touchdowns. Yeah, first NFL start. And I think you saw what he could do with a little bit of mobility. And Dante Culpepper suffering from being one of the leading rushers, the leading rusher for most of the season for the Minnesota Vikings. So the Vikings improved to 5-2 and two at home, but they're just 5-7. and 6-5, Cleveland at 7-5, New England. Important game for playoff possibilities. Two teams that no one expected to beat here. Tom Brady, Tim Couch. Who thought they'd be playing in a game of this magnitude in December? A little snow on the field at Foxborough. And Corey Fuller. Boy, the Browns have done this more than anyone else. 27 picks for the year, two today. There's a touchdown. And the Browns lead at 10-3. Drew Bledsoe says, you know what? Chances are you're still going to be in there. Giving some encouragement to the youngster. And look at the poise in the pocket. He comes right back like a real good relief pitcher who served up a home run ball. Tommy Satan, give me another one. Yeah, if you watch him throw the football, look at the accuracy. Look where the ball is thrown. Watch this throw right here in the middle of three Browns defenders. He puts it right on the money, right where the uh, receiver can catch the football without taking the tremendous hit from the defense. And then Antoine Smith first and goal. Uh, 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 it's a touchdown to the chagrin of Butch Davis, and we are tied at 10 at Foxborough. First of December, covered with snow. So is the turnpike from Stockbridge to Boston. Troy Brown getting some blocks, including the big fellow against the kicker, and he could go all the way. Troy Brown in. His band of renown. 85-yard return, 17-10 of the punt. The Patriots, look at the blocking. Yeah, take a look at some of those blocks. Lawyer Malloy going to come across on Dwayne Rudd, and then Richard oh. Seymour. Sneaking out Kardaki, the kicker. You gotta love a 300-pound guy who goes and finds that kicker. Oh, it's about a 150-pound difference. Under two minutes ago, the first half 17-10 game. Otis could go, but you need the ball. It goes the other way. Juwan Dawson. Oops. Otis, my man Smith. Meanwhile, Cleveland still in possession. Couches pass. Picked off by Terrell Buckley in a Lithian effort. He runs around. He thorts his way across the 25. And the Patriots are up 20-10 at the half in Terry with a field goal just at the end. Tom Brady, Troy Brown inside the 10, and first and goal with the score 20 to 16 under three minutes to go. The Patriots put it away. 
it away after that. They do not play prevent defense. Antoine Smith, second touchdown of the game. 27 to 16. The Patriots are now eight and five, and two of their three games left. By the way, they have a bye still coming. Two of their three games left are Buffalo and Carolina. Games you'd think they would be in good shape. Troy Brown, over 1,000 yards for the year with our Ron Jaworski. Boomer, thank you very much. Troy Brown was his own band of renown today. Not only going over 1,000 yards, but your 85-yard punt return broke the game open. Tell us about it. We, we knew we had our work cut out for us when we came out here today. You know, we knew Cleveland was a tough defensive team. They made some great stands on us, you know, inside, inside the red zone. And, uh, we, we were able to fight for some points in the fourth quarter there and came out on top. Troy, this team is charging toward the playoffs right now. When did you believe you could be a playoff contender? We came into the season thinking we could be a playoff contender, but uh, we didn't get off to a good start this year and uh, we got to dig ourselves out of a hole and uh, now we got ourselves, you know, turned around, we're back on top now and uh, we're fighting to win the AFC, AFC East right now, so uh, we hope we can keep it going next week. All right, Troy, congratulations. Good luck against Buffalo next week. Back to you, Boomer. The Pats are hot. Yes, they are, Jaws. In addition to those two games, Tom Buffalo and Carolina, they have Miami division leader at home in two weeks on a Saturday. And I think we find something we like about Tom Brady every single week. Corey Filler with the interception return for a touch. memory. When we return, another game between two. Welcome back to NFL Primetime, presented by Miller Lite. Important game between two six and five teams in the NFC West. Jim Hazlitt, New Orleans Saints. Playing in Atlanta against the Falcons. Falcons score first lead 7 0. But then Aaron Brooks to one of Tommy's cousins, Willie Jackson, 14 yards, first down Saints. Then later in the drive, he doesn't play that much, but Deuce McAllister making the most of his time, just kind of a. It's the most relaxed play we've ever seen. To Willie Jackson, touchdown, and we're tied at seven. Those tricky Saints. On the ensuing kickoff, Derek Vaughn, kick return Atlanta. And then the cousin of Jackie Gleason, Steve Gleason, recovers for New Orleans, and away we go. On the next play, Saints. Aaron Brooks, down to the one front line. Setting up a Ricky Williams touchdown run, 14-7 Saints. Chris Chandler, over the middle of Sean Jefferson, moving on down. It's a fumble. Fred Thomas picks it up, and he could weave and go all. Oh. The way, what a run, 21-7, but no, wait a minute, peep show, we're going to review it, Tom. Yeah, they review this play, we'll take another look at it as well, you look at Sean Jefferson, appears to clearly get both feet down and about to take a third step, ball comes out, ruling, was an incomplete pass. Well, so now it's fourth quarter, still 14-10, and Brooke to Joe Horn, is he a big play guy or what? In the end zone, he has some fun. And the Saints lead it 21 to 10. Another big game for Joe Horn. Seven for 138. Ace, deuce, deuces are wild. Man, no one's going to catch him. He threw one pass, he ran one ball, and he's in the end zone twice. And something we may see more of, both Deuce McAllister and Ricky Williams in the backfield at the same time. Great kick out block by Ricky Williams. Meanwhile, the Saints had nine sacks. Chris Chandler to leave the game briefly. He was game playing on that injured ankle, but nine sacks by the Saints who bring it. That one was Glover. This is Jay Bellamy. And after spotting the Falcons a lead, the Saints go on a roll, 28-10. Their nine sacks now gives them 45 for the year, and they, like the Rams and Niners in their division, are explosive on offense. And we start to look at the time of the year and what we're seeing the Saints do well. The sack, good play by Aaron Brooks. Joe Horn, the big-time receiver this time of year. And the Saints are now 7-5, and five, a big game looming in a couple weeks. Fellow 7-5 and five team, Tampa Bay. That may settle the final spot. We'll see. And now to settle the top of the NFC West, it's the 49ers and Rams, each at 9-2, and two, each with great offenses, obviously. Kurt Warner, Terrell Owens, first play from scrimmage. Why don't the Niners show? They're going to be, we're back. Let's go for a deep post. It's a go! Terrell Owens was open. Jeff Garcia in a theme we would see, just couldn't find him. And then on third down, Aeneas Williams makes the pick. So it goes from bad to worse. So the Niners gambling early. They need touches. Rams twice went for it on this drive. Fourth down. Fourth and inches. Falk gets the first down. Fourth and inches. The next time around, all oh, those tricky Rams. Warner walks away. Marshall gets the pick. First down, St. Louis. Yeah, and, and they obviously picked this play up from the Pittsburgh Steelers. Cordell Stewart and company did the same thing last week. 
So Warner pulls it off. They get the first down. Let's look at it. Let me walk away. Let me walk away. Kurt Warner has answered many questions, Tommy, about his passing ability, the way the team scores. Not often does he get asked, how are you on the stage, big boy? Well, they just told me to see if I could act. They said I was in those chunky commercials, so, uh, so maybe you can act enough to get us a first down. Nothing chunky about Marshall, Marshall, Marshall. Look at this run, Tommy. That was the next play after they convert the fourth down, six yards, seven nothing, St. Louis. Final seconds, late first quarter. You know what a big game for St. Louis? Ricky Prohl, both little blocking, big catches, touchdown, 15 yards, 14 nothing Rams. Garcia off his game all day. It's Ty Streets here, a circus catch to the 25 yard, that's a 20 yard completion. Garcia looking for Terrell Owens. And Aeneas Williams, who shadowed him in game one, won by the Rams 30 to 26, shadowed him in game two, but he gets called on a tough play there. Well, it looked like he had great coverage, timed his, his attack of the football perfectly, even though he wasn't, in fact, looking back. Owen suffered a hip pointer on the game. He would still play Garrison Earth. Even when they scored, it was tough. And he barely gets in, but the Niners now win the game 14-7. Warner. Now, he's not Brant Tarkenton or Jim Zorn, but look at Warner, feeling it and troll with a block downfield helping spring a 23-yard play. Then, Warner Kroll shampoos his way down the sideline, 24 yards. Three plays later on third nine, Warner to Torrey Holt, spreading it around, these are the Rams. Down to the 11. Warner, over the middle of Marshall Falk, he's covered, but it doesn't matter. Touchdown, 21-7 St. Louis at the half. Meanwhile, we haven't seen this all year. We'll talk about the Rams' defense later, but Jeff Garcia just seemed out of rhythm, Tom. Yeah, 13 to 36 on a day, and, and you know, we this is one of the prime candidates for MVP in this league, I think, and you watched him today. He never was able to set his feet, never was able to get into a rhythm where he could throw the ball smoothly right here, being flushed out of the pocket and flushed back away from the line of scrimmage. It was just a, a kind of a day in terms of struggle that we haven't seen from Jeff Garcia. And London Fletcher with a hit with a hit there, and Aeneas Williams is able to come after he makes the, uh, the hit by Fletcher. Werewolves of London Fletcher makes the interception as Aeneas Williams. Replay show that he got it, and that was the way it went as the, the 49ers never got on track. The Rams, I mean, holding them to 27 points at St. Louis is pretty impressive. But it was St. Louis who racked up close to 400 yards in offense to the 220 for St. Louis. In the end, it was Kurt Warner who got his team in the end zone three times. A couple of Wilkins field goals. He's with our Andrea Kramer. Well, I just felt that if we went out and played our game, that uh, we didn't make any mistakes. Uh, we didn't make very many today. We made a couple, but if we limited our mistakes, didn't turn the ball or don't get, didn't give them some easy points, the way our defense was playing, the way our offense had been playing, that uh, we felt we could put up some points, and that, you know, I felt we could win this one. Early on, you were going to the other receivers. Were you trying to exploit the extra defensive backs they had in there? They were giving us the right things to, so we could stay inside a little bit more and work guys like Ricky. Um, but everybody just stepped up and made big plays today, and uh, that's what this team's been about all year long. Niners had to gamble a little bit. Their pass rush had not been good. They actually sacked one or four times. Look, St. Louis got the lead. Mm -hmm. And, look, you say what you want. Garcia and the Niners seemed out of sync for whatever reason, big reason, Rams defense. I guess we should really write down yeah. that this is not an accident when it keeps happening. Yeah, 220 total yards given up. They ranked third coming into the weekend in the NFL, and I think that you see the way they play. Rush defense at the line of scrimmage. They held Garrison Hurst to 39 yards and less than 150 yards passing for Jeff Garcia. So I think they have the complete package now defensively, and we talked about it. The fact that they've now played together for 12 games. In, in most areas, that's a complete season, except in the NFL. So now they're starting to feel a lot of cohesion with that unit and too many weapons for the Rams. Today it was Ricky Pearl. It's Marshall Falk yes. with 30 touches. Yep. But this football team has too many weapons and if they don't turn the ball over two in the last two games, they are hard to beat. And the Rams have now beaten the Niners six straight times after losing 17 in a row before that. As we go inside the numbers, and by the way, the Niners rebounded off that tough loss to Chicago before. They're 9-3 and three and ahead of schedule. Let's see how they rebound as they play two more first-place teams the next two weeks, Miami and Philadelphia. Meanwhile, the Rams, as we go inside of the number, and the 49ers against the Rams. They, you know what? They just, the Rams defense, you never thought you'd say this, has their number. Niners average 400 against everyone else. Against the Rams, not even 230.
Inside the Numbers is brought to you by Visa. It's everywhere NFL fans want to be. When we return the late game, Arizona all of a sudden's won two in a row. They're at home against Washington, who's five and six. Can either of these teams sneak into the playoff run? Well, last four games against Washington, Jake Plummer's thrown no touchdown passes. Meanwhile, Brett Conway, 48-yard field goal. It's Doink! Doink! It's off the upright, no good. Scoreless game. Tony Banks. Just late in the first to Michael Westbrook in a big first half. Six catches in the first half. Move on to the second quarter. Banks with a play fake to the goal line, and then hits Zarin Blemister. It's 7-0 Redskins, Tom. Yeah, you look at the replay, watch the linebackers for the Arizona Cardinals. Everybody going to bite. You know, one of the things that Tony Banks does really well is cover up the football on his play fake so he gets a good bite from the linebackers. Red Conway from 44 yards out. It doink! It's off the upright. Feeling like Tim Conway. And it's 7-3 still the Skins. Plummer to David Boston. The Pro Bowl year, despite the fact that he plays where he gets no pub in, Ar in Arizona. LeVar Arrington after the catch is shoved. Both players flagged for unsportsmanlike conduct. Then, Jake Plummer. And Boston bubbles it. Arrington picks it up. And LeVar is gone. 43 yards. Sets up a field goal that does it at the upright. 10-3 Washington at the half. Now Conway has another field goal. 13-3 Tony Banks. To rookie Rod Gardner. Not a lot of the high pick rookie receivers making a huge impression this year. Gardner has setting up first and goal, setting up Stephen Davis. Three straight thousand yard seasons rushing for the Redskins. Stephen Davis, first skin to do it in three straight years. All those years with Riggins, you wouldn't think, but the Redskins win it by the count of 20 to 10, and they're six and six and still have a chance as Davis got 110 yards. Yeah, I, I think it's a classic Marty ball, run the football. Uh, don't rely on the quarterback to do too much and let your defense play. They're two behind Philly, who they host next week. Meanwhile, the Jets and the Steelers. Jets a half game out of first. Bill Carr. Carr. His teammate and the Eagles in 83-84 with Herman Edwards. Not many people know that. Cordell Stewart to Heinz Ward. And in the big ketchup bottle, Heinz Ward takes his 29 varieties down to the Jets. 24 Steelers without the bust. Jerome Bettis sitting out. Meanwhile, Cordell Stewart scrambling, creating, getting a first down, and then playing in place of Jerome Bettis is Chris Pumatu Mafala, and he's a bad Mafala. That's your mouth. I'm talking about Mafala. Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Touchdown, Tom. Steelers, Chris Brown. Yeah. Watch it. Alan Marvin Jones right there and just wipe him out in the exact area area where Mafala scores. So it's 9-0 Vinny Testaverde to Lavernius Coles. Makes a nice catch. 15 yards late second. Jets down to the 18 now. And Curtis Martin, one of the few games he plays back in the hometown of his college, throwing to Wayne Crebet. It's 18 yards. Martin to Crebet. Tricky Jets. They trail it now 9-7. With just seconds left in the second quarter, the score 12-7. Swift kick. Chris Brown hits a jet. John Fiala falls on it. And Herman Edwards, man, you got to pay attention here, Tom. Yeah, actually, end of the half, just kicking this to be safe. It's a squib kick that hits James Darling as he's running away from the line. And then Fiala goes and recovers it. So not, not exactly the way Coward drew it up, but he'll take it. He'll take it. And then with one second left, Chris Brown missed an extra point. And you know, he's kicked big field goals. But remember the game earlier this year against Baltimore that he struck? They, they, it, it seems like in the blackjack division, there's always one of the really good teams that is a kicker struggling. Meanwhile, Cordell Stewart, third quarter, 12-7 Steelers, shotgun. He's riding shotgun, 31 yards out of the Jets, 31. Brown, I know these aren't chippies, 44-yard fit. It just can't have it. Missed field goal. It's still 12-7. So Bill, one is an accident, two is a trend. He's got to think about it. Meanwhile. Stewart, the offense, hitting Heinz Ward. I mean, they love Heinz Ward. No, it is. He blocked. Ten catches, 124. Brown booed. On the big tower, it says cheer. Cordell says cheer. And you know what? It's a time for good cheer. The goodwill towards men. It's the holidays. And the Brown with a field goal. Then another field goal. And the Pittsburgh uh, defense holding the Jets to 220, Tom. Martin just running for 58 yards. 
Pittsburgh is now 10 and 2, tied with the Rams, best record in football. Yeah, the game plan changed just slightly in the sense that they gave Cordell Stewart more opportunities to throw the ball down the field. And I think you can see that Bill Cowher is getting complete confidence in their ability to move the ball with the passing game. And how about our Sunday night game? Next Sunday night, Pittsburgh at Idle Baltimore. We don't get games of that magnitude in December usually. We got one here. When we return, Kansas City had beaten Oakland 18 of 20, or the Raiders, I should say, but John Gruden's Raiders have now beaten the Chiefs four in a row this year. Trent Green with his team up 10-7, swings to Priest Holmes. And what a game Priest Holmes had, running and receiving. 67 yards, Chiefs lead 17 to 7. With the Raiders score to make it 17-14, Gannon to Jerry Rice, he fumbles, he recovers. Hey, you know what? This would be a historic day. Jerry now has 20,000 yards receiving, including this touch at 20,000 yards. The next one's in the 14,000s. He's lapped the field. Congratulations, JR. 21-17. The Chiefs punt to Timmy Brown. They cut Gunn, who fumbled the punt last week in their loss. And Brown, first punt return for a touchdown since 91. His 100th career touchdown. There he is, lead at 28-17. Travian Smith intercepts his pass from Trent Green, but returns the favor with it, Pepe. And the Chiefs recover. Three minutes to go, fourth and goal, down eight. Green. Pass defense nicely by Charles Woodson. Raiders running out the clock with two minutes to go. And Dwayne Big Man Clemens blows the saxophone, forces Rich Gannon with a fumble. Raiders have turned it over four times, and instead of running out the clock, Kansas City down by eight has a chance. Trent Green, Tony Gonzalez, touchdown, 23 yards, 28-26, got to go for two. Can we go to overtime, like the Raiders did last week? But bring it up, Shaw. With the sack, and Trent Green doesn't get rid of it. You gotta get the ball out of your hands. You have to get at least what matters. If it doesn't matter if you get an interception at that point. And then the onside kick, Jerry Porter recovers for the Raiders, who hang on to up their mark to nine and three. They beat the Chiefs five in a row, barely though. 28-26, despite Priest Holmes, 109 yards receiving, 168 yards rushing. The first Chief to go over a thousand since the Nigerian nightmare. Christian Okoye, 1991, 277 for Holmes, but the Raiders win it. Uh, and I just don't think you can say enough about Jerry Rice. You know, a lot of people thought that Jerry Rice didn't have a lot left. It seems that he had plenty left. Yeah, 20,000 yards left. <laughs> Primetime Players is brought to you by 1010 to 20. Dial it. Minutes are only 99 cents. Boomer, you see the numbers on my game ball. It goes to Aeneas Williams. The big number is, is that the three passes defense and Owens, three catches, Terrell Owens, his low for the season. Well, I wonder if they hit that first play, Tom. You never know what would have happened, just a thought. <laughs> How about your first start? You're Todd Bauman. You throw for 348 yards and four touchdowns. The least we can do is give him a game ball. Who did you vote for? It was close. Bauman, Amon Green, Keyshawn with a big catch, Troy Brown over 1,000. It is a close vote. And uh, Todd Bauman gets the win. A couple of notes here. First of all, Hanukkah begins uh, on Sunday night. So from all of us at ESPN, to all of you celebrating that, uh, have a good holiday season. And the man that invented this show, our one-time president, Steve TV. Bornstein, he and Pete Rozell kind of concocted this show, NFL Primetime in 87. He got married last weekend. Carol and Steve, congratulations. We wouldn't be here without you. For Tom Jackson, I'm Chris Berman. Thanks for watching NFL Primetime.